please wait, please wait, please please wait, 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 please wait. All right, I think we're live. I think we are live, my friend. Man, this is crazy. Let me share the stream out here real quick while everybody's rolling in. Welcome you who are already in chat anticipating the show. Already? They were waiting? they were come on dude this is like the most like this is the single you may not know this you may not know this but this is the single most important live stream of all of the internet i believe it yes i looked at the rating yesterday and it turns out that we are actually more popular than every other stream combined with every other service on the entire planet that's insane yeah you have to do a little fudging with the numbers and use an algorithm that uses just constants that i plug in but but it does the numbers do come out so right (laughs) we're we're luxembourg's Exactly. Number exactly. two, number yep. two video podcast. Totally. Yeah, you, you you can trust me. You can trust me. I'm a, I'm a yeah. I'm a reputable analyticist. Um, yeah, we got 25 viewers in here right now. Hello, 25 viewers. Yeah, right here. That's uh, amazing. The first chat message I saw, which isn't probably necessarily the first chat message because I just opened it up, is from Jeremy Wolford, a man who what does up? not set his avatar because he gives zero fucks. Dude, literally, zero I, fucks. I'm pretty sure I have never had a Steam profile picture. Like the entire the what like seventeen years that I've had a Steam account, I don't think I've ever had a profile. But it's just a question mark. Balls on you, sir. It's so cool. The ball. The, it's so the, cool. The balls on you are so gargantuously <laughs> in my face big. I want to be able to confirm it though. Like, I don't. I don't know if there's like a change log I could find somewhere because I think it would be. It, it's a. There is. It's there a is. mild point of pride, and I would love to go back and see. Like, did I ever change my profile picture and? I, well, think would be... I think we should find that right now. I think we should. So I'm gonna head yeah. on over to the inner back way the way back machine. Right. Steam. Let's look it up. So um, because Steam has a website, right? If I remember you can log into Steam and there's like a Steam website where it shows like avatars and stuff, correct? Yeah, yeah. So, um so I bet you if you go to if you if you log into your Steam in the browser, get the URL, the base URL where it's like steam.com forward slash whatever, and then oh, you're here. There's a Google search Steam profile picture history. Do it. Do uh, it do Steam it, do does it. not share a history of avatars used on your profile. We do store avatar images on our content servers. We do not give players a way to purge images. Hey, what's uh, up, T-Bag? <laughs> all right, let's see here. Yeah, I bet you the Wayback Machine, all it would take for the Wayback Machine to have a record of it is if yeah. they crawled the user database or any of the main user pages like once back then. Okay. So the directory. Okay, so, so I would just go the Wayback Machine for profile. auxiliary, and I bet you it'll show a bunch of stuff that you, I, I get shocked. Like, hey, you guys, if, if you're playing along at home, go to the Internet mm-hmm. Archive Wayback Machine. Let me hear. I'll get you guys the URL here to put in the chat. Uh, it's way it's it's way back uh, we, or web Here, I'll put it in here right now. Hey, what's up? Wicked Insanity. How's it going, brother? So if you go to the Wayback Machine, I'm just going to type in. You can type in a URL and it'll show if that if that's ever been screenshotted before. I know a lot of YouTube channels have been because I can go back like way back in history and look at my YouTube channel. So I'm going to look up Barnacles, and uh, it found barnard.azurewebsites.net, dude. Oh, look geez. how old that is. 2013, uh, okay. 58 captures. Some, somebody was, like, capturing my old web page. Whoa. Let's see, Click the drop-down arrow next to your current. Oh, go to your profile. Okay. Oh, Spreadshirt? I haven't been with them forever. Dude, somebody went like hog ham between 2013 and 2016, snapshot in my super old barnard.azurewebsite.net site. Like literally like once yeah. a month, they would go back and 19? snapshot it. No, it'll be 10 years, or it'll be 20 years on Steam in September. That's crazy, dude. Here, let me go. Is it Steam Power? Wow. What's, the, what's, what's the URL? Uh, For what? For Steam. Uh, it's like... I think their main, yeah, it's steampowered.com. Steampowered.com. Yep, I got it. Okay, so Steam Powered. And then if I want to go to my account, I would do, here, let me just try forward slash Barnacles and I see bet. if that works. I bet anything, I've never had a profile picture. That'd be so freaking cool. Here, wait, can I just search for Barnacles here? I'm trying to see if there's a public page because if it's a private page and you have to log in, chances are it's not going to be recorded in Wayback Machine. Um, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, so hey, if you guys here, here's a task for everybody out there in uh, Tech Talk land. While we're doing the stream, if you guys can find any of like our old imagery, like not our current imagery that we have for our avatar stuff, if you can find any of our old imagery on Wayback Machine, like going back, like let's say 10 years, minimum of 10 years, 
find anything from like 10 years ago that's like our old logos old names old stuff on wayback machine like let us know in chat like hit us up yeah unless it's fun. embarrassing unless it's like an account on like ashley no. madison or oh or, uh, yeah none of that <laughs> like 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 if it's a weird like forum where it's like people like defecate on other people or whatever i just don't remind me of that okay like i'm already yeah. in therapy for that i don't need i don't need that to come back into my life um <laughs> all right here let me grab uh let me grab the link to the stream i'm gonna send it out to everybody here all right, so Intel CPU is causing crashes. Claude hey. 3 versus OpenAI GPT-4. Oh, AI oh it users. does not. It doesn't seem to be uh, automatic, our super chat smoke and lights. Oh, it's not supposed to be because there's supposed to be there's oh. supposed to be a human touch. I'm supposed to see. I'm supposed to go, oh, gamers oh, unite, okay. $10, make me holler, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to go, oh, wait, hold on. And then I grab this button and I go to the and then the finale is the finale is I do this. I go, oh, 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 oh. See, that's that's what I do for your ten dollars. Did I just lock up my camera? Connection timed out. Oh, I have to start the thing. Um, can you still see me? Yeah, I still see you. Oh, good. I accidentally for some reason there's a my whatever macro i'm using to activate the smoke effect when i do smoke and lights at the same time without even touching the keyboard it opens up the snipping tool so so one of my macros when i combine the two which is weird it's midi so it's midi input shouldn't be creating any keystrokes anywhere as far as i'm concerned but uh -huh. it opens up the snipping tool and then it freezes my whole screen i don't notice the snipping tools open and then i think the computer locked up nice Let's see here. Bringing back the uh, nerd gas. Damn straight gamers unite. And thank you for that ten dollars super chat. You're an chat, absolute you're an legend. Okay. Do you hear this? No. Damn. Negative Ghost Rider. Okay. Let's see. Can keep I keep trying? Sir. Keep trying. Oh, oh wait. Also, Intel. Why are CPUs so crashes? <laughs> We're gonna get into that. And it's all. And you guys, the number one rule is it's always Intel's fault. It's always Intel's fault. Don't ever think it's not Intel's fault. It's just safer to think it's Intel's fault. It's never NVIDIA's fault because NVIDIA can do no wrong. Like NVIDIA is a flawless, perfect company from the ground up that has never done anything even remotely nefarious. Okay. Um, they, they've, they've, yeah. they've, never, they've never upset any customers by, by doing any weird model swapping to confuse people or raise their prices to absurd levels. Um, they've never helped the crypto mining community over gamers. Like you got to give them mad respect. But hey, in all fairness, though, I do I do want to be nice to NVIDIA because they, they were gracious enough to give a deadbeat like me an RTX 4090 graphics card. So I should literally just be like choking on them, like like literally both balls, like in my cheeks, like squirrels, um, because that's a two thousand dollar graphics card. Uh, but they made it a two thousand dollar graph. They put that price on there. So that, that's on them. Like it probably cost thirty five dollars to manufacture in Taiwan. But but they made it two thousand dollars. So so I feel like I need to give them at least two thousand dollars worth of respect. Because you guys know I'm the biggest sellout ever. Uh, Irene, what's up, my lady? She said, did you see the DM oh. I sent you on X about keyboards? I need advice. $60 max per my husband. Now, normally, I'd say uh, you're crazy thinking you can get a mechanical keyboard for $60. But these days, you absolutely totally can. Like, yeah, like, totally like keyboards doable. have gotten so cheap now that I bet you, I bet you, without even looking, I bet you there is an RGB keyboard for around that price I mean, that's also mechanical. This is technically outside of your budget, but I bought this Cougar one at at a pax um what is it called a cougar this one yeah it's by cougar it's let's their see, cougar it's their rgb keyless. keyboard let's see uh, let's it's see. the puri tkl p-u-r-i tkl this one cost me like 80 80 i think yep. at pax yep um, about 80, 80 it looks like they're going for 89 dollars on amazon uh there's oh did you say it was the 10 keyless one yeah the tkl oh dude the 10 keyless one is only 56 bucks right now Boom. and Boom. it's rgb yeah. And it has wave effects, like you can do like the rainbow yeah, wave you can, effect. You can do all kinds of... I have it set where like it radiates out from the key press. That's cool. Man, Which is cool. Oh. Like, I don't care. I, Man, I, I just out, just turn it off. I don't Cherry know. MX authentic switches, not knockoffs. They are nice, but they're soldered. This Mine, again, many years old. Uh, they're soldered in. They're not swappable. You can swap the keycaps, but not the switches. Even the expensive keyboards nowadays, they usually don't use sockets. Just because it's too damn expensive. Because if, if for if it's, it's like a hundred and fifty dollar keyboard, then they'll put sockets on it. But the thing yeah. is, those sockets mean because you think it'd be cheap, it'd be less work for them to put the switches in, right? No, they right. have to solder the socket to the board, and then they have to insert the the switch into the socket. So they're uh, adding okay. a component, and they're adding a so they're adding another step, which is once you solder it, you also have to pop the thing in, and then another testing mm -hmm. step. 
So it raises the price. So actually soldering is the cheap way to go. That um, makes sense. Yeah. So I read yeah. here. Let me give you a link. This is the one Ox has. You said, and you said it worked fine for years. I like it. It yeah. It's it it does what it says on the tin. It's but, nothing fancy. It's nothing special. Um, the only like minus I would have to say yeah. is uh the lights for like uh, caps lock, scroll lock, and I don't know, there's one that's got an L on it. Yep. They're hard to see from my angle because like they're kind of hidden between behind the insert home and page up button. So like sometimes I'm like, oh shit, am I capitalized? But that's very rare. And to be clear, you have the keyboard without a 10 key, right? No 10 Correct. key? Yeah, the 10 okay. keyless. Yeah, so dude, $56 right now. That's awesome. So, so so that's four dollars or well fifty six nine nine so three dollars cheaper than Irene was looking for, and it's it's a so so if you need ten key just add twenty bucks. Filthy as fuck. Yep, that's the one I'm looking at. Um, so wait, is that the one I'm looking at? No, it isn't. That that's like they re they redesigned it. I bet I bet this is like five years old or something. It's old. Yeah, the new model is so much sleeker than that dude. There's like no space anywhere. Like there's zero space anywhere. It's like all the keys are perfectly together. Nice. And um, then, you know, it has a removable cord and all that. So it looks like 300 have been sold in the last month. It has four and a half stars. Um, but the thing that kind of catches me with this one is I, I thought it'd have mechanical switches like Gatorans or something. I didn't think it'd have cherry. Like the fact that you can buy oh, a, yeah. a $60 mechanical under a $60 mechanical keyboard ship for $60. That is all cherry MX switches is pretty mind blowing. But also this one is the MX Brown, which happens to be my favorite switch. Oh, my favorite switch is the MX Brown. It gives you the perfect amount of clicky, but not too clicky. It's like not obnoxiously clicky, yeah. loud, like a blue. There's, there's sometimes I'm I I wonder about the clickiness of mine. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love clicky keyboards. Like like, but they just don't do well when you're streaming. Right. If you're streaming and it sounds like a mechanical typewriter, people get bored with that like really quick. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's see. You used to have a Red Dragon K five five two for like three years. Not the best, but it works. For 40 bucks dude these keyboards are getting cheap by the way how's it going networking guys good to see you brother uh he said i want my keys to sound like gunshots <laughs> <laughs> i watched a youtube video um i wish i could remember the guy's name he's like oh oh Glar glarsus i think Glar glarsus i met him at linus tech tips expo for a moment really really cool guy he builds all these crazy keyboards and he tried to build the loudest keyboard in the world <laughs> and so he like made his own like custom switches like he took the springs out of the switches that were already there and then put in his own springs and the whole point was to make the force like harder than like an old style 1800s mechanical oh, keyboard but yeah. when you bought him out the switch he put like a little metal plate on the bottom so that when <laughs> the spring decompresses instead of hitting the plastic keycap it's literally tapping a metal plate that has mass yeah and so every time you click on the keyboard it literally sounds like you're just smacking a frying pan against the wall i mean it's it's so freaking loud he also built a really cool keyboard that's massive it's like the size of like a 10 foot desk i think he said he built like the world's biggest like functioning keyboard um i think he found out later that wasn't true that somebody built a keyboard that's like the size of a house or something ha. but he built this giant metal fully mechanical switch like down to the keys and everything scaled up keyboard that was like six or eight feet long and the entire chassis for it was billet aluminum that was cnc'd out and anodized so, I mean, he must, I, I bet you he spent $15,000 building that keyboard, like the one off. And I guess he took it to like S, uh, CES or something like that. I never got to go to that one and see it. It would have been awesome to see that keyboard in person. Yeah. But the cool thing is he had it set up at this event so people could really use it. Like you could come up and do a typing, like do type racer huh. on a massive keyboard, having to reach for the keys and smack them down. And each key was like bigger than your entire hand. It was super cool. Uh, let's hear. Oh, you dread pirate Roberts, my man. Ooh. He said, I think I wouldn't mind a Kinesis split keyboard, but those are super crazy spendy. They are. They are. And they haven't come I mean, down in price at all. Uh, I don't know, man. Like custom keyboards, dude, you'll spend $120 on just the fucking frame before you if even get into switches one, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like some of those keyboards get crazy spendy, man. It is bonkers. I mean, a lot of the, into, you can, there's all kinds of stuff like the that. The cheapest though. kit that I've seen to like build like a full blown, uh, well, a 10 keyless, a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard kit mm -hmm. i think was like 80 bucks but you also have to keep in mind you have to solder each key yeah so not it's not like you just yeah. put in a row of keys and like flow it through you don't nobody has flow soldering machines at their house right it's like you have to solder <laughs> each and every key and i think each key has uh either two or three contacts i can't remember i think it might yeah. just have a yeah i think it's just a switch right so pause on the ground but you have to do that across the rows and then like up and down it's like a, it's like a grid how it detects like when the circuit closes and what key's being pushed it's really weird the key doesn't tell it that's the interesting thing like you'd think that because you could move the keys around and stuff some people might think that the, the key itself tells the keyboard what it is 
No. But it's not. It's just a blank no. switch that just opens and closes mm -hmm. the circuit. It's the software that determines where it is. You can totally remap all of your keys yep. to anything. Yeah. Yep. I'll tell it's you what, though. Windows. You can totally... been, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. I've been using this Kinesis keyboard now uh, since I think I got my first one in 2017. So that'd be 18, mm -hmm. 19, 20, 20. So, so seven years now. Yeah. Yeah. I've been using Kinesis keyboards. I haven't worn one out yet. I did switch, though. I did switch to their newest one. They, they had the Kinesis non-RGB that was just blue. Mm -hmm. And then I got the Kinesis RGB, which now each key can be a different color. Um, it has a custom firmware that runs on it. It basically has an ESP32 built into the keyboard that keeps track of everything. They have their own software suite for editing it, but you don't have to use the software suite. You can literally plug it in, do it, do a hotkey combination. It becomes a thumb drive. And then you can just open up the any files and edit all the all stuff's plain text. So you don't even need software to configure this keyboard. And then because all the record, even macros, like if you want to do playback macros, it'll do keyboard and mouse playback. In the keyboard so i can create a macro that's like move mouse 50 pixels to the left click hold for three seconds release and then type these characters at this cadence hold this key down and then i can i can recall that macro either with a single button a combination of buttons which they call a chord um or i can do layers which the board Ooh. you can hold down a function key and you can hit one through nine and activate different layers and each layer can be a completely different layout so if you're super hardcore it's like having 10 keyboards like you can change like the video editing layout instead of having to go into adobe premiere and change like what oh keys yeah for this you can just you macro that all into the keyboard so even if you plug it into a computer with a bone stock adobe premiere all your key mappings will be exactly like you want Nice. And so I think I think it's really cool, but you do pay a premium for it. It's it is pretty hard to swallow, you know, a two hundred dollar price tag for right. a keyboard. But but what I like about the split keyboard is there's no going back, dude. Once you use a proper split keyboard and it took me and the reason I made the jump finally is trust me, if you go back and look at my reviews, I tried to use split keyboards so many times. I had like a four hundred dollar split keyboard from Kinesis that I pooed yeah. all over. I told him I can't use it. This thing's ridiculous, it's like where the keys are bold in. It's like Dvorak layout and stuff. I was like, dude, I cannot fucking do this. Like, this is this is torture. But then they decided to create this keyboard, the Edge, which is basically just a keyboard they sawed in half. Like all the yeah, keys yeah. are in the right spot. You can literally push the two halves of the keyboard together, and it's essentially just a keyboard, and then you can slowly move them apart. And my typing style, I always was dominant with my uh, my left hand. So my left hand would yeah. take over eighty percent of the keyboard. Same. And I reached too far. Yep. I had to train left. myself out of that. Yeah. So what I do is I'd move the keyboard away. Like every day, I'd move it another inch away, another huh. inch away. And then after after a week, it was seven inches away. And huh. I stopped crossing over. And then it probably to be, if I'm being honest, it probably took a good three weeks before I didn't make any mess ups where I'd try to reach for a key that wasn't there. Yeah. But 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 after about seven weeks, I was up to typing at my same speed that I could. Now I can type at the exact same speed I can on a regular keyboard on a on a split keyboard. So it won't slow you down. Like pe people that say, oh, a split keyboard is going to slow you down. No, in the beginning, it'll slow you down a little. But as long as it's the same layout where all the keys are where they're supposed to be per hand and it's not trying to do the weird thing, like where the space bar is the enter key. And now the space bar is like a different here. You have to do a macro and hold a thing to do the space bar or the right space bar and the left space bar both do something different. By the way, you can do that on this keyboard if you want, but by default, both space bars on each half do the same thing. But you can go in, like, for instance, a lot of people will map enter to the space bar because you push enter a lot and your pinky is your weakest finger. So if oh, you're sure. a software developer and you're hitting enter, you're writing documents and you're hitting enter all the time, it can actually, you know, be bad for your pinky. So what they'll do is they'll map the enter key to like the right thumb. And then when you're typing, you naturally go, you know, you, you, you naturally have a dominant thumb that you use for the space bar. People usually don't go back and forth. And so what you do is you use the other space bar consciously as an enter key, and then you have enter mapped to both of them. So that way, hmm. if you're typing, you, you, you can just use the, the other space bar as enter. And apparently, yeah. if you get yourself used to that, it's, you know, it saves you um, from wearing out your pinky and your pinky joints. Hmm. But, uh, but I'm kind of of the mind. I look at it differently. Like, I don't think that typing is an occupational hazard unless you try to do the whole bullshit where you're where you're intentionally like trying to sit up like perfect straight. You're trying to like hit every key perfectly with the perfect fingers as fast as humanly possible. No, I think if you're somebody who's typed since you were at a very young age and you're just always moving around and you know, you're, you're not constant in your application. Like, you, you know, you can lean different ways. You can have different postures and stuff. That's a good thing. I like, like me. Oh, it's yeah, like, I think so. Yeah. I'm almost yeah. 45 years old. And it's like, I can still type 120 ish words yeah. per minute, even though I have like, you know, um, I have like gout in my hands and that has nothing to do with the keyboard. That just says everything. Fast good enough, man. Gout. Like it does. Who, who is judging you on your typing speed anymore? Like, come on. That's like, that's like Elon judging your programming on your commits. Yeah. They that's did much. back in the day though, dude, that's dumb. Like, back in the day, they totally did. Cause I remember uh, enough because you didn't write like seven 100%. letters faster. Like that's dumb. Dude. Not only that, I failed every typing test in school. Every typing and test I ever took, I failed like because in order yep. you're supposed to like read something and type it 
No, yeah, yeah no, no, no. So like, um, there, we used uh, Mavis Bacon teaches typing. You remember that? Yep. yep. So, it, so I'd pass the test in the computer, but you had to be watched by the teacher to pass your exam. Mm -hmm. And the teacher would watch to make sure that you're hitting the right keys with the right fingers. I never could hit the right keys with the right fingers because by the time I was at class, I was already typing 130 words per minute, memorizing where the keys are. Right. So I'd use all my fingers like like I still to this oh, day, I'll use yeah. a different finger to, to hit a key if it's more convenient for me. So I don't <laughs> dedicate a finger to a key. And so anytime I'd screw up, they dock me a point and then they'd be like, oh, you got an F because you had like, you know, 500 mistakes in a paragraph. And it's like, there's only 500 characters. I'm like, so I failed. And I'm like, so I don't get this. I'm at the top of every leaderboard on every computer. Because keep in mind, back then, the, the computers weren't networked. So there wasn't like a universal leaderboard. So yeah. I went around to every computer. Every session, I got a different computer to make sure I was always at the top of the leaderboard. And then we had a secretary at the school that could type 120 words per minute that was the yeah. previous top leaderboard. And she would come back and try to get her leaderboard back. But she couldn't. I could out type her by like 10 or 12 words per minute. She wasn't going to catch up. And so I took over every leaderboard in the school, every computer in the entire school from one end to the other over the course of a year, I, I got in front of every computer and, and maxed out the leaderboard. And it was and it was funny because it got to be so annoying to the um, the staff at, at the school that they actually went around once and wiped the leaderboards off all the computers and started it over from scratch. So I had to do it all over again. And I was like, who what asshole did this just to beat my record? And it turned out it was her because she was the number one leaderboard on a bunch of them. <laughs> right after they were wiped. So it's like, wait a second, that's coincidence. They just wiped the leaderboard and she's the only name on it when we come back to school in the morning. Yeah. That kind of tells me she knew it was being wiped because she knew to like go back and put herself back on the leaderboard. I was like, ah. so, so I spent another like three months like, you know, going back and taking the leaderboard back to myself. But what sucked is I failed typing. I literally had to go home with a piece of paper that told my parents that I wasn't doing well in my typing class. <laughs> And my mom was like, I don't understand. You type faster than I can think. Like what, what is going on? And it was because... Yeah. Um, posture, uh, was oh, it posture, finger memory, posture. which, yeah, it's like, it's so stupid. It's same thing with, it's the same thing with piano. Do we have any, do we have any piano players here? I mean, actually there's statistically, sure. there has to be quite a few, right? Because right. people play instruments. Um, and if you ever take piano lessons, they are such sticklers. Piano teachers are, I've never met a piano teacher. If you guys know a piano teacher that doesn't do this, I, I'd love to congratulate them because it's the most ridiculous thing. Piano teachers give less about you playing the music well and enjoying yourself playing music than you sitting in a very specific posture, holding your hands at a very specific angle and depressing the keys with like proper angles and force. So it's so like when you're playing the piano, you have to like have your hands out. It's like, it's been a while, but it's like, you have to have your hands like rigidly straight where they can put like a, bo a bar on it. And then you have to do this with your fingers, like straight down on the keys. And you have to hit very specific parts of the keys. And the way I play is I lay my hands flat with my weight of my hands on the keys. And then I do this. I pull down on the keys with my, the meat of my finger. And the teacher, she tried to te train me out of it. But but literally, we spent like six months. Uh, of, it, was, it was my grandma. So it wasn't. It, we didn't lose any money. But my grandma, she was a piano teacher, tried to be, teach me how to play the piano. I could play like everything. I was playing like Furry Lease, like a boss. I was Canon D. I was nailing oh, everything. Man. But she wouldn't. She refused to teach me after six months because I was still failing posture. Dumb. I was like, I can play all um, the music. I enjoy it. I love it. But she refused to teach me because she's like, you're not taking this seriously. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I can play all the songs. She's like, you're not really playing the music as it was intended to be played. It's like, okay, so you think the person listening to my music right now is going to know like the shape of my hand pushing the key. And the funny thing is like, there are ones that'll tell you that they'll be like, oh, yes, yeah, so I can tell what your posture was just by how the note resonated from the hammer hitting the wire. Dumb. Uh, I, I can tell that you had a calcium deficiency in your third finger and your nail wasn't properly cut to like it, it's like it's like audio files that try to tell you that like in their digital audio systems that some oh digital jitter and the optical signal uh from stray photons or whatever is changing the digital you know check double checksum checked protocol it's like dude no that's not how it works that's not how digital works if you hear a sound that means it was not corrupted like it will not play the sound if, if 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 it is not the proper within the proper spec, right? <sighs> and but they swear to it. They swear to it. I had this. Uh, I have a friend even to this day. Even to this day, he spent fifteen thousand dollars on cable. And this is an Adam, by the way. This is the first time it's not Adam. Adam's smarter than yeah. yeah. So, but I have a friend. He has he has a stereo system. Um, that he had the speakers custom made by a company in Washington called Joseph Audio. And he, he he commissioned them to build these speakers. Funny, I went to where they built the speakers. It's like this like beautiful showroom. A pair of speakers costs like you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars, which apparently for speakers is nothing in the audiophile market. But it was like twenty or thirty grand. But then you go in the back and it literally looks like somebody's shed. It's just dirt all over the place, like sawdust. Everything looks like it's made out of plywood from Home Depot. 
like I was shocked when I, when I, when I looked behind the scenes because I'm like the you know it's like bang an Olsen in the front and then you go in the back and it's like Home Depot. <laughs> and I was like, this is just this is craziness. But he bought his speakers and I will say they sounded good. They were full of sand. They weighed like I think w- when you filled them up with sand, they were like three hundred some pounds per speaker. Yeah, and uh, and they did sound great. I, I I will not argue that they did not sound great. But he sat for an entire night trying to convince me. He had me sitting in his little sweet spot. He puts his chair in the middle of the room with the speakers perfectly phased, and he sits me there. And he blind tests, A-B tests me between his regular cables that he has, his regular audio cables. And this isn't digital, by the way. This is analog. So technically, it could, you know, there could be some noise. There could be some. But but he was trying to tell me that there was a big difference. Like, like you will not believe the difference of this between a $15,000 pair of oxygen-free gold blah, 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 terminated connector like cable like audio cables they basically look like garden hose it looked like a thing of garden hose with like two little smaller hoses coming out of each end fifteen thousand dollar cables that came in like an oak box and he looks at me he's like oh my god can you can you hear that massive difference to the low end or whatever in the mids like just listen how crisp the mids are i'm like dude i don't notice a difference yeah, he's man, like I have no idea. he's like i can oh my god you just don't have a trained ear i'm like dude like you're you're literally using cables that look like they were designed to transmit about a hundred gajillion watts like the cables that you're using are as big as the cables coming into your house for your entire power system for your entire house. And you're using that just to send like 50 watts of power to a speaker. Like, like, dude, it's not going to make the difference you think it does. But yeah. he was one of those people where it's like in his mind, just knowing it was there, the placebo, like, yeah, dude, it hit him hard. He was, he was just sucked in by it. So I remember back in the day, and I don't know if monster cable is still a thing, but uh, early, early YouTube days, Somebody was com- trying, uh, did like a comparison of Monster Cable, and then they bought like cheap, you know, Radio Shack cables, and then they went so far as to use uh, like a metal. Um, they untwisted a metal hanger, yeah, yeah, and, and did that, and it's basically no difference, like hardly, hardly a change in in any of it. Like, there's no sense in spending so much all this yeah. extra money on Monster cables when like it's you can just go down to freaking Radio Shack. At, at that time and get some regular old funky speaker cable that costs you 20 bucks for the whole fucking roll and it's you're fine it's just Dude, the amount of em that you would have to have to really have register to like those volumes like come yeah. on you'd have to go you'd have to go 100 feet and you'd have to have like staples in your breaking through the insulation or something like it's just silly yeah you'd have to have basically like a van de graaff generator sitting next to the speaker yeah. or something like that and then be like okay maybe i do hear a little something so i do have to say when uh, so I have my I got my phone. I don't use this charging stand. It's not plugged in or anything. It's just for setup. Wow. If I have it, if I have my phone too close to where my headphone cables plug into the Go XLR, every once in a while it'll like it'll go. Not like the old school where you could hear your text messages coming in from your speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more just like the occasional like crackle, like just a little. And I'm like, yep. oh, oh, it's my my phone's a little too close because that's I mean, that's a fairly high energy, like directed beam, you know, it's yeah. like updating cool. something or whatever, you know. So Irene, Irene just said, I may be getting older, but I do hear a major difference between vinyl and CDs. No, there is a major difference. Oh, well, no, vinyl that's different. That yeah, that's sense. different. Yeah, yeah. Um, because vinyl is mean, analog and, and it's uh better, almost a more, mm, I'd say an almost better, like a complete. A representation of the waveform where yep. CD CDs are compressed a little bit. It's stepped, right? No matter it's how, just, yeah, a digital signal will always be square. There is no way oh, to do it. Like, they think of it like pixels, right? Like plotting pixels on a chart. Anything digital is going to be a box filled in. Anything analog can be an infinite number of steps between those. Now, there are other limiting factors. Same thing with cameras. Like if you record, you know, on analog film, have you ever wondered why like movies shot in the 40s, like these black and white movies shot in the 40s can be like upscaled the 4k or 8k and look absolutely gorgeous there you go that's great that's a great example great example the vinyl oops oops it's not gonna let me do this. yeah i know it's like trying to cut out the background here put it in the middle of your face there you go the vinyl has the the actual wave form like the true wave yeah melted into the plastic the Mm -hmm. cd-rom this is where your sample rate comes in yeah see billy billy slayer's on the right idea the sample rate and the bit rate right Yep. The sample rate is is it's going to look at the waveform, uh, you know, four hundred thousand times a second or whatever, and but it's still stepped. It's it's like, yeah. oops, right? It's stepped, and I mean, and then of course there's decompression algorithms too that'll take that stepping form waveform and like 
smooth it out. Yeah, they're called DACs, like digital to analog converters. Yeah, things like that. But um, are fiber optics best for audio? Mm. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. They, you can only transmit. So actually, I shouldn't say this because there are ways to actually transmit analog data with light because all you have to do is just vary the light infinitely. Uh, but do we have diodes that can do that reliably? No, not really. Huh. Like the technology required to send like a per, like an absolutely perfect sine wave with no stepping, no digital stepping when you're using light with, it would be hard because the electronics that you're using to do it, you would still have to go up in some set value. Mm -hmm. And anytime you have to go up in some set value, like some number, it's like, you don't have infinity, right? So, so it's going to be a square. You know, if you zoom in enough, it's going to be a square with a record. If you zoom in enough, it's just going to be noise. Like, like if you zoom into a certain point, the line's going to be just all over the place because of just the, it, it can't, it can't gain any more data or any more fidelity. It's just, it's just at that point, it's, it's at the end of, of what it can get. And now you're within the noise frame where it's just randomly jumping around. But the thing with vinyl is uh, each time you play vinyl, it, it can sound different because the needle oh. is physically degrading the vinyl away each time you play it very very slowly so like a record when it's brand new if you replay that record you know a thousand times and you record it each time because i watched a youtube video where a guy did this he played yeah. a record like a thousand times he recorded it digitally into a computer and then he checked the waveforms against each other increments of 100 plays and you could see it degrading like you could actually see the volume coming down and you could see the noise starting to come up and you, it was losing some of its, um, what do they call the dynamics, the really highs and the really lows. They were starting yeah. to get washed away and eroded away by the needle dragging. Oh, that so makes now, sense. Sure. Yeah, so now they create like these really fancy needles that put almost no pressure on the record. They create very little or no friction. They even have Ooh, you know, red. They can read laser. them now. A they laser do. fucking needle. Because that would be. You know who hates them though? Who? Audiophile. Audiophile. Uh, but that, laser be, that doesn't make sense because that would be. I mean, depending on how I guess how they decode the the laser information, right. it it could be the more like perfect representation because like you're gonna lose some of the I guess you know a little bit from the physicality of it, right? I don't know. That's and, yeah, it and, has to be digital like, though. That's the thing is because because when you're shining the laser at it, you have to step the laser, like like the little the 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 angle the laser has to hit the track, and then the way it walks along the reflector, the reflection. There has to be digital circuitry in there that's that's analyzing that and putting it back together. So you do have to have some kind of a digital analyzer converter in the mix. As far as I know, there's no laser vinyl player that can just take the laser and put it through a simple analog circuit and convert it to sound. And that's the beauty of records. Like you can literally take a needle and I've done this as a child. You can take a needle, funnel a piece of paper uh -huh. around the needle and tape it just as tight as you can tape it right to the needle. And then literally put the record on a turntable spinning or anything spinning like a lazy Susan, put the mm -hmm. needle down, put your up to it and you can hear the music on the record. Huh. So there's no processing at all. All it's all the record is doing is vibrating the needle because the yeah. needles, you know, hitting the bumps, it makes the needle vibrate. And then that vibration gets amplified through the cone. And that vibration is quite literally the sine wave of the audio. So it's, it, you can't get any more analog than that. It's literally, right. and that's how they write the record too. Like when you're yelling into the microphone, like old school, like way back before we had amplifiers and preamps and everything like that. The way that they would record a record is they'd have like this giant freaking like reverse cone and you'd yell into it. It looked like a freaking Vitrola or whatever. You'd yell into it and the vibration from your voice yelling into this thing would actually cause the needle to shake, which would then imprint on the wax. They used like a soft wax. And it would, oh, and, sure, it would sure. and then they could play that back, but but it didn't last very long. Apparently, the wax broke down really fast, so like you'd only play it like a hundred times, and then it would pretty much be damaged beyond all sense. repair. Yeah. But um, yeah. but yeah, in records originally okay. they, they weren't round, like like they used to be cylinders. Like yep. the first record was actually a the cylinder. Which was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, yeah. So, uh, dude, it's uh, crazy how simple technology is. Like if you think back to like television and radio and everything like that, you think, oh my god, how did they figure that out? Like. God, that is such advanced technology like back then. How could they figure right. that out? But when you really break it down and see how it works, like you watch like a how it's made or something or where they go back and they break everything down and show you the steps, it's actually not that complicated. It's like something yeah. that you literally, if you wanted to, could build a television in your garage. Like there are some the things. It, that some of it too is like, what, like why didn't, how, how, did, how did we not invent this sooner? Like bicycle. That's what I say. Yeah. You know, like a bicycle. Like, mm -hmm. and then even then, like, some of the early bicycles were like, what the fuck were you thinking? Like, how yep. is it supposed to like, like you look at a, like a modern bicycle, even a simple, like, uh, you know, fixed gear bike, right? There's yep. no, no switching gears. It's two sprockets. It's two wheels. It's a frame and a, and a handles. Like, 
Why did it take until 1886 or whatever to freaking come up with that? Like the Romans, right? They had all the right bits. I mean, maybe chain a chain might be a little more complicated, like a small chain like that might be a little complicated for them, but okay. So you have a belt drive bicycle. Like that's a total thing that could have been like they had, they had drawbridges and shit that they like the concepts are all there. Why did it take so long for us to put that together? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, why was the first bicycle? Stuff? The first bicycle was like literally a gigantic wheel that was like it's six big fucking tall. wheel. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And that, like, how is that? I mean, that makes a little bit of sense from like, like a ratio, like gear ratio sure, sort but of. But look thing. how long it took them to to, but, to innovate. That was like what they called the Penny Farnsworth or whatever. And that bike was like for years and years and years. That was the only bike. Like nobody yeah, made man. a better. One. It's yeah, like Graham's got a good point there. We dropped atomic bombs using propeller airplanes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's a great way mean, to look at that, dude. And that's what's crazy, right? It's so like some of that stuff just it doesn't make sense the way we've progressed in some ways and then not others. It's so weird. Like how the hilarious the engine hasn't changed hardly at all in 200 years or yep. whatever. But, the, but again, 66 years from the Wright brothers to on the moon. Or like the toilet what? and plumbing. Toilet and plumbing have had no. very little change. Very, very yeah. little. Change. Still use an S trap. Right. Still, still use a P there trap. There's something to be said about a, 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 you know, there's no way to build a better mouse trap, right? Like I could argue some, some designs are like, that's about as good as they get. I, I don't know enough about plumbing to say if there's a more efficient way of flushing a toilet or whatever, but like that might be part of that. The thing is, and, the, and this is where this is what I would argue, right? Is the simplicity, like if you're talking about the effectiveness of the system given its simplicity and price, yeah. Then I then I'd say, yeah, they're probably in that ballpark because otherwise they'd innovate, right? If it yeah. was if they could find a cheaper way to do it better, they would have. Yeah. But say that they couldn't do it better, I, I would say no, because if they were willing to spend the money with the technology we have today, you could literally have a toilet. They could scan your butthole, like literally reach up and like gently manipulate like a little snake going up through there, like loosening everything gently along the edges and slowly extracting it from you, measuring it, sending the composition to your doctor and getting like 20 minutes later, getting a little AI analysis right. back and like, you know, what you ate last night, and what you need to eat less of or whatever to balance out your diet. So I would, I would argue that, yeah, toilets could get a lot more advanced and people have tried to be fair. Like if you yeah. go, to, if you go to actually, this man, is why is it, yeah. why, is, why can't it just be a hole in the ground? that goes directly to the, to the, the main where, you know what I mean? Like, why do I need a big flusher thing at all? Yeah, like, why isn't it just a hole in the yeah. ground with like water rushing by? Like, the rope pipe. Pad, right. You just, yeah. yeah you why it, not? Just flushes it away. It's so funny. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, not as, but it's interesting because sure it's like good. plumbing. Plumbing requires gravity, obviously, to work because, yeah. like, the way the trap works is, yeah. Um, that, like, oh, if man, you ever wonder, why, gonna, like, why don't we smell the sewer? Why don't you smell? Have you ever had the it's water just, drain out of your toilet and you smell the sewer? You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't. Do. You That's do bad news if you're getting gas come if you're getting gas coming back through there. Then, well, I guess it, then well, the, no, the, the toilet was broken. The my toilet was broken. Been, yeah, yeah, the S, the S thing, uh, because. So that's why you have yep. a P trap too in your exactly. in your sinks and stuff. There's always a bit of water, the water uh, seal. in in that in that U mm -hmm. bed, and that keeps the funky gases that's on, coming out of your wall exactly. from bubbling exactly. up out out of your your drains and stuff. Yeah, it's not just yeah. to trap your ring when you drop it in the sink. It's that's literally it. there. That's part of it. But but it's literally to keep any place in your house where there's connecting to the sewage. They mm -hmm. want to make sure that there's always a water barrier. So yep. they always put a low spot everywhere in your plumbing where it goes into a, an area of the house. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a low spot where water will collect and keep that passageways closed. And it's kind of like a bong. It's like a it's, it's literally it's yeah. literally a bong in your wall. But yeah. then the vents that go out of the roof of your house that vent the sewer. Those yeah. don't have the trap. Those come straight mm -hmm. off of the main line under your house, go straight up through your house and out through the top because they want those gases to vent and go upward, right? So that not everybody has to smell them. They want them to go up the hill and stink out the Part right of way. why, um, like you'll see sort of, uh, they're like fancier built basically outhouses, like at rest stops and stuff. Yep. Um, they'll have like a big black tube that sticks out the roof. And generally it helps to keep the interior space from smelling too bad because all yep. the funkiness will be, um, almost almost sucked out just from the difference in air pressure and and yep. whatnot. Um, it gets sucked out the the chimney essentially instead of building up inside the where you're. Sitting. Have you ever shotgun a beer before? Same, yeah, same That's concept. Literally, what that thing is like the vents that come out of your house, yeah. those little black pipes you see sticking out of the top of your house in the plumbing. Yeah. 
yeah. those, it's the same effect as shotgunning a beer. What it's doing is when you flush your toilets and you're draining your sink, instead of the water trying to go down through the hole and be going glug, 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 really slow, the air comes in from those vents from the top of the house and allow that water to freely flow through the system. So it's a, it, that's literally what it is. It's a vent. So if those vents get clogged, like if birds build nests in them or they get clogged from debris falling on them and stuff, you'll notice that toilets won't flush right. Sinks will drain slow. Your, pl all, your whole plumbing in your house will go haywire. Um, I know because it's happened to me before and the plumber had to literally go and run a snake. He was too lazy to get on the roof. He literally just cut the pipe, ran a snake in it all the way up to the top of the house and then all the way through the pipe, pulled out like this giant yeah. hunk of something that looked like a bird built a nest in there. I don't know why a bird would want a nest in the ship Jeez. pipe, but uh, but he pulled it out of there and all the plumbing was fixed instantly. Like it was it nice. literally the whole house had a plumbing problem and it was solved just by pulling shit out of one little pipe. There you go. Um, but yeah, plum plumbing is wild. Like there is a lot of technology in plumbing, like to stop the water hammer effect because water is not very compressible. Yeah. So, yep. so like keeping the water from like just suddenly like if you turn off the faucet too fast, having it just hammer the faucet off and blow it off. There, there's little air pockets. They'll use like extra lengths of uh, piping. They go straight up so the hmm. water doesn't get in it. So like think of it if you had two pipes coming together like this and the water comes down and goes this way. Right. Right. It, or, or rather goes up to the faucet. If it's coming up through the faucet with all that pressure and you just suddenly close the faucet, all that weight of all that water and all that inertia is going to slam into it. Huh. And, and because it's not very compressible, the water, it's literally going to be like taking a lead hammer and just smacking the faucet with that much force. So what they usually do in that situation is instead they have another pipe come off of the end. So, so it's like pipe comes in, goes water up to your faucet, right? Mm -hmm. But then they'll have another pipe that goes off and goes straight up above where the faucet is. So it's higher than where the water comes out of the faucet. So that the water will never fill up the pipe and it leaves an air pocket. And the air pocket is a spring. And so when you shut off your faucet, the water for a second will go up and compress that air and then, then slowly decompress and push back down and it saves your plumbing. So if you're ever in an old house, if you're ever in like an old Victorian house or whatever, you turn on the plumber and you hear that, you hear that bang. You know, when you turn off the faucet, it's like you hear that throughout the whole house and, and you'll sometimes even feel it like you'll feel like it or, or you'll feel like kung, 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 like you'll hear the pipes and the walls shaking it's like that's all water hammer as soon as you oh pull that's buffer, yeah it goes away yeah so um as a matter of fact a great example of modern homes is they have uh something called the um you guys will know what it's called in the chat it's the little tank on top of your hot water heater have you ever noticed on top of your hot oh, water the, heater there's like a the little helium looking tank yeah it's a it's like the Dude, it's a trip. It's, it's, it's like a pressure catcher. It, it is. It, it, it's, it's about to explode. It'll try and catch some of that. No, guess, no, it, yeah. it does more than that. It does more than that. But you're right. You are right. It's it's basically to keep your plumbing from exploding and your water. Yeah, from exploding. it's like a big tank, a but, big orb thing nearby, right? It's expansion tank. Thank you. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, that's here's, the here's what's a trip about it. I always thought it was just an empty tank. I thought it was just an empty tank to allow water oh, to I go somewhere, thought. right? Yeah, it's I would not. Huh. It's not. It has a rubber bladder inside of it and a Presta valve like a bicycle tire. And what you have to do huh. is you have to measure the pressure of the water coming into your house, like the like the pressure from the system, like if you have a well or a pump or you're on city water. You have to figure out what the peak pressure is. So and I so I and I had to figure this out because I had to change my water, hot water heater. So I had to learn about this. <laughs> so then what you do is you figure out what the pressure is in your house. So it's like, let's say you have eight PSI or whatever. OK, my water pressure is eight PSI. You have to go pump that thing up. You have to take it out of the box, hook on your little ear pump, pump it up to eight PSI oh. and then install it onto the tank. And what it does is it pushes back. Like in a neutral place, there's no pressure. But if the water pushes up into the tank, it'll be it, it pushes back with exactly eight PSI to neutralize the pressure coming into the house and equalize Very the water cool. pressure. And Very the thing cool. is, if that breaks, if that and mine was broken, if that membrane breaks inside of it and it no longer pushes back with that pressure, you'll start noticing water hammer effects in the house. Like where you turn on the faucet and you get, or you turn off the faucet and you get you weird noises in the walls, or you hear slaps, or you hear little creaks and cracks and stuff. That 90% of the time, it's that tank that failed when you have that problem. And huh. it's with the hot water line. It's, and the reason why they put it on the hot water side is because the hot water side, you have the hot water heater going from cold to really hot. And yeah. that creates a lot of expansion in the in the heated air that gets into the line. So it puts a lot more pressure. So you have to equalize that out. Otherwise, you'd like open up your hot water and it would be like, and then it would like slowly then be the speed of the cold water, right? You don't want to every time you open your faucet, have it coming out under pressure. So that so that that tank that uh that overflow tank or whatever that people say the expansion tank that thing's literally just there just to equalize the pressure. So if the pressure goes up above eight psi because the water heater is heating the water, yeah, to make sure that when you open both the and oh oh that's what it was. My bad. I was I was a little bit wrong. It's so when you open up both uh, uh valves on a faucet, it doesn't feed the hot water back into the city system hmm. because 
if you don't have that expansion tank pushing back on your hot water system with the same pressure as the incoming water, yeah, what's going to happen is if you open up both faucets, it's not going to be able to, it's going to follow the path of least resistance. So if it goes up to eight PSI and it can only come out of the faucet so fast, the rest of that pressure is going to loop back around, push against the cold water and force it back into the system, which is going to raise the pressure on the city's water feed. And that's why every house has to have one of these. And so, you know, only so many of them can fail on a circuit before it starts causing major problems. So here's what you're supposed to do. You're yeah. supposed to, you're supposed to go check it every year. I didn't know this. I lived here for 20 years before I finally checked mine only to find out it died oh. empty number of years ago. But uh, but you're supposed to check it every year. And the way you check it is there's just a little nipple on the top of it. If you get up on a stand, you unscrew the nipple just like a bike tire. And you just put a little pressure gauge on it and just make sure that it reads pressure for number one. If it reads zero pressure, that means it's dead. It's completely dead. <laughs> um, but it, but make sure it matches the pressure of the pressure coming into your house. And to get the pressure coming into your house, if you don't have a gauge to put on your uh, uh, spigot outside and open up your spigot to see what the pressure is in your house, yeah. uh, you can usually just call the local utility service and they'll measure it at, at, your ad, at everybody's address. Because depending on how high you are on the hill, it's going to affect your pressure. So they'll tell you what your pressure is so that you can match it with the expansion tank or you can just buy like a $10 gauge. It screws on where your garden hose does. You open it up and it'll tell you exactly what your pressure is. Yeah. But, but, but isn't that way more complicated than you thought? Like I thought it was yeah, just it a is. little it metal is. tank that did nothing. And it turns out it's this very sophisticated air bladder suspension system inside of the damn thing. Damn. And they have to be replaced like every five or seven years, which nobody does. The other thing is the anodes. Like when was the last time you replaced the anodes, the sacrificial anodes in your hot water heater? Yeah, I don't have to do that. I don't my tank i don't think i have to do that with my tankless system so oh that's right you have a tankless system yeah. okay but that is a thing that is a that is a thing and should be done uh occasionally yeah i didn't do it for 20 20, so 20 22 <laughs> years water tastes like iron <laughs> dude okay so <laughs> this is gross this is gross and i hope i don't make anybody throw up but Why when does I was my water taste like blood that's when weird. i was changing out the hot water tank i i drained my hot water tank like to get the sediment out if you ever wonder yeah. why your hot water tank has a, a little valve on the bottom of it it's yeah. not that you can like screw on a garden hose and wash your cars as a matter of fact you probably shouldn't do that i set a bad example by doing that because it turns out the sediment oh. come out and you basically turned your, your, yeah, your, your sand blaster on your card like don't you do that. should really filter your hose yeah. water i'm lucky i'm on filter or, water. I'm or on filter water, so it wasn't a big deal but if you're on a well you would fucking sand blast your car if you did but i did fill a bucket and get one of those little grill thingies that sits in the bottom of the bucket yep uh, and have two buckets two buckets you got your soapy bucket and your rinsey bucket yeah, uh, both of those should have the little great thing in the bottom. You can get ones that actually have like a bit of a slopey thing to it. So you can kind of like right washboard your your rags or glove thing or whatnot. But yeah, that's a that's a good point. It, it's an overtime sort of thing. But man, yeah, you you can uh, you'll fuzz your uh, the swirlies. You'll get little swirlies yeah. and stuff sometimes and whatnot. Yeah, that's. That's so if you're super anal about your car. So well, when was the last time you? Oh, well, actually, you got the you've got the tankless system. But back when you had a yeah, tank yeah. system, I assume you had a tank system, or was it always tankless? Oh yeah, no, no. Um, and I don't think I ever did. I rented a lot, so I never, I, I never, I never drained. Uh, the only time I ever drained mine is if I needed hot water for something. Like if yeah. I needed hot water, I'd open it up and wash my car or whatever, like I wasn't supposed to. So I thought there was no sediment. I'm like, I'm on a city water supply, a municipal water supply. It's supposed to be filtered like like if you pour if you fill up a bucket full of water, there's no sediment settling in the bottom like with a well system. So yeah. I'm like, I must be good. I crack the valve open. Clean water's coming out, right? It's not like fucking mud coming out like it does on some systems. I'm oh, like, yeah. we're good. So when I replace the water heater, when we're taking it down off the stand, I still had the valve open because I never closed it because I had to drain the tank to, to move it. When we tilted the tank, then it started pouring out this like fucking rust water. Like it was this bright, like brownish, um, uh, like clay looking color that i mean it literally looked like poop it, it was just literally poop was pouring out of my hot water heater and this was what was settling in the bottom like couple of inches of my hot water heater that i could never see because when i opened up the valve to drain it it wasn't draining what was below the spigot it was only draining what was above the spigot and i found out that when you drain the tank you're not supposed to just open the valve on the bottom and drain it what you're supposed to do is agitate it you're supposed to turn off the water supply drain the hot water tank down as you know to the bottom then turn on the water supply and let it blast the inside of the tank agitate everything so it gets suspended in the water and then it comes out the spigot i never did that i would just open the spigot and just let it drain right with the water still filling it again and so it was this constant flow and then you turn it off and you're like, well, I just flushed my tank. No, that's not. There's a whole procedure to it. You have to go look to flush your tank where it's like you you turn off the water supply, you drain the tank down, then you turn on the water supply with the spigot closed. Then you open the spigot while it's running. It agitates it. You drain it. You have to do that. And you have to keep cycling that till no more crap comes out of the tank. 
I never did that. So my tanks literally had like two inches of this yeah. like rust sludge bacteria biscuit <sighs> forming in the bottom of it. That it's was just 80 nuts. pounds of dirt and rocks and metal it shavings. <laughs> and it, it stunk too. It, it reeked. Like it did not smell like iron. It smelled like it, it, was, it was ass. It was bacteria, whatever it was. So I was like, man, we've been, we've been showering in that. Now, granted, we weren't drinking water from the hot water heater, but that doesn't mean there's not hot water, water in, in the spigot when you open up the cold water and there's still some left in there. Right. I mean, you're still mixing it. So when I saw that, I was like, man, I'm going to be a lot more careful. And then the sacrificial anode completely gone. Wasn't even existent. Like, 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 not like it was worn out. Like it was gone. Like this, this pipe that sits in the tank that's supposed to, you know, uh, absorb the, um, uh, the corrosion completely gone. Like, like you put it in acid. It was vaporized. Jeez. Like all you had was the nubbin above the water line. That was it. The rest of it was just disappeared. And I was like, oh my God, dude. And so what you need to do is I think it's every five years, you're supposed to go out there and there, the, usually there's a bolt. You can see it on top of your hot water heater. They'll just be a big like nut head or a big bolt head. And you just basically take that, loosen it up, pull it out. And there'll be a big, huge metal pipe stuck on the bottom of it. And that pipe is either made out of aluminum or magnesium. Those are the two. So you want a magnesium one, though, because aluminum is now being linked to Alzheimer's and dementia and all that. Don't don't fuck with everything it. is, man. No, cares. no, but I mean, the, the, the evidence is pretty solid on the aluminum stuff. Like, like it was it was a theory before. Now they're like, oh, we're we're 100 percent sure there's there's a bad because there's a when the aluminum builds up in your system, it does something weird with your your neurons like it breaks mm. down neuron connections. But anyways, it, it's not bad. It's like you can still drink out of aluminum cans because they're lined with um sure they're lined with like a varnish or whatever they put in there. But uh, it, it dude, it's it's so wild th that you have this giant pole just sticking in your hot water heater that nobody teaches you about. Like does anybody in here that doesn't have a family member that's a plumber, did anybody tell you when you bought your house or rented your apartment that you're supposed to check this thing? Hell, I rented apartments. I never had a renter ever come in, no matter how long I lived in an apartment. I never had them come in and check the node in the hot water tank. Never once. Nah. And they, probably, they, they probably just let the thing fuck up and then they just replaced the whole tank. Yeah, but the problem is those tanks back then would last like 20 years. That node was gone after five. Oh, well. And so, so, so I, I hope everybody watching this, that you, that one of the values that you get from tech talk today, um, especially our two super chatters. We love you guys. Uh, go check that node at the end of the stream. Go check that. Like, like, but please watch a YouTube video first. Cause you do want to depressurize the system. If you, if you just pull that node off where your hot water heaters full of hot water, it's going to geyser on you. Don't do it. Um, but figure out how to check the node. It's not hard. And a new node is only like 60 bucks. Like you can Home Depot, or you can get them cheaper online, like 60 bucks. And you just, it, they, they all fit everything. You can, you can find one that'll fit your tank. No problem. It doesn't matter how old it is. Uh, and then the other thing you want to do is check that um, expansion tank. So if you have an expansion tank on top, just go, go get a little, you know, bicycle pump or anything that has a, uh, has a pressure gauge and just undo the little nipple on it, stick it on there and look at your pressure and just make sure there's pressure. Like, even if it's low, it's not that big of a deal, but just make sure there's pressure. If it reads zero, if you stick it on, there's no air coming out at all. And then you put a bike pump on it and try to pump it up and it shows zero pressure. That thing's blown. The bladder's gone. You have to replace it. Snap. Yep. And they're easy to replace. They're easy to replace. Like, because they're such a big thing. It's like you literally just you can grab the thing and just even unscrew it with your hands. I didn't even need any tools. I just grabbed it and just was like and was able to get it off. <laughs> Ladies. Uh, but no, it was, it was like, I want to say it was 60 bucks to replace that. And, um, the A node was like another $60, but I didn't replace the A node because another water heater was literally, Oh, that's the other thing. If you don't replace that A node, this is what happens. It's not a water quality issue. It's a rust issue. If the rust yeah. can't hit the A node, it goes after the tank itself. So my entire tank, that's why I had to replace my hot water tank. The welds that held the two hemispheres together. Cause my tank was basically two like, you know, hydro formed, you know, uh, uh, hydroform cylinder halves welded together all the seams where the welding was 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 leaking water was literally seeping out of the welds snap because the rust went so far through that super thick metal because it's a pressure chamber i mean they use super thick metal on those things it's it's a oh, yeah the thing can explode so so the inside of my tank the basic inside of my tank the metal width was only one third of its width throughout the tank Dang. So like it ate away two thirds of the width of the metal which means that tank could have just straight up blew up and ruptured at any time because the tank was so weak that the tank would have blown up before the pressure valve popped no, granted, it wouldn't have blown up my house or anything because it would have been relatively low pressure. But I mean, it would have been right. a massive freaking steam cloud and massive hot water thing blasting into my garage, you know, probably soaking everything on the ceiling, messing up all the drywall. <laughs> uh, dude, it was crazy.
Yeah, yeah. Dread Pirate Rabbit said they call it the sacrificial anode because it sacrificed itself to protect the tank. Absolutely. And the thing is, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing as have you ever seen the ships where they have those big metal um, chunks all over the hull? Like if you ever look at the hull of a big ship, like cruise ships and military ships, you'll see these giant metal blocks. They just make no sense. Just they're everywhere, like down <laughs> under the waterline. It just looks like somebody just took a bolt and just screwed a bunch of giant metal blocks onto the hull of the ship. And that's what they are. They're, they're called sacrificial anodes in the salt water. Um, the salt water corro tries to corrode the hull, but then that corrosion goes to the anode instead of the actual hull. And then as those decay away, they just unscrew them and stick a new one on. And the hole never gets touched. Yeah. So you just, it's basically like if you have a dog, you know, and you don't want him eating the, the food that you want, you put a more tastier food to him next to it. Yeah, He's yeah. going to go over, eat that food and leave your food alone as long as you keep feeding him what he prefers. Same thing with rust. It's like, I, and I never knew that before. I was like, I didn't know you could literally attract corrosion away from something. I thought that if you just put stuff in, it's going to corrode. But no, apparently there's only so much corrosion that can happen within a volume of water <laughs> and that corrosion is going to go to whatever because it's basically eating away at the metal yeah. so it's like if you give it the tasty metal it goes for i know i'm not using very scientific terms here but yeah it, it likes to eat the tastier metal yeah it does. i mean why not it makes sense magnesium and aluminum are delicious compared to iron you know but it works it's like yeah. somebody figured that out along the way and now bolt holes are you know can last for hundreds of years it's it's wild uh, Historia said replacing those wasn't fun. I was worried about being electrocuted. Oh, do you have an electric water heater? If so, just turn the breakers off. Oh, yeah, that's not turn yeah, the breakers turn off. off. Don't, yeah, that's silly. That That's one thing. Electricity scares me. Trust me. I've been, I, I'm lucky to be alive. I've had some bad shocks in my day, like, like that I shouldn't be alive. Like, I just really got lucky. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've, I've, sw I've, I've swapped a few switches and, uh -huh. and light sockets without shutting breakers off. And then, how like, many times have you been tagged? Oh, I don't know, three or four. A nice little, oh, oh Jesus. Yep. <laughs> or like a light bulb will break off and trying to like untwist the, you know, the screw piece that's still stuck yeah. in the socket. And it's like, it's okay if you just touch the outer edge, but man, if you touch the center and the edge, you're, yeah. oh, it literally feels, it's weird too, because it doesn't feel like you're getting shocked on the skin. It feels like inside oh, no. of your body yeah, like man, it's vibrating. It's, it's, it's weird. It is a very, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's very yeah. unpleasant. Uh, um oh hey historio historio <laughs> historio historio thank you for the five dollar super chat boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -doo. you ready you ready for it can you handle it can you handle it here it's coming it's coming ladies you ready you ready I don't know if this is, you guys aren't hearing the you guys aren't oh, wait, hearing my cash register sound here right. do your cash register sound again oh we're not hearing it damn it can you fix it like i don't know it? i don't know um it i hear i i hear it it's Aww. playing on my it's playing on my system side at least and can you change it to like come through the speakers so it at least gets picked up by the microphone well, that's what i was trying uh i don't have any speakers uh, all right i guess I can go like this. there you go do that here we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you we, we appreciate the support guys you, you, you can tell we go the extra mile to try to reward you for it <laughs> what? why is my activity oh shit there's people we've missed, bro. I'm so sorry. Um, Mario uh, did 99 cents earlier. Historia, here you get. We're gonna give Historia another one here. Ready? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, the the tech chef 420. You know, cooking up that 420. Chef. He said, "I think politics have slowed down progression." Well, that's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> I, yeah, I at least in part. <laughs> by design, sir. By design, we pay people to slow us down. They wouldn't want us yeah, going yeah. too quickly um yeah except for when you need them to go fast like with like eight with it with the ai stuff it's like i can't everybody's talking about how ai is like progressing too fast and everything and like the politicians still don't know what the internet is it's uh, and i don't I, care this is a party free. thing no politicians seem to know what the internet is like because they're all just too damn old right yeah so and the, and the ones that aren't too damn old they like even if they kind of understand what the internet is they don't have the time to become experts on it no. So I hope at one point we do get some people in office that actually understand how technology works, understand how the Internet works and could actually help them to not think the Internet is just Google or Facebook. Like, like, seriously, we need we need some some better uh, some better laws keeping uh, companies from letting AI just run freaking amok because and I'm not talking about like taking over and become Skynet and killing everybody. I'm not talking about that. Uh, I, I'm just talking about 
AI being used by so many people to just generate gobs and gobs of misleading content all oh, yeah. over the internet and making it so much harder for other people, you know, that, that are actually spending time in like creating content and making a living. It makes it so much harder for them. And then you have to make a decision. We're heading towards this decision that's really scary, which is like you have to make the decision of am I going to stay the course and keep making the same content I am, but making less and less and less doing it day by day, like literally going backwards financially? Or do I finally just embrace what everybody else is doing and allow AI to augment me so that I can still make the same amount of money or just replace myself with AI as much as humanly possible and make yeah. more shit some money? But, uh, I don't um, know, man. I, I you know, know what I found out the other day? You know what I what? found out the other day? A guy that interviewed me. I'm not going to say who it is because you, you guys could probably go figure it out, but I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to put any pressure on him. But a guy who interviewed me in 2016 who just started like his YouTube career and he, and he sat me down at Vlogger Fair. Mm -hmm. In 2016, yeah, and he was like, he was like, hey, you know, how are you so successful? Because I was growing like crazy back then, like yeah. I was facing a lot of other people. He's like, dude, what's your keys to success? How are you doing that? Like he was really serious. He was taking notes and everything. He does this interview, great interviewer, fantastic guy. Completely lose touch with the dude. Didn't talk to him for years and years and years. I'm talking to my boss the other day, and he brings up a name that was familiar. He's like, he's like, yeah, I watched this guy on YouTube named, and I was like, wait a second, I know that name. I was like, hold on. So I pulled him up on YouTube because he told me he's worth a hundred million dollars now. Woo. And I was like, wait a second, a dude in 2016 who had just started his YouTube channel who was asking me for advice is now worth a hundred million dollars. So I went and looked at his YouTube channel. He basically transitioned like all over into AI and use even before that, all the technologies that were available and services for generating um as much content as humanly possible with without having to hire a bunch of humans to do it. And so even before this whole GPT thing, like even just using automation before that, he figured out how to like automate the process and increase content yield. So now he can create like hundreds and hundreds of videos a week throughout all these different platforms, all the podcasts, everything. It's all automated. It's all on rails. And, and his network oh, sure. is $100 million now. And yeah. I was like, dude, I got to message that guy and be like, hey, you remember when you interviewed me in 2016? Did you use any of that information I gave you to make that $100 million? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some interesting setups where... um yeah, man, where it where like a good part of the at least like the administrative side, heck, yeah. you could even get into the editing part of it if you wanted to is yep. is like fairly automated where like, OK, we've recorded a, a YouTube video. And as soon as it gets posted, there's like make or Zapier or something can mm -hmm. notice that that gets done. It'll um, or even before that, even like you there's all kinds of cool automations and stuff you set up with like Airtable and, and make and Zapier, things like that, where um say like i don't know a blog post gets posted or like you drop a video into a google drive and that will it'll automatically grab the video upload it up to youtube pull the transcript um cut it up you know throw it through some other ai editing thing and, and it'll pull out you know clips of it and this and that and stuff like that it's pretty it's pretty interesting yeah there's an online service uh you'll probably recognize the name let me see let me see if i can pull it up here really quick it's like a completely ai generated video well, you can do like faceless stuff too, where you just basically, you you know, you'll see those TikTok accounts that are that scrape the most popular Reddit posts and then read them out while somebody's playing Subway Surfer or something. Yep, dude, those make gobs of money. Yeah. So much, so much so money. Much money. Yep. It's, it's bonkers. So the one, the, okay. So oh, runway. That's what it was. Yeah, runway. Run, oh, run, yeah, runway yeah. ML. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So uh, fully, fully automated video creation. So all you have to do. Yeah. All, all you have to do with this, and, and a lot of people use this, and people don't even recognize it because it's really good at having mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. things, styles. So, so all you have to do with this is just take your camera, talk into it, no green screen, just talk into your camera, say whatever you want, B roll the things, or have other cameras recording the other things that you're talking about, drag in videos and content you find on Google of other similar things. You just drag it all into a folder. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to get, if you don't want to, you don't have to do anything else. So you just push generate. It'll figure out from the content what you're saying and how you're talking. Like, is this a documentary? Is this a blog? Is this personal? Is this professional? It'll figure all that out for you. You just push a button and it craps out a video that's like perfect for the algorithm, gives you all the tags, the title, creates the thumbnail, everything for you. It's completely on autopilot. And then if you don't like it, you just push a button and it just re-rolls until you do. If you don't like a certain section, you can just highlight that section and have it re-roll and rebuild that section. Mm -hmm. And so you can build an entire video without any video editing at all. And then it has a prompt that you can use 
where like if you want in the prompt, you can talk to it just like Chat GPT and say, um, the segment where I talk about this, you you got something wrong or I, it didn't come across the way that I want. I want you to present it more like this. And just from talking to it, it'll go to that section of the video, figure out what you said and rework that section of the video while still keeping in the context of everything else around it. And if there's other stuff that's attached to it, it'll remove it. That sounds expensive. I want to say it was like it was like twenty dollars a video or something like that. Like, like for, for to get enough credits to be able to do all the processing to make a really good video is like yeah. twenty dollars. But if you can make a twenty dollar video that makes a hundred dollars, yeah, and you just keep repeating that, I mean that that's that's a lot of a lot of money. Even if you lose money in the beginning, each one of those videos is going to be a path to another video for you watching. Well, and and so, yeah, and like over time, right? Like there's there's some long tail to that a bit. And so, so. like check this out. Right now they have in video AI. Right? They have Descript. I've I've seen Descript. Oh, yeah, Descript is yep. good. Runway ML uh flicky uh that's one for making videos specifically custom tailored to social media like tiktok and instagram and stuff like that and here's the other thing is you can chain the services together like i saw a yeah, guy yeah. who made a youtube video where he's like first he uses the ai to generate the big video that goes on youtube mm -hmm. then he reworks that video into 20 of the same video just worded differently with different ai presenter and different b-roll that it gets its sources from searching the internet and then it, and then it puts that on 20 different channels that all have slightly different names and the a, and the ai even creates the channels with the names so that they complement each other so if you find channel a you're more likely to find channel b and c and it's it uses this whole algorithm to just trick you into going down that path and then it generates the same video essentially but in a way that the thumbnail in uh description will make you click it again even if you watch the previous video because you'll think it's something new even though it's just reworked and then um, and then what it does is it takes all those videos and then it creates separate social media videos. But it doesn't just create one and post it everywhere. It creates a custom tailored social video for whatever is most likely trending on each social media platform so that your master big video gets cut down into a smaller video that's targeted for that form factor, for that audience and for whatever is trending most on that platform. And and so then it publishes those to those platforms and they're just monthly services. You just pay like 50 or 60 dollars a month or whatever for these services that coordinate all the smaller services. Uh, like, for instance, I use Poe, which is which is like every AI under the sun <laughs> under one thing. Like right now, right now I have access to because, uh, you know, I do the local AI stuff with my graphics card using LM Studio. Yeah. But but if you want to use cloud AI, because there is a big difference. Keep I, I want to make sure that I'm not misleading people because people did get a little confused when I said, oh, you can do all the stuff that you do in the cloud on your computer. Yes, the same technology is in LLMs, but the size of the training data. No, you're not going to be doing that on your local computer because your graphics card doesn't have like, you know, a terabyte of RAM. Right. Um, so so the cloud AIs have a lot more training. So like for accuracy uh, and for number of like token retention and stuff like that in memory, you, you really the cloud AI is the way to go. However, the local AIs, if you're doing specialized stuff, can be amazingly fast and efficient. So it just depends on what you're doing. It's a mix. So I want to and plus they're not censored. The cloud AIs are all censored as hell. And you got to like, you know, prompt engineer your way around. them. You don't have to really do that a whole lot with local AI. But with Poe. You can either pay Claude $20 a month, OpenAI $25 a month, um, or Anthropic is the one that makes uh, uh, Claude. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, Llama with Facebook that you have to pay for their pro services. All of them offer a free version that's not that good, but for the pro version to get the latest tech and everything, you got to pay, right? Or you can just pay Poe $25 a month or whatever. You can get access to every AI on a credit system, which each AI costs a certain number of credits and you get a million credits a month. So, so right now, these are the AIs I have access to through Poe. Like, and this would cost me literally like two thousand dollars a month to, to get all these. Um, so I have uh, from the start, I have ChatGPT 3.5, 3.5 Turbo, 3.5 Turbo 200K, 3.5 200K, uh, Web Search Assisted ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, which is like these are the API services that OpenAI offers. So this isn't like ChatGPT. This is like the much more powerful API versions. Then I get Claude 3 Sonnet, Claude 3 Haiku, Claude 3 Opus, which are the small, medium, and extra large models of Anthropics AI that kicks ass at software development, like literally just destroys GPT-4 for software development. I also have GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo, GPT-4 32K, GPT-4 64K, GPT-4 200K token parameter. I also have Playground version 2.5, um, which I think is uh, a play on Stable Diffusion. Uh, Gemini. So I have Google. I have Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is their latest nice. model that you can only get if you pay, right? The multimodal model. I get access to Gemini Pro, the standard model, then then Gemini, the, the free version everybody gets. Dolly 3. So I get access to Dolly, the image generator. Stable Diffusion XL. So like the biggest model of Stable Diffusion. Mixtral. Not, not Mistral, but Mixtral 8x22B. Mm -hmm. 
I get Mistral Large, Mistral and Mistral Medium. So those are the official Mistral models that are from, uh, well, Mistral. Mistral AI is its own company. If you guys haven't heard, Microsoft recently did a deal with them. So yeah. now Microsoft is playing both sides. Like before, OpenAI and Mistral were direct competitors with each other. And now mm -hmm. Microsoft has exclusivity contracts with both of them. So Microsoft has like two of the most, the biggest up and coming AIs, both now working against each other for Microsoft's benefit. So Microsoft, they, they, they've been making some pretty good decisions lately. I mean, not, not for, not for humanity's sake, but for like <laughs> their own sake and their investors, they've been making some pretty good decisions. Yeah. Okay. I also have access to Llama, Llama 2, Llama 270B, and Llama 2 running on Grok. If you guys don't know what Grok is, Grok is a specific CPU that is, that is designed by this company called Grok, G-R-O-K, not to be confused with Elon's yeah. ripoff, G-R-O-K. Trying to, so I, I was wondering why Elon called it Grok, G-R-O-K, and it turns out as he was trying to associate himself with this up-and-coming company that's creating these really fast AI chips. And, and so he found a way to do it by just having it pronounced the same but slightly different spelling. Hmm. So if you haven't been following Grok, dude, it's insane. Go look it up. Grok are these CPUs that can run mod LLMs it like breakneck speed. And so now companies like Apple and stuff are trying to build their technology or license their technology to put it into their own chips like M1 and stuff and M2. Mm. Because it is, to give you an idea of how fast it is, you can load Mistral. Mistral's largest model you can load on one of these mainframes that has a Grok CPU in it. And it can reply back with like two or 300 tokens a second. So it literally, like when you ask it a prompt, instead of going like this, like most prompts do, it's like this, page one, page two, page three, done. Like it is stupid fast and you can use it for free. If you guys want to give it, give it a test drive just to see what I'm talking about here. I'll, it's G-R-O-K, I think dot A-I. Let me, let me double check really quick. So G-R-O-Q. I'll find it for you guys. Grok. Grok A-I. There it is. So it's, oh, it's actually just grok.com. Accelerated AI solutions. So here's the URL I'm putting in chat right now for you guys. And then if you want to play with it, just click on playground under developers. This playground on, on Grok. Just click on that. It'll open up a playground just like OpenAI does. And you can load which model you want. They support uh, Gemini, uh, Metalama, and Mistral. So, or Mixtral. So they can load the three major AIs. But it's crazy. Like, I can load up Gemini, and I can ask Gemini a question, and it'll answer so much faster than Google Gemini can, can directly. Like, if I go to Google, log in, and use Gemini directly, it's like one-tenth the speed of this. And, it, and the only difference is they're using the same training model. They're using the same code. It's just running on their new generation AI chip. And huh. this is going to, and it's going to change everything because these chips will be in mobile devices in the future too, because the biggest complaint with AI right now is that it's too slow replying. Um, so you can't really have that human conversation with it where it's like fluid. You have to wait a little while in between talking, you know, it talks kind of slow. Right. Um, so this solves that Grok now can, you know, you ask it a question and within a second you have like two pages of answers already queued up and ready to go. Hmm. So um, stupid, stupid, cool technology. But I have access to that through Poe. Um, I also have access to uh, it. All, all the frameworks through that, by the way, I have Llama, uh, Mistral and uh, or sorry, Llama, Mistral. And uh, what was the third one? Llama. I have access to all those through Grok using Poe, which I'd have to pay for. I also have this thing called DBRX Instruct. I've never used it. Apparently, it's a it's a <laughs> mixture of large language models that are trained specifically for Databrick DBRX instruction. I don't even know what it is, but it's it's something specialized. Uh, Reca Flash is an efficient, capable 21 billion token multimodal model optimized for fast workloads and amazing quality. Works with text images and video inputs. So I haven't seen very many multimodals that do video yet. So Reca Flash, I haven't even used it yet. I have access to it. Gemini 1.5 Pro 128K, which is Gemini's really big context model. I also have access to ChatGPT 4 16K, ChatGPT 4 128K, Cloud 3 Sonnet, Haiku, and Opus, but with 200,000 parameters. So if I'm willing to pay more tokens, I can actually use a much higher or a much higher parameter model, and that way it'll remember things longer. So if I have a conversation with it or I'm writing a huge amount of code, it can keep more of that context in memory. Mm -hmm. But it does, but it does cost more tokens to use, and you have a million tokens a month for twenty five dollars, which with nice. the most expensive models is about six thousand prompts. So as long as you do under six thousand prompts a month, you're probably not going to run into a problem. Yeah. I also have access to Gemini's one point five Pro one million model which is which is the largest context i've heard of so far so that's a, a million tokens that that's or it's either a million tokens or a million parameters i can't remember but just massive right gargantuan mixtral 87b deep seek coder which is uh together.ai if you want to go look at it 
Uh, Code Llama 70B, 70BT, 70B Chat, 72B Chat, 72BT, Cloud 2, Cloud 200K, GPT-4 Classic, Google Palm, uh, uh, Gemma Instruct 7B, Gemma 7B, FW, FW Mistral 7B, Mythomax L213B. I don't even know what that is, but it says this model was created by uh, Griff based on Llama 213B and is proficient at both role playing and story writing. Uh, all the llamas, llama 270B, 34B, 13B, 7B, 13B, and 7B of the code versions and the instruct version. So if you're doing coding, you want to use the code version. The instruct version, I think, is if you're doing, um, like, if you want to te teaching, teaching yeah. AI. Uh, hey. so, yeah, Solar Mini, GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct, GPT 3.5 Turbo Standard, Claude Instant, Claude Instant 100K, Claude 2.1 200K, and Mixtral 87B. Those are all separate AIs that I have access to through Poe. And then you can also load these bots that basically mix and match all those different AIs and use them as agents to even get like more functionality. So Poe is really cool. I do have a little bit of a beef with them right now, though, because they recently changed from an unlimited model, which I paid a year for. And they did refund me, by the way. So I'm not mad at them anymore. Um, they just refunded me and let me keep my service. Uh, but they did change it. It used to be unlimited when you signed up. Now, now you get a million tokens a month. And then once you exhaust those millions, you have to wait until it rolls over the next month hmm. um, and if or, or buy more tokens. And then if you don't use the tokens, they don't carry over. So like if you pay oh, for a month, yeah, I thought that was shit. I and I told him that I was like, you guys can't fucking be doing this because it's like if I have five hundred thousand tokens left that I paid for and they just get wiped, it kind of reminds me of like the old cell plans back in the day. Yeah, that? yeah. Like, oh, you don't use your minutes? Like you better just call people randomly. You know, feel like you're getting robbed. Yeah, he didn't just go. Just give us ten bucks. Yeah, brother. Woo! <laughs> Uh oh, I hope I didn't just set off the fire alarm. This is getting. Uh oh, shit, shit, shit. Hold on, people are sleeping. Hold on. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, I think we might be okay. Oh, shit. By the way, if you guys haven't, uh, haven't noticed why I'm so hyper today, thank you for not noticing. Um, I'm having a quad shot coffee straight Ooh. up. I I haven't had anything more than a double shot. And I usually only do single shot. I, I yeah. have a double shot every once in a while. Rarely. I haven't had a quad shot in probably four years, five years. Snap. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, uh, I'm going for high score. Hey, uh, just Joe. Thank you for the $10. He said, I'm a long time fam of, of me or auxiliary. Cause you got to pick a favorite. Probably you. It's gotta be you. Nobody, nobody likes me. No, you'd be surprised, dude. I'm <laughs> micro sauce. You'd be surprised. You are, you are very, very loved by the community. Because I did, I, I was thinking about like getting rid of you and putting somebody, you know, somebody else over there. Uh huh. And then I did the math, and people said that they would literally come to my house and kill me if I did that. So I was Jesus. like, all right, well, I mean, you make a compelling That's argument. <laughs> I don't have no, to do that. You can't That's replace all. A lot. He's he's a beautiful human. Uh, just Joe, thank you for that ten dollars. Said I'm a longtime fan. I tried to send you a link through the super chat, but it wouldn't let me. Yep. I shoved it in regular chat. I'm wondering on my own version of Jarvis, what do you think? Oh, working on your own version of Jarvis, what do you think? You so have far? to like link it on Twitter or something. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're lucky you didn't get timed out trying to post a link. Go to Discord. Uh, just Joe, go to Discord and put yeah. it off topic. Yeah, there you go. So, so that's the perfect place for it. Uh, go throw it in off topic, and I'll pull it up here on the screen so I can see it. Um, you know what? And I'm and and just Joe, this isn't meant to be offensive in any way, shape, or form, and say that you're unoriginal. But I do get a lot of people that create Jarvises since I've been talking about AI a lot lately. And I would say it's probably one of the most created things on GitHub. Like if you're ever looking for inspiration or you want to expand on your own project, just go to GitHub and literally type in Jarvis and look at the tens of thousands of projects of people that have created like Jarvis clones. But the cool thing with Jarvis is AI makes it so much more accessible. To do a Jarvis before, you had to literally like build your own neural network. You had to create your own like little thing, or at least emulate one, right? Yeah. Um, you'd have to build your own torch model. You'd have to you'd have to bust out your own uh, 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 what is what is it called? Um, uh, TensorFlow. You'd have to create your own mm -hmm. TensorFlow models. Uh, so it was it was an involved process. Now with AI, it's like you just pay for API access or run a local one and create an API access and then you're like uh write me code that that will listen to my voice and respond as if you're jarvis from iron man 
and about three or four pages of Python script later, you've got Jarvis. Like, I mean, that's it's so weird. It's like I I'm not going to do it right here. I'll do it. I'll do it on Twitch, but I could do a live demo where I show you how to use AI to create a Jarvis without knowing any programming at all and actually create the thing and get it working like just by talking to AI and cut and pasting in a notepad. Huh? I know because I because I, I created I created a Jarvis like months ago just to see how hard it would be. And and the and I got to tell you guys, I got to tell you guys, if you are using GPT-4 for coding, stop. Oh, yeah. Stop. GPT-4 was great for coding like a couple of months ago, but no, Claude fucking buried it. Like, if you want to talk about embarrassing, Claude 3 Opus, now granted, it's an expensive model. I mean, even to use it on Poe, it's $2,000 per prompt. Or sorry, no, sorry, I'm getting 2,000 points per prompt. So you get a million points for $20. So I don't know what that works out to. What is that, like 500 queries or something like that here? Let's, let me do some math here. So 1 million divided by 2,000. 500 well how did how the fuck was i right dude i suck at math i somehow got that right okay so you get 500 prompts a month which honestly isn't that much like if you think about it i could prompt something 500 times in a day working on a project like that's not unheard of like eight hours so so it is an expensive model to use however if you pay for it directly through cloud if all you're doing is coding and you don't need access to all the other ais like poe has just go to cloud specifically or cloud specifically and just pay for api access because the code that it writes is so freaking good. It's so good. Oh my God. It is scary. Good. It is so scary. Good that um, you guys may have noticed. I didn't stream yesterday or the day before. Uh, the reason I didn't stream on Thursday is my boss and mentor from Microsoft that I worked for, for 15 wonderful years. He, uh, I haven't seen him in like eight months. We used to stay in touch. We'd see each other every month. We'd get together, have coffee up at his photography studio in North bend uh, called Epic exposure. We'd chill out. Yeah, it it was a great time, but I've been feeling really, really bad. He's been dealing with a bunch of medical shit, so we haven't been able to meet up in like eight months. So he came my way. This is the first time since I've known the man. Uh, I mean, I met him in 2000, and he's never once been to my house, inside of my house. Oh, wow. So he came over into my house upstairs. I mean, my house is just destroyed. I was so embarrassed for him to see that. But, um, But he came up here. He sat in the nerd cave. He finally got to see where all the magic happens. He thought it was really cool, even though it's like super messy and dirty. But but he wanted to he wanted to know more about AI. Like we got into talking about AI and he wanted, and I had the computer sitting here. So he's like, Hey, can you show me a couple of things? He's like, I'm doing photography stuff. And, and I'm trying to figure out like, you know, how to go look at my competition online and all the other photography studios that are in the area and like how they do their pricing structures, how they do their packages, samples of their work. He's like, I'm trying to do this research, but he's like, it's so much. He's like, there's so much photography stuff going on. He's like, he's like, I cannot get through it manually. He's like, well, how would you use AI to, to do that? And I was like, okay, well, well, what about, what about we create a program? I said, what about we, if we created a program that just goes out and pulls all the information from all the photography websites within a hundred mile radius and then sorts it and puts it into a spreadsheet that like shows you like what their pricing structure is, what their rating is, how long they've been in business, how many customers they, they service. Like, like, and he's like looking at me like, no, how is that even possible? I just assumed it was because that's that's something I do. I tell everybody as a software developer, assume you can do everything until you can't. That, that's the better way. Don't ever talk yourself out of something because it's really easy to talk yourself out of something if you don't know that you can do it. But yeah. if you just assume you can do it, then you when you by the time you learn you can't do it, you've also learned a 100 other things that are useful to help you go in that direction. Whereas if you say, I don't know how to do that, and you just walk away, you're really doing yourself a disservice. So as a software developer, in my mind, I'm always like, I can do that. doesn't matter how hard the task is. You know, it's like if I want to create a knockoff of GTA five, like if I really want to, I can do it. I can do it. It might take a lot of time, might take a lot, but I can do it. I'm going to assume I can do it until I can. So we sat down in front of the computer and no shit within 30 minutes, just asking Claude three questions, Claude three opus. We probably went back and forth. I still have the conversation like right here. We went back and forth maybe 20 times, 20 times back and forth. And by the end, I had a cut and piece piece of code that I could drop into Python that would use Google google api without a token like somehow it figured out how to write code to like trick google with a fake cookie to to like use its api services without paying for it granted so probably not the greatest thing but it it did work and um and it was multi-threaded because i told it i wanted to go as fast as possible so it took that as being multi-threaded so it created a hundred threads it went out to google queried every site with near seattle within a hundred mile radius and it basically created the google query with all the stuff like this distance within this time last updated blah 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 like it created this really fancy google query that already gave my boss he was already looking at me he's like holy shit that's exactly what i'm looking for so then it took each one of those urls fired off a thread that opened up the url scanned the page downloaded the image from that pages into a folder that was under the site a folder with the site's middle name so like w it cut off www.com but it just put in the host name 
the host name had the images that it downloaded from the main site so that he had references for the work. Then it created a JSON file, which is like XML, like tighter XML. It created a JSON file that had a link to the folder. So you could open the name of the photography studio, a link to the folder. And then it spidered through the website, clicking all the other links, looking for email addresses, phone numbers, address, uh, customers, reviews. It goes through and grabs all that data using all these. It, it wrote code for regular expression evaluation. And, also, and it extracts that code to the best of its ability. Not only that, we even, this is how far we took it within about an hour. This was about an hour we spent. Not only did it go and extract all this data, and it did, did have some bugs. Like it's not, in 30 minutes, we didn't have a completely polished product, but it created a JSON file within about five minutes that had 300 photography outfits that were near Seattle. Each one had a folder with representations of their work. Like you could literally click on the folder and see, you know, images of their work. And then it also said the name, the contact information, their, their reviews, like on Yelp and stuff like that. You could also, and it was putting this all in a spreadsheet that you could just import into Excel and just use, right? And you could spin it any way you wanted. And uh, I was like, this is crazy. But I was like, God, how much further can we take this? This is fucking rad. So, so I was like, he, he was only interested in people that are doing human photography. So, so I was like, because there's a lot of dog photography and stuff in there. So, so I just said, Hey, is there any way that you can only include photographers that do human photography? So it went and downloaded a library that does human facial recognition. It scanned the images that it downloaded from each site with facial recognition to give it a percentage weight and verify if it was human. Then it also gave it a weighted response of how sure it was that it was male or female. And depending on that, put it in a subfolder under the folder with the images, male and female that had the it's the pictures and I'm sorted by gender. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is like stuff like honestly, even me, a career software developer, it would take me a week to go do all the research on these APIs and find the best way to do it and the best method and trial and error. And it, it, it'd take a lot. It, you know, it's like a lot of people like to think developers just sit down and they just type and they know every API in their head and they know how to access every single RESTful service. It, no, that's not how it works. A lot of it is spent doing research, figuring out which APIs, what's compatible, uh, you know, what's compatible with what, what is most efficient? How do I do something without doing the wrong thing over and over again? How do I, I was just blown away that this thing wrote code in each step of the way the code executed with GPT four. There's usually like weird, strange bugs where you have to like, it, it'll give you a piece of code that makes absolutely no sense. And then you give it back to it. It's like, Oh, I made a mistake. Let me fix that for you with cloud out of the, the 20 times going back and forth. I think we only had two pieces of code that didn't run because of an actual like legitimate error, like a missing namespace or a bad function name that was deprecated. Other than that, every piece of code we copied worked and it ran and it spawned all the threads. It filled the folder full of images. And I mean, within five minutes, he had like every photography place. We're flipping through it. We're like, we collapsed all the fields down to just the names of the businesses. And I'm going through it and he's like, he recognized like every fifth or sixth one, like because he studies photography in there. And he's like, oh, I know those people. So he knew it was pulling in real data. And so I was like, damn, dude, this is, this is scary. This this is scary shit, because if you're a software developer and your job is, you know, to have your boss come in and say, hey, I need something that can, you know, uh, generate charts from that SQL server or whatever that'll show me this and this and this compared to this and this compared to this. It's like now you can just have an AI, either use a cloud AI or an internal AI, feed it that data, like let it look at the database and say, study this database. Then after it's done studying the database, go back and ask it questions and, and be like, hey, from looking at that database, could you give me an Excel spreadsheet that would pull live data from this database that will look like this, 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 favor this, not compute this, give this a higher weight than this, and it'll just do it. And it's like, and, and then and then the developer just has to do the fit and finish, you know, fix like little things, little niggles that would be hard to explain and have it just perfectly do that. Because that's the one thing AI doesn't do a very good job of is like, if you have a piece of code in AI and you're like, I specifically want to change this one character and this one word on this one line. You have to be very specific, like to get it to do it. So, so there's some things that might be quicker to just open up notepad and just bang out the one character and be done with it. But, but like for writing functions, like if you're working on a big project, people are like, Oh, AI always runs out of space. It can't give me the reply because if the program is bigger than 300 lines, it can't tell me. No, you tell it to break it up. You say, you say, give me each chunk. And then each time I say, continue, give me the next chunk. And then you can have it give you thousands of lines of code. But that even could be too slow. So what I like to do is create the skeleton for the program. Like, give me the code of just the functions. So all the function definitions, all the includes. And then I can ask it, give me the code for each function. And I can just copy that code over one function at a time. And then what I can do is if I want to change a function or change how a function works, I tell it to change that function. It gives me just that new function code. 
And then if that new function code requires anything else in the code to change, it just tells me which lines to change and gives me the lines to change them with. It's crazy. It's, oh, dude, it, the future is just nuts. Like, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I, I have never been more excited about software development than right now because I already felt like I had a skill set that not a lot of people had that I had perfected over many, many years. And now I'm afraid that that skill set has largely been invalidated because a lot of what I was really good at doing that other people weren't doing, they can now just pick up in a weekend with some AI. Um, but the flip side of that is AI is so powerful that even somebody who knows as much as I do, that's been programming for as long as I do, it opens up so much more potential for what you can do and how fast you can do it, that it makes you feel invincible. It's like if I wanted to write a program like to do anything I want, like even right now, like and this is the weird thing is like you don't even think about it. It's so broad. You don't even think about it. Like I catch myself all the time trying to solve a problem. I'm like, why didn't I just go ask AI? Like like I'm sitting here in OBS the other day and I was like, I was like, I need to figure out how to flip my camera, like flip my camera because I have my camera upside down under my monitor now, if you guys haven't noticed. Uh -huh. um, so I was like, right I was click. like, yes, right click. right click to input, go to transform, rotate or flip. Right. I did that. That's what I did. But then you have to do it in every program. So, so you have to do it in every program. So, what do you mean? Uh, so if I do rotate and flip an OBS, then I open up Skype. I have to do rotate and flip in Skype. Oh, and if sure, I go sure, through sure, the web page, sure. yeah. So I have to do whatever. Oh, there might be some setting in the camera or something. Then so, is that what you're so, well, I tried that. I tried. I asked AI, and they said no. The specific camera does not have that option for the HDMI output, sadly. But a lot of them do. Hmm. Um, so I'm like, how can I reliably flip this? Well, I went and asked AI, and it said that I could actually go into Windows. There's a setting in Windows 11 that I didn't even know is there that allows you to flip the camera in the actual driver in Windows so that every program that uses it now has the flipped image. So so hmm, it's like called like, cool. like, let's see here. It's like camera, manage cameras. Yeah, it's called under, if you go under uh, Bluetooth devices and under cameras, under and it doesn't have to be a Bluetooth device, by the way. It, it, they just put it on there for some reason. Oh, because it's other devices. Yeah. Yep. So then you click on other devices, find mm -hmm. your camera and click on it. And right now I'm looking at it. I can see see myself in the preview window. Mm -hmm. I can click troubleshoot or disable, and then I have basic settings, brightness, contrast. Like, let me see. Can you guys see, like, when I'm sliding the brightness here? Whoa, yeah. So I'm doing this in the actual driver in Windows. So this isn't like a filter in OBS. This is the driver doing this. So oh, OBS okay. doesn't have to use any filters or anything. This is the operating system doing. I change my contrast. Um, but what you can also do is flip the video around, you know, left, I can flip it right. I can flip it. No rotation. Oh, you have to click apply. I'm not going to try to do that because it'll fuck everything. Up. I only see cam link 4k and I don't have that option. No, click on cam link 4k. That's what your yeah, camera is. I have, I have remove device is the only button I have. Seriously. Seriously. Even the little arrow next to it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't say right. connected cameras, cam link 4k. And then you have like a little arrow over to the left. Mm-mm. Right here. Okay, we're under Bluetooth and other devices. So Bluetooth and other so Bluetooth down to devices. Then click on camera devices. Well, my what? cam link shows up under other devices. Oh, see, on mine, when I go to Bluetooth and devices, there is a thing that says, uh, "Here, let me find it again." It says ca cameras. Here, let, let me do this. T go to your search. Open up Start mm -hmm. Menu and just mm -hmm. under Search, just type "camera" and look oh, at yeah. man the manage camera cameras. You want to click oh, on manage, manage cameras. cameras. System camera. settings. And when I typed in camera, it was like the third one down. It should say manage cameras. Or Choose which it. apps can have access to your camera. Use a camera to create a count picture. Just type it out. Manage cameras. Manage space cameras. In search. And it should say manage cameras system settings. Mm -mm. You don't have that? Mm -mm. Is it might be a Windows 11 thing. Oh, you don't have Windows 11, do you? This is not on my main, not on oh, my yeah. personal machine. Yeah, yeah, I know I should. That's what I said. Like, it, this is oh, 100% Windows 11. Thing. Yeah, my bad. I so, need to because EOL and all that. Yep. So, so in Windows 11, you can basically like tweak the camera settings at the driver level before the app opens it and uses it. So you can do this flip. And I was like, dude, this is rad. So I'll just flip it here and it worked great. It absolutely worked great. So, um, but the other thing that I could do, it gave me other options. So let's yeah. say I didn't have that feature. Like you're in Windows 10, you don't have that that option, right? So That's I asked it what it what my options were. It created a PowerShell script. It created a PowerShell script that could talk to OBS through its API because apparently OBS has an API. Like I'm, most programs do, though. So I'm not that that yeah, yeah. But it has an API where when you when you run the script, when you open up OBS and you run the script, it will automatically find that camera and flip and orient it in o, in OBS using its API. So you can basically just create a shortcut and put the script, you know, and then the script will do open OBS, do the API to do the flip. 
It also created a Python script that can just modify the any file to modify OBS to add that filter automatically. So when you just open OBS, it's there. You don't have to manually add anything. It just creates the script to do it for you. Um, and But it had a ton of different options. Like it was like, oh, you could do this. You could do this. Oh, you could have a batch file that'll switch it. And then you can switch it back if you want by just clicking these two, two scripts. One will flip it and the other one will flip it. And the, this one will work with all applications. This one will work with a single application. Here's the pros and cons. It's just, it's so verbose that you, it, and, but a lot of people just don't think they're like, they don't think, should I ask AI about this? You know, it's like one of the things uh, that was great yesterday is my son, my wife is teaching my son math and they had a math problem where they were struggling with um, uh, the difference between multiplying and multiplication and addition when you're adding negative numbers to positive numbers, right? So, so the, the whole rule that when you're adding and subtracting, you flip the sign based on if it's negative. So if you subtract a negative from a positive, you're actually adding, not subtracting and vice versa. And, sure. you, and you basically build that, you know, it's, you're always going to the left or you're always going to the right, whether you're adding a negative number or subtracting a positive number, vice versa. Well, with multiplication, that changes because with multiplication, if you multiply a negative number times a positive number, you keep going negative. But if you multiply a positive number by a positive number, then you go positive. And it's like, OK, so that doesn't follow necessarily the same rules when you're thinking about it. And it's like if you multiply the absence of something, you get more absence of something is basically how it works. Well, she was having a hard time explaining that to him. I was even having a hard time explaining the concept. I'm sitting here like it's racking my brain. So we went to AI and we said, literally, this is this is the this is the solution. Like, what is the solution to this problem? It gave us the solution. But then we were like, why are we coming up with this other answer that's wrong? Why are we coming up with a negative number instead of or a positive number instead of a negative number? That's literally we just were like, we're all confused. Why the hell are we getting something different? It broke it all down and explained exactly the mistake that we're doing, why it's a common mistake, why it's easy to get the things confused, because you're, you're basically like, you know, uh, what they say, it's like a negative and negative is a positive or something like that. And it's like it's like and it gave us a couple steps that you could use to remember the rules. And I was like, dude, this is badass. Like, not only did it solve the problem like a calculator would. Right. But but it's sitting here and explaining not only what the answer is or how it came to the answer, but why specifically we got the wrong answer. So like, so like if you give it the wrong answer, if you're like, okay, this is what I came up with, it doesn't just go, that's the wrong answer. It's like, oh, we know exactly where your thinking went wrong, why you thought that way and why it seemed logical and why that's not the case. And here's how to correct your thinking. So it's like, damn, this is no longer just a calculator. This is, this is literally your teacher. Like if you're at school and you're like, teacher, I don't understand this. And they teach it to you. And you're like, I still don't understand. Then they try to find a different way to show you. This does the same thing. You're like, I don't understand. You know, talk to me like I'm a four year old. I still don't understand. Talk to me like a two year old. I don't understand. Draw me pitch stick figures. You know, it'll do it. And I love that about it. Yeah. Now, will it will it always be right? No, it, it can hallucinate. It can get things wrong. Like, but here's the thing. So can humans. That's that's the whole quantum nature of humanity. Right. It's like it's not binary. It's not absolutely perfect. It's it's designed by improbabilities. So, so humans might get something right 99% of the time, but they're still going to have that 1% to get it wrong. And AI is no different. And we can improve on that and make it better and reduce that margin, but it'll never be zero. It'll never be zero because as long as humanity is fallible, that means the data that we're putting into the AI is fallible, which means it's going to have yeah, a certain course. amount of fallibility too, right? So we can't expect more from it. Um, but some of the shit that people just don't even think about, it's like you go out and start your car. You're like, oh man, I can't figure out what my car is starting. You're trying to like troubleshoot it. Yeah, like just just fucking go ask AI. Be like, here's the symptoms. I turn the key. It makes a clicking noise. What does that mean? Oh, your 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 battery's dead. Most maybe your starter solenoid's not working. You know, here's how you can test to see if that's a thing. You're like, I don't have the special tester tool. It's like, oh, just go grab a piece of fucking speaker wire yeah. and touch it to this and this. And if you hear a click, that you know, I'm like, dude, this is fantastic. The, just having the combined human knowledge where you used to have to go slog through a bunch of search engine shit that was ranked based on what was most advantageous for the search engine operators. Um, now with AI, you're slogging through the sum total of human knowledge, but the <laughs> consensus, the more people have consensus on something, the more likely you are to get an answer within that realm of consensus. So it, it's not like a search engine where you click the first link and it's like, am I getting real information or am I getting what somebody paid them to give me is the real information. With AI, you don't really have that because it's trained on such a massive data set that even with their best efforts to train it in a biased way, they might be able to move the needle a little bit as far as its preference, but but it's still going to give you logical information based on the logical information it was trained on, which is just freaking cool to me. Uh, how long until we hear responses? This response is sponsored by Carl Jr. <laughs> that, hey, hey, man, that'd hey, be awesome. 
hey, auxiliary has not watched Idiocracy. Okay, he doesn't get that quote. <laughs> he doesn't hey, get I wouldn't the, mind being sponsored by Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. is bomb. I do like me some Carl's Jr. Yeah, that's a that's a joke in the movie Idiocracy. There's mm-hmm. a guy in there that after everything he said, he's actually on the presidential cabinet. He's like literally nice. like a cabinet member. And every single thing he says at the end, he says, brought to you by Carl's Jr. He'll be like, yeah, my name's so-and-so brought to you by Carl's Jr. Yeah, we should water the plants <laughs> brought to you by Carl's Jr. Uh, and the guy, a guy finally gets mad and he's like, why do you keep saying that? What brought to you by Carl's Jr.? He's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, because they pay me, dumbass. Like every time I say <laughs> right? it, they have to pay me brought to you yeah. by Carl's Jr. And it's funny because, like, at the end of the movie, like, something really bad is happening and everybody's freaking out. And he's like, brought to you by Carl's Jr. Brought to you by Carl's Jr. Because, like, the stocks are <laughs> crashing and, like, Brondo, the thirst nice. mutilator or whatever, like, their Red Bull or whatever stocks are crashing. And so he's, like, freaking out that he's losing everything. He's like, brought to you by Carl's Jr. Brought to you by Carl's Jr. Brought to you by Carl's Jr. Like, trying to keep his head above water. <laughs> I was like, this is so funny, dude. One of my favorite movies of all time. You guys should. If you have not seen Idiocracy. I would say that is the uh, the absolute magnum opus of uh, the guy who created uh, or Mike Judge Beavis and Butt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Th- that's his crowning jewel because it turns out that that movie that he made so long ago, uh, post twenty sixteen, turned into an absolute documentary. It's like everything down to President Camacho and the decisions the government makes and the president's understanding of physics. Like every single thing now has a parallel in reality and it's like creepy because people are like dude did he know the future like <laughs> did he see into the future because like literally right. this is where we're heading like we are right on you know and, and then you got the whole o'doyle thing where it's like the people that shouldn't be reproducing medical science keeps patching up their balls when they rack them on fences and blow them off of shotguns they keep putting them back together so they keep having more and more kids while the intelligent people are like you know we're not really financial stable right now we're not gonna have kids and so the smart people don't have children but the stupid people multiply like rabbits and just take over the world it's it's absolutely hilarious it's a treat everybody should watch that movie it should be taught in school <laughs> quite frankly um but yeah anyways uh back to back to what we were talking about like originally where this whole thing divulged with ai and creating video generators oh yeah um these video generators it's not just these video generating services that are getting really good adobe themselves and i wouldn't be surprised if davinci resolve isn't working on something similar or apple's now working with well, ai so yeah we're going to yeah. see final cut pro probably have this they're getting to the point where the software itself is just going to be able to autopilot to any degree people are comfortable with um right now they do it with photoshop like if you, if you haven't used photoshop in a minute Ooh, now man. you can go into Photoshop and you can literally like stick draw. You can just go in there yeah, with like, your mouse and draw crazy. a picture of like, here's my little lake and my little son up in there, my two little stick figure, father and son stick figure. And then you can literally go up and just type in a prompt, you know, me and my son at the, you know, so-and-so lake in front of so-and-so mountain. And it'll take your stick drawing and literally create like a perfect form fitting like photograph that looks just perfect. You can make it HDR. You can make it pixel art if you want. And the cool thing is you're not just getting random images like with, you know, most content generators like Stable Diffusion and Dolly where you're like, draw me a picture or something and you just get whatever it gets and you just keep clicking the button until it looks what you want. Now you get to steer that process. Now you can actually say, I want something that looks like this. Like if you're doing a logo, you can say, these are the things that I need to be kind of static. But then you can let it like pizzazz it up and do the 3D effects and straighten out the crooked lines and everything like that. It'll do that with AI. And so now you don't need like, you know, these artists that went to school and trained with their Wacom tablets that, oh, here's a technique that I use to give depth to something and make something pop or whatever. It's like every piece of art that they've done and they've published to show people their art, whether it be a prospective job or on their social media or a part of their portfolio has now unintentionally gone to train an AI to enable everybody to mimic those capabilities with no effort. I mean, you can quite literally say in the style of. Like if I was an artist, even even a, even an artist that just had a website that just was known on social media, I can say in the style of this person and it'll do it. And it, it, they got and, and companies were getting in trouble. Like like I think uh, uh, OpenAI got sued. Um, and uh, what was the other one got sued? So I know Dolly with OpenAI got sued, but I think there was another mid journey maybe. Um, they were suing because if you said in the style of somebody, it would create artwork that was different enough that you couldn't really sue the person successfully, okay. but it was clearly in their style. Like it was literally creating a piece of work that looked like it could come from them. Meaning that, oh sure, sure, like it is their, yeah, yeah. You could literally push it as their work, and and their audience would recognize it as their work. That's how perfect it was. And so now, now these AI generators are getting a little concerned, and that's why Dolly doesn't create photorealistic images anymore. 
Like if you ask Dolly to draw oh, you, sure. they creep out. it won't do it. Everything looks kind of cartoonish. The reason that they did that is because the pre somebody got it to cough up its pre-training prompt that it gets, like the prompt it gets sent before you get to say anything. And the prompt literally says, don't make anything look hyper-realistic. Don't use the likeness of anybody. If anybody asks you to do the likeness of somebody, draw somebody else that might have similar hair or eyes, but don't make it look like that person. Mm. They have all kinds of stuff that they've just been adding to this huge prompt that goes to it that that tries its best to prevent it from creating photo realist. It's not that it can't do it because it absolutely can. And people have right. proven that with, with prompt hacking, but, uh, but yeah, they don't want to get sued because right. like, like right now, I'm Actually, like, I oh. just saw something that um, uh, somebody was claiming that Photoshop was trained on mid journey data. Their, their, their ethical, it. you know, uh, generative fill thing was trained mm -hmm. on mid journey data which they claimed all their shit was supposed to be based off of Adobe stock, like stuff that they'd already, you know why like, it's trained on mid journey without mid journey shits in Adobe stock. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it, brother. And that's, that's actually becoming a more of a problem. I keep, I, I've bumped into that, that uh, as well as people continue to use generative uh, models to create content. Yeah. Uh, those web scrapers are scraping up the generated content, which actually is, garbage in garbage out yep so and yeah. here's the thing there's yeah. so many there's so many websites that sell uh what are they called stock photography right yeah yep. so there's these stock photo sites and not just photography they also sell like you know rendered stock images photos, anything yeah. stock photos yeah. just stock photos and there's a lot of money in it like like journalists and you know and, you know msnbc fox news all those guys buy stock footage from these companies so that they can legally use it in their productions that way they don't have to pay a staff graphics artist to produce things really fast right they can they can just get what they need off the site 90% of the time. Well, now what, what people are doing with the stores, they're like, we're not getting as many sales because there's a lot more art and a lot, you know, there's still the same number of people buying art, but there's way more art now. So it's right, harder right. for us to sell as much as we need to make a living. So we need volume now. We need to, so that we can compete. So then they're turning to AI to look at all their artwork, generate new artworks in the style of their old artwork, put those into their store, but then the store doesn't know that that's coming from AI and neither do does mid journey who's paying for a license to go through the entire library of artwork and analyze it and train on it. Right. Because they don't get to say they don't get to train on it. If they, if they're, if they're paying for access to the library and they can legally use those artworks, they even allow you to modify the artwork. So you could argue that AI is just modifying the artwork, but anyways, they're going through and training on the database and they're like, Oh, we're training on real people's art, but they're like, to an extent, you're only training on their original real art, but the other 90% you trained on was the AI generated art of these three different generative AIs trying to replicate them. And you don't know what is what. That's the problem is you don't have enough metadata there. And people don't want to publish stuff saying it was generated by AI because then people will be like, why am I paying? Why am I paying $20 for a picture that was generated in three seconds on your GPU? Like that's right. dumb. Yeah. And so they don't say that. They just say they just say it's all their stuff. And all they're doing is generating it in mass. Like they'll generate... And I've done this myself, like we're not not selling it, but I've done this myself where it's like I'll go into stable diffusion before I go to bed and I say I want to generate a thousand images with the same prompt, like same prompt, different seed, generate a thousand images of this thing. And then what I can do is like wake up in the morning, open the folder, sit there at my coffee and just go next, 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 until I find the one that is absolutely flawless. Or, or there, there'll be multiple. It's like every fourth or fifth one will be flawless. But it's like the right number of fingers. The lighting is believable. No deformations. Everything in the background that has text is spelled correctly. Like I can go through and do that final pass, right? But then here's the thing is, is people, you, you got to keep thinking, you know, thinking th 3D, right? It's like, okay, if I can go through and analyze those images to see which ones are good and bad, why am I not having AI do that? Like if AI was good enough to create this art from nothing, why isn't another AI good enough at looking at that art and making sure that it has the things I want? So now what you can do is you can say, hey, AI one, generate a thousand images. AI two, look at each one of these thousand images and tell me which one have all fingers and toes, all the fingernails, the realistic lighting, you know, with a weighting of above 80%. And, and then it'll go through and filter those into another subfolder. And then if you wanted to go another step, you could say, write me a Python script that uses some, some image recognition AI or whatever to verify that the people are, in fact, people, you know, 99.9% .9 people. You know, that the head is right and the eyes are in the right proportion to the nose and everything. You right. could do that. But then you can create this entire automated pipeline that's like AI1 talks to AI2 talks to AI3. You go to bed and now you wake up in the morning and it's like now you've cut yourself out of the other two processes that you created for yourself. And now you have a completely automated line. Now sure. you say you go to the fourth AI and you say, hey, write me a Python script that takes the result 
from generating the image, verifying the image, keeping the image and classifying it. Now create all the metadata from this image. Use a multimodal AI to say, describe what is in this image, create the tags, create the title, right? And then upload that to your stock footage site into your library and put that title on it and put that thing and then give it a price. And now you've just created a bot that if you opened a store on like shutterstock.com, within a month, you could have 200,000 images that are yours that you're selling to the public that are 100% unique, that don't hit any copyrights, like don't don't match on anybody else's work. You could even you could even write a fourth bot that runs them through reverse image search on Google or Bing just to see if any other images out there have 100% match. Just, just to be absolutely sure, right? It shouldn't happen, but just to be absolutely sure. Then you publish those to your thing, and now you've just created a pipeline that just makes money. It's just a money printer. Yeah. Because that library is going to get 100,000 new images every month, and then you're going to slowly climb up because no other artist on the platform that's not also using AI the same way is going to be able to create that many images, which means now if you have a million images and everybody else only has one image, the odds of a person finding one of your million images is greater than finding any one of their one images. So now you get so much more traffic just by chance when they're searching for random things because you generated every image of everything conceivably possible that now if only one person buys your image out of every 10,000 people that look for images on that site, you still make a million dollars. Not bad. And I, and I and I know how to do this. I know how to do this, but I can't fucking pull the trigger even though I'm literally going broke and losing everything. I can't do it because it just seems so goddamn skeezy and I, and I fucking hate the direction we're going. But just because I'm not skeezy doesn't mean other people won't be. Yeah. Like, like that's the thing you got to remember in life is like everybody is going. If, the thing that sets you apart from the other person is how far are they willing to go, right? That's what makes one business beat another business. It's not because they make a superior product. It's not because they're better and more ethical. It's the opposite. It's because they know how to operate at the lowest margin, produce the product that makes the most money per unit. And they, and they do things that make people more willing to buy their product than the other person, even if they're willing to hurt their own people or treat their own employees like shit. Like, that's the sad truth of it, right? I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, it's about the investors. It's not about the customers. Make money for the investors, not the customers. And, and making sure that the competitor that you have that might treat the customer better and might make a superior product has to be so much more expensive because they're doing things correctly that they price themselves out of the market by default. And, and that's the sad truth. And that's something that everybody has to come up across at some point in time, unless you can create and protect something fast enough that nobody can compete. Like for yeah. instance, if you create an idea and you patent it fast enough, and I mean, China is still going to probably knock it off, but as long as you can cr keep them from being able to import it in the United States and literally make it illegal for people to sell it, if you could do that, then yes, you could ride that for however many years your, your trademark or patent is going to be valid, right? But aside from that, no, anything you do that gives you an edge can be replicated by somebody else so much faster than at any other point in history, largely because of AI now, that you really don't stand a chance. Like, like you better make as much money as humanly possible off that thing you did, because the second it becomes viral and the second that everybody sees how successful you are with it, everybody else is going to replicate it. And the time it takes them to replicate it is infinitesimally small compared to what it used to be. Like if you're an artist. And you draw on a style that's so unique that nobody's ever seen it before. They're like, wow, this is so generational. And everybody's like, I want that person's artwork. Now it used to take a bunch of artists figuring out how to replicate it, learning how to draw, practicing, you know, seeing what passes as that person, what doesn't pass as that person. And, and they had to be a legitimately skilled artist, like counterfeiters, right? Like gold counterfeiters yeah. that would counterfeit art, expensive art pieces. They would spend six months hand painting and meticulously like creating a piece of art. It was just as gorgeous as the original, and it was designed to be exactly like the original down to even like carbon dating of the paints. They go out of their way to do this perfect thing to get the sale, but now you don't have to be that guy anymore. You can just go to AI and say, create me a piece of work that'll fool experts. That What are the most common 20 mistakes, you know, counterfeiters get caught with? Okay, how do I circumvent each one of those mistakes? Okay, now use that knowledge to create me something that circumvents each one of those mistakes. Now anybody can go through that conversation with the expert eventually create something that's close enough to it. Now, instead of the one guy that spent six months to, to try to rip off somebody using your likeness, your identity, your entire body of work and everything is now being replicated by 5,000 people within 24 hours around the globe. You've got all these little shutter stocks and little sites and, you know, Etsy's and stuff open up that are peddling yep. your shit that there's no way you can ever find. Even if you spent every day of your life searching and trying to shut them down, you would never even touch 1% of them. So you're just wasting your time at that point. And it's like, you're done. Like the only people that are going to buy shit from you directly 
are going to be the people that, you know, like you for what you do and they're buying a piece of you. Like, like Auxiliary said many times during Tech Talk, he said the value of humans in the future is going to increase because there's going to be so much AI generated shit that people are going to long for things that are created by humans. And it'll just be noise uh, at some point, like, um, or it won't matter. Like it'll get to be so good that it won't, you won't be able to tell the difference. Like right now I find it's, it's like a game, right. To, to look at something and be like, Oh, well this, like, like some stuff is just too smooth. Like the lighting is weird. The, I mean, the finger thing is, is kind of getting better. The text thing is getting better. Um, and so eventually it'll be indistingu indistinguishable, especially like when things get shared around and like, you know, how many memes have you seen that have like 12 pixels, right? Because it's been fucking copied and compressed and re downloaded and sh shared yep. a million times. It it'll be that kind of thing. And then you won't be able to, you won't re you really won't be able to tell because it's like fuzzed out and fucking weird. And um, like the, like the, fuck, just recently the video that come out uh, from TMZ um, claiming it was, you know, Princess Kate and and her husband or whatever, when it was clearly not like this is the most horrible, like obvious, not the right people fucking video ever. And they tried to push yeah. it out and people were like, oh, this has got to be AI or something like they're just like make made this up. This is just a generative thing. And it's like, well, I mean, probably not, obviously not in a sense, but like it was it was just bad. And you're going to get a lot of that kind of back and forth and stuff. Uh, the people are focusing too much on llms and not on the generative ai stuff and frankly i'm i'm surprised that there hasn't been uh more of an issue with it uh especially considering we're in an election year and stuff like I that i am i'm shocked we're not seeing more uh sort of quote like deep fake sort of stuff um you already. know what scares me about you it's saying that though bonkers. is are we not seeing it because it's not there or are we not seeing it because it's already good enough that most people don't realize it's fake and and it's in a tactful enough way that it's not catching attention uh i just think it hasn't ramped up yet honestly um i think i think as we get closer to like the end of yeah. summer we're gonna start seeing a lot of weird facebook ads we're gonna start seeing like um because remember the biden deep fake forms and stuff yeah yeah things that like thing that flew completely under the radar for a while until a couple of people were like they they were like yeah. something ain't right yeah. here I mean, it reached millions of people before somebody. Yeah, good yeah. luck. The, the thing is, like, how do you do that? Right? It's impossible. Yeah. Um, yeah. The it, thing it, is, it, AI it, is doing the same thing that humans have. Like, humans have always scammed people, called them on the phone, and lied to them, and tried to get them yep. to do things they don't want to do. The difference is the volume that AI can do, where one person basically AI is a force multiplier. Don't yep. look at AI as something that's doing something completely new and like replacing humans, and and now it's evolving beyond our capabilities. I mean. Ignore that part of it. Look at the aspect that it's a force multiplier. Anything yeah. you can do, it can help you do better. Yep. And, th and that's the way that that's the, the mentality you have to be in. If I have a job where a company pays me $100,000 a year to do a job because I'm really good at something and they can take that AI for $25 a month and give it to somebody with half my capabilities willing to take half as much pay and that person can generate the same throughput or more than I did by using that as a force multiplier. Mm -hmm. That is the better bet, and that's what that company will do. And we're already seeing companies do it right now, but remember, it's going to take time for these companies to vet and become comfortable and trusted enough to transition, right? Because it's a big it's a big bet. Like, if you fire all your employees, you're not going to be able to invite them back next week, and they're all going to happily come back yeah, right. when you find out AI didn't fill that gap. So they're, they're taking it slow, but, but make no mistake, AI can do that right now. Like, tech support companies are being laying off like crazy. If you're in tech support right now and you still have a job, like you're literally still on the phone talking to customers and like solving their problems. You are very lucky. That means that you are a very valued tech support guy that isn't just reading a script because all the companies around the world right now in mass and, and so much so that there's even entire business models coming online that basically just stack a layer on top of open AI yep. just for yep. handling tech support calls. And they're like, and, and all they say is like, you pay our service, you know, $2,000 a month or whatever. And, so and upload crazy. all your documents, all your pictures, all your That's files, it. all your corporate records, designs. And I mean, who the hell would want to do that, right? <laughs> but but uh, you do that, and it becomes your tech support. And it's better than any person you hired for tier one through two, tier three tech support because any question somebody answers on the phone, it can be infinitely patient, which means that the person, I'll fucking kill you. I'll come down, throw shit through your window, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I apologize. I'm sad. I understand how you feel. Like, yeah, I'm a bucket of shit, and I hate myself right now. But let's try to get through your problem. AI can do that where a regular human is going to have a snapping point where they're going to hang up, walk away or offend the customer. So mm -hmm. you have an AI that's infinitely patient 
it can reword things infinitely too. Like it's not going to run out of ways to explain how to do something. Like I don't understand. It'll find a different way. It'll keep dumbing it down infinitely without getting angry or condescending. And so, and all you have to do is just give it all the same information you would give to your tech support clients. Like for instance, if you were going to go into a tech support job, you go get training where they're like, you have to look in the manual, look up this page, go search this in the database. Here's the most common problems and how to solve them. That's going to be the training you get. The AI is the same way. The only difference is instead of somebody having to sit down in a class for two weeks and like try to train you where everything is and hope you remember, they just dump all of the combined knowledge and, and all of the emails and all of the publicly facing tech support data and all the existing tickets that are open and closed and otherwise they just take all that dump it into the ai let it train and churn on it through a service and then it becomes tier one two and three tech support right out of the gate but now it doesn't have to change you it doesn't say oh let me get my manager because i don't know how to answer that question it just graduates to whatever level is needed at the time so you start out with the dude that's like how's your day going oh are you having a problem did you try just turning it off and turning it on again and, you know, now that guy doesn't have to go get his manager and wait for 20 minutes or whatever. Now it can go, oh, I'm going to change my hat. Now I'm an expert. Yep. And then and then if the person on the phone's like, I want to speak to your manager, it'll go, oh, sir, I totally understand. And, and then the voice changes. Hi, I'm the manager. How can I help you? You're talking to a computer the whole time and you don't know. You have no fucking clue. Uh, the voices are so good now. Like people are like, oh, I can always tell when it's a computer. No, you can't. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. There, there are there are technologies now. They can they can clone any human voice. They can create new voices derived from existing human voices that are completely unique, right? They, they can have their own signature and fool their own system. Um, and not only that, they can do all of the inflections and all of the emotions. So it's no longer just reading text like, hello, how are you doing today? This is Dr. Spatsu, blah, 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 blah. None of that shit. Now, now you get somebody on the phone who can actually like use emotion. And they can even pick up on your emotional language and use that to calm you down and keep you focused, right? So it, how it's a no-brainer. It's like this AI can service a 1,000 customers on the phone simultaneously. And now all I have to hire is like five real people to back it up if it goes haywire or crashes or whatever. You know, if, if it does something wrong and it needs to hand off to a human, you have a human to catch it just so that, that it doesn't go haywire and like start telling your customers to kill themselves or whatever, right? So you have a human backup, but now you're paying five people a full salary instead of a thousand. And then you're just paying one fee a month for the service that can handle a thousand lines. Right. It just, yeah. it's a no brainer. And it's like, when you look at it that way, you almost can't even blame the companies for doing it. Like I want to be mad at the company. I want to be like you motherfuckers. These people built you, they gave you their lives. But here's the thing. If they don't switch to the new system, guess who will their competitor. competitor. Yeah. And as soon as their competitor switches that service, guess who gets fired? Everybody. Now you don't have the five employees that still have a job. Nobody has a job. You lost them all. And they have nowhere to go because the competitor did what they did by firing all their people. So it's, it's like, what is the right answer? The only thing that can stop that, by the way, is like legislation that forces you not to use AI for everything. Right. Yeah. Because short of that, every, it's, it's a race to the bottom. Everybody's going to try to do something as cheaply as possible. And again, that's the pass on the savings in many cases. However, it turns out that's not the case most of the time. Like people like to think just because you can create a cheaper product that suddenly it'll be a cheaper product for everybody else. That's not true. On products where you every unit you can possibly make sells, the price can only go up. Nobody is going to lower the price on something that they're already selling 100% of. The only time that they lower the price is if they can't sell the stock and they need to move the rest of the stock, right? The goal is to be net zero, get rid of everything you create and have a profit. So, but when you're talking about software products where it's like you have no production cost at all, it's all R&D. So it's like you have the R&D cost. Once that's satisfied, it's done. Like you're not paying to create boxes. You're not creating to press CDs. You're not shipping a physical product. Once you take all those things out of the picture, then, then the price, could, they could literally make a profit selling it for a penny. Like once, once they sold their initial set and they got their R&D and their investment back on that, even selling a copy for a penny is still a profit to them. And so when you look at software like that, if somebody is willing to pay $100 for that software and they can make more selling 1,000 copies at $100 than 100,000 copies at $1, they're going to do it, right? They're going to do whatever makes them the most money because it's it's not about trying to get the software in the most hands as humanly possible. It's about how do we make the most possible money, like given all of the other variables. It's all it's a profit game. And they have to do that, by the way. That's the thing. It's, it is a, it, there is a law in the United States that says it's a publicly traded company. And that's most big companies are like most of the really big ones are is a publicly traded company. You are beholden primarily to the investors. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. decision you make has to shareholders. benefit. Yeah, exactly. You have to benefit the shareholders over everything else. As a matter of fact, that's why Elon Musk was able to buy X. He, he offered so much money over the price 
that they couldn't say no. Like they legally could not say no because the investors were like, him buying the company at this price, you cannot show us any other data that shows this company making that money any other way. Like there's no other way to make this kind of money. This is the only play. And, and even though they didn't want to sell, they had to. Like legally they had to because of their customers. But what Elon did is he took the company private. So now he doesn't have to do that because private companies don't have to do that shit. They can just do whatever they want. They can burn their stuff to the ground. So, uh, but yeah, when you're talking about all these public companies where it's like they are beholden to protecting investors over customers. Mm -hmm. Now, now they're not mutually exclusive. Like, I mean, obviously making your customers happy generally will lead to better profits, selling more product, uh, less problems in the media, better stock price. Not always, though. You know, you could get game stopped. You could do everything right and still get screwed in the stock market. But you have to do everything you can to try to help the investors. The customers come second. But they never say that. Like, can you think of a single company in your head that's honest with their customers and say, listen, you guys come second. Like, if the investors don't like this idea, we're not going to do it. No. They don't say it, but that, but they're, legally they have to, guys. They absolutely have to. Uh, Historio. Yeah, thank you for the $5, the $5 dude. To be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I really do enjoy doing that, by the way. Notice the fog doesn't stay around forever anymore either because I did oh, finally nice. put the quick fog in there instead of that long-lasting fog that just stays in the house for six hours. Nice. Uh, Historia said, just a heads up, the water heater buildup can mess with the washing machine. It clogged yep. my hose, and I thought it was the pump. No, I just cleaned the hose. Interesting. Okay, so I was just talking about plumbing problems earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, let's see here. Oh, oh, and the guy that said he created his own Jarvis, did he actually go to Discord and post that link? Let me go uh -huh. look. I don't know if he did or not. I think I missed it. Um, scroll into the bottom. Wow, there's a lot of little busy bees over here on Discord and off topic. I need to visit off topic a little more. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't see anything yet. So if, if you put a link over there, uh, just Joe, I will take a look at it. And thank you for that $10 super chat. Historia, thank you for the $5 super chat. That Tech Chef 420, thank you for the $2 super chat. Historia, thank you for another 99 cents. Gamers Unite, thank you for the $10 super chat earlier. He's not testing the smoke and lights. You know, hey, we can do it one more time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, Gamers Unite, thank you for becoming a member. We really do appreciate that. Really do. And if you guys haven't hit that like button, come on. There's 209 of you in here right now. So I would yeah. if you guys wouldn't mind just scrolling down on your little phony phones or on your TV with your little remote, just go down there. Give us a little thumbs up action. That will make my giant tingle. Okay, That's right. Do it. Tingly. I'm, I'm not saying you have to visualize it. Just, just, just make my giant tingle. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's hear. Irene said, I never heard the generated voice you made for me. Oh, you didn't? Let me, well, let me, I want to make sure I still have that. Uh, going to the folder, Irene. Oh man, I hope I didn't get rid of it. Um, I'll, I'll have to go back and check, but I right. think I do. I have a copy somewhere. It's really easy to do though, Irene. All I need is, uh, next time I do a Twitch stream and you're in there, just, just, uh, send me a link to your voice. I think I still have it from the DM. Um, it's really easy to do. I, I can do it in almost real time now. That's how good the technology has gotten. Whoa. It used to be to clone a voice. You had to take like 15 minutes of the person speaking, mm -hmm. isolate out all the mistakes like the ums and uh and mispronunciations, right. take all those clips, feed them into a neural network that then cranks and trains on the things for like 500 epochs or, you know, trips around the sun or whatever. And uh, and then when that's all done, then you start doing, you know, text to speech to see, hey, does it sound like him or and then train it a little bit more? Does it sound better or worse? Train it a little bit more better or worse. And then as soon as it starts sounding worse, that's as good as it gets. Now they've changed it. Now there's technologies. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the one that I've been using lately. Uh, XTTS, I think XTTS. Uh, and then there's one called voice to voice. And it can actually take a wave, just a single wave file of somebody speaking for six seconds. And in real time, without doing any training at all, like in the conventional sense where it's creating like a, a library or whatever, or a database, it does it. It just takes that one wave file, uses an algorithm and takes your text and converts it into that voice with emotion. No weird ups Whoa. and down inflections and pauses and plays it back. And if you regenerate the clip, the cadence will change so, so that it's different each time. But it's and, and so like if I said, uh, you know, the cat walked down the hill and the cat and the hat had another cat with a cat that went down by the cat. The cat It doesn't keep saying cat the same. It'll the inflection coming in and out of the word that how long it says cat for will change depending on the words before it and after it so that it flows and it gives it this nice flowy sound and a really cool project that I just did recently for a friend of mine. Um, his name's Andy. He was my coworker that created Drive UI at Microsoft with me. Uh, he recently contacted me and said, Hey, I, I heard you're doing all this stuff with like voice cloning. He said, uh, his dad is a pastor, um, at church. I'm not a religious guy myself, but I'm not above helping people. 
So he said his dad did a ton of sermons um, that he uh, he he wrote, like he wrote the sermons, but he didn't have audio of him performing those sermons. And he wanted to hear those sermons in his dad's voice. So he sent me audio clips of his dad talking, a bunch of audio clips of his dad talking. And I took those audio clips, recreated his dad's voice, and then created wave files of the scripture that his dad wrote or whatever being written or the speeches that are being read as him. And I gave it back to him and he freaked out. He's like, dude, this sounds so creepily good. Like, he's like, this sounds just like my dad. This is insane. So then he was like, wait, can you make it sound like my voice? So then I went back through and I cloned his voice. And then I took his voice and made his dad's speech and spoke in his voice. So then he had a copy of all of his dad's scripture read by him in his voice. And he thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So I was like, yeah, XTTS2. Yeah, and there's even XTTS2.5 nice. and 3 now. Nice. Uh, but but dude, it's, it's crazy how easy it is to clone a voice. Again, this is another example of how fast AI is evolving. Generative AI mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. It's like, you go back six months ago or even a year ago, and you still had like, ob this is obviously computer. This is obviously synthetically generated. Now today, I guarantee you that I can create a clip that you will not know is the real person not speaking. Like, I guarantee you I could fool you. If you if I could do a blind test with you going back and forth, you would not get 100%. You just wouldn't. Um, not only that, but you can also do voice to voice. So, like, let's say that when you do text to speech, the inflections just aren't sharp enough. Like, let's say the person is incredibly animated like a really animated person that really has a tendency to really, you know, throw the whole Martin Luther King kind of uh, a highs into it. If you're that kind of projectionist speaker, then what you do is you clone the person's voice, but then you have somebody speak in that style. They don't have to be anywhere close to the voice. They can even be a female saying it. You know, she could just, just speaking in his cadence with his like really highs and lows. And then you take those highs and lows, you bring them down to the octave level of the original speaker, still sounds nothing like them. And then you convert it to their voice. And now it sounds exactly like they're speaking. Oof. It's kind of like when Jordan, you remember when Jordan Peele did the Obama deep fake like years ago, where, where he was like, he had Obama like deep fake in real time while he's like talking and he, but he was doing Obama's voice and then they were just deep faking the video. Now the technology exists where somebody who doesn't even sound like Obama can't even do an impression to save their lives could create a deep fake of Obama speaking that was believable to people as Obama speaking, which is just fucking mind blowing to me. And they can do it with open source software off of GitHub for crying out loud. Like it's you don't even have to pay for this shit. Or uh, who here has used Suno.ai? Have you used it yet? Which one? Suno.ai. That's a music one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, absolutely mind blowing. So I showed this to my boss for the first time yesterday. I don't even know if I can play the song. This is pretty bad, but uh, I was trying to show. We were, we were bitching about uh, about Microsoft. We were like, so mm -hmm. so I just wrote something and I was like, create a hateful song song about Microsoft burning to the ground or something like that. And this is what it came up with. In the heart of the tech world, a fire I can't hear. burns bright. A man full of passion, ready to ignite. Give it just a couple more seconds. She's had enough, can't you see? He's gonna make a stand, set the system free. With a burning desire, he's taking a stand against a giant <laughs> corporation and their command. <laughs> This is 100% a unique call. 100%. Yeah. Laughing his ass off as flames embrace. So, oh God. So, um, that entire song was created by a sentence. All I did was I just typed in a sentence that said, create a melodic song of, my, uh, of Barnacles burning Microsoft to the ground. That's all I put in. Dig it. And it wrote that. But then it created like other songs, like it did an aggressive death metal version. Huh. Like you're listening to this for just like <laughs> I mean, tell me that isn't just fucking nuts. Have you heard it yet on the playback? Nope. Oh shit! You're missing out, dog. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I, I've played with it a little bit. We've we've played with it before, dude. It's, it's so now they just released version 3.0. It last time we played with it, it was 2.0. Now it's 3.0. <sighs> so fuck. 
Uh, SF Levy said, hello, guys. Jerry, do you have a PayPal? I do, but I don't take PayPals during Tech Talk because I split everything with my co-host. So if you do yeah. super chats, that's what I appreciate here. So, um, but but on my Twitch, if you're on our Twitch streams, yeah, we have separate things for our Twitch streams. It's just for this, we we share we share yeah, all the super chats down the middle. Fucking, uh, fucking streamed uh, Wednesday. Oh, you can do a stream? I did that. No, I did it on Ooh. last Wednesday night. I, and I probably will do again. What'd you do, sir? What'd you do on said like uh, I have I man, I have a few builds that need finishing. So I finished up the sleeper thing. Um it's got a 1080 Ti and uh what did I put in a 3800 XT, I think. Ooh, uh that's awesome. And it's like in an old funky dirty beige case. I'll probably try and I don't know, get a couple hundred bucks for it. I gotta but I have to move these these partial partially finished ones. I gotta finish them off and, and get them moved so that I can you know well and then there's two two intel platforms more more modern intel platforms that i need uh cpus for so i can get those actually built um an amd platform that i i need to finish as well that i actually have all the parts for so i'll probably do that one first but the longer i wait on this stuff the more you know the value is dropping so i gotta i gotta sell this stuff yeah i still haven't done my my upgrade that i've had all the parts for for many months now i'm just waiting for uh hobbs to get another chunk of free time so he can help me out with it Mm -hmm. um just because i don't want the downtime we're going to try to Hobbs said he had enough surplus parts that we could build a whole nother computer without having to take this one out of commission in case there's a screw up somewhere um or a part fails and uh so i took him up on that so that's why you haven't seen the upgrade yet because i really want to go up to the 13900k with the ddr5 yeah yeah i think that's going to be really big for the ai stuff especially Um, yeah yeah, plus i'm getting sick of like every time i open up like a microsoft game now it's like oh your cpu is incompatible i mean i just say shut up and it plays fine (laughs) yeah but but you know hopefully that'll go away now and and that's the thing that really pisses me off like why the hell does windows 11 and these games keep popping up and say oh your cpu is incompatible but then it just works it's like did nobody try it like like why what is the grounds like explain to me why it's incompatible because I, I say ignore it and the game runs fine, never crashes, everything works fine. So like, where is the incompatibility? Like, why would you even put that in there? Like you wouldn't put in like, oh, your SSD is slightly slow. So this game pr- might load slow or something. You would, right. You know, if it runs, it runs. Like, why are you going out of your way to like tell the person like, oh man, something's wrong with your computer when it works just fine. <laughs> so stupid, dude. Uh, let's hear SF Levy said, okay, thanks. I watched the last week's tech talk and wanted to help. Always interesting to listen to you guys. Oh, we really appreciate it, bro. We really do appreciate it. Hell, yeah. you help. Hey, you help out just by watching. But yeah, if That's you ever right. want to contribute, just to- toss a super chat our way. If you can't do that, we are going to figure out, though. I, I just got to figure out the tax logistics because there's already been some surprises on the taxes with this whole YouTube thing, the way I've been doing it. Um, but if there's a way for me to create a standalone YouTube or sorry, sorry, PayPal that we can have as an alternative option, because we do get to keep more of it if it's PayPal, right? If I can figure out oh, how to do direct? a smooth, yeah. yeah, yeah. If I can mm-hmm. figure out how to do a better smooth taxation of that and filing of that, so that we can split yeah. the revenue without it becoming ten ninety nines and all that stuff, yeah. then I'll totally do it because I think it's it's worthwhile at this point because I think a lot of people don't like doing super chats and I don't blame them. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I got to do that. And one of the reasons why I haven't put a huge priority on it is because Stream Elements still hasn't fixed the bug with the with the YouTube and you know the YouTube attachment. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just going to have to finally give up on that argument and just create a whole new thing. Like a just a stream like you could just be a, a stream elements account just for tech talk. You it won't let me do it. It won't let me do it because if I if I try to create a stream elements account, I try to attach it to any of my Google accounts. Like if I say this is my YouTube channel, yeah. It'll say this YouTube channel already exists on another account even though I haven't added it. Even if it's not added, even if it's deleted from that account, it doesn't matter because it says what? because yeah. they use it as my login. They're, they're like, they're like, oh, you logged in with this email address and our system already associates that with this Twitch and these YouTube channels. So if I create another account with a completely different, you know, Gmail or whatever and log in, it's like, oh, nope, this account's already there when you try to add it. It says, oh, you can't add this. It's already there. Weird. That's one of the bugs. That's why I'm so pissed off. Cause, so they say the only way I can fix this because the way their system works, it couples everything together, like your Twitch, your right uh, your youtube and everything the only way for me to fix this is to go into their system and forcibly close my account break the link disconnect all of my se pay my credit card processor all of my overlays all the shit i can't back up all Hmm. that has to be nuked completely out of their system and then i can come back and relink it but they even warned me they said we can't guarantee that this will erase the phantom from the system with all the problems you've been having they think weird come back and try to link it. It might say you can't even create the account in the first place because it already exists, even though you deleted it out of our system. They're yeah. like, it's a known bug. We just can't fix it. It's an architectural thing. Huh. 
So I'm like, shit. So so I almost wish I could find something that was better than Stream Elements, but I, I haven't found anything that's really better because Stream Elements has the credit card processor where they only take the strike yeah. percentage. They don't take anything else off the top. They don't charge any monthly fees. They're their uh their their system that interfaces with all the events and everything on the various platforms is more verbose than everything but the most important one is that it drops into uh streamer bot hmm. so 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 streamer bot is the back end of everything that i do on twitch like when i'm at the height of all the lighting and the effects and everything like that and the robotic arm all that's driven by streamer bot and so and, and it just stream elements just drops into that like butter for me to right. do all the same automation that stream elements does by myself would be like a tremendous amount of work hmm so that's the reason I don't do it. Um, YouTube takes too much of a cut from you and us. No, I agree. It's true. I agree. YouTube is 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 one of the gre greediest, if not the greediest system there is. Like, I want to say on Super Chats, they take something like 40%. It's like, it's absolutely robbery. Because if you think about it, it's like, even like on Twitch, it's like on bits, I think they, like when you buy bits, I think it, depending on if you buy them on Mabel, uh, mobile, I think it's like 30% more. If you buy them on PC, it's like 15% more. But then you pay that's what you're paying for the bits. And then if you give somebody the bits, they get a hundred percent of them. Yeah. Uh, whereas on YouTube, it's like you do a super chat and it's like, they take like 40%. You do advertisements. They take 50%. Um, it, it's like the, and, and I'm like, why are they taking so much? It's like, they're just using a credit card processor like everybody else. Yeah. Right. Uh, or, or PayPal or accepting whatever thing. It's like, it's like, how can they take so much when they're also charging you the fees on top of that? It's just, it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. And then and, and the thing is, it's not because of like events, because like, yeah, if you do a super chat, you get like the thing up at the top of the screen and stuff that YouTube made it. So you can only do it with a super chat. So like if you want your name up at the top with the little burn down timer, you do have to do super chats. There's no other way to emulate that. But but if I use a service like Stream Elements and you do a PayPal tip, I can tie that to an event and make anything happen on the yeah. stream. Yeah. So it's like that, in my opinion, that's way better than having a little thing at the top of the chat box, you know, that, that's specific to what platform you're watching on. I, I think so. Yeah, e everything really needs a rework, though. Like, that's one thing that I've definitely acknowledged is is my Twitch stream, my YouTube stream. I need to just clean slate it, start over and and redo all the events, redo everything, tie in all the automation and then back yeah. it up as I go so that I don't run any risk of losing it and having to rebuild it again. Because um, there's so much stuff that I have, like the robotic arm should be online right now, like transitioning around the desk and orbiting me. You know, I should have I should have like, you know, three or four different GoPros from different angles looking straight down and everything that I can transition with my stream deck. I have foot pedals on the ground that are supposed to make it so I can be completely hands free with the smoke and the lighting effects and everything like that. Um, I should have the bot online, my AI bot that I spent so much time writing Barnabot, which can actually like tie into voice commander and uh, and open AI and my lo now my local LLMs that'll even work off LM studio so that it can use my synthetic voice Ooh. like like it can use my own voice to communicate people while I'm taking a piss or something like that <laughs> like I mean it's just I have all this cool technology and like none of it's being used it's like all I got is like text at the bottom of the screen saying super chats activate the uh, lights and smoke and then it's manual the you know that yeah. I got to do it so by the way I'm doing that with a MIDI controller this is all this is all MIDI do, 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 do. Nice, nice. although this camera angle during the day you can't really see the light see the light flashing in the background kind of looks like the cops are outside yeah uh it's 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 not very bright when when it's got daylight coming through the window with this camera angle so I need to figure mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. maybe put a reflector or something up here mounted Ooh, on the yeah, ceiling sure, just sure, just to give me good. a little bit more light bounce off my face with that hey take it easy GTB Peace yeah good one uh Peace. let's see Oh. Here, let's hit the let's hit the rest of our topics here while we sure, can. sure yeah man. uh so yeah tell me about this intel stuff that's going down brother with this man. intel was causing crashes uh i guess so we had we kind of brought this up uh a week or two ago i can't remember about the power limit thing uh yeah. being an, being an issue well it turns out that it it's still there's still problems um then it's back and forth well so what's happening now and was part of the problem before um People are getting out of memory errors in, you know, Fortnite, Call of Duty, things like that. Um, and the power limit thing seemed to help with that. But it's also uh, something to do with the performance cores as well. The the There's two links that I, I sent to Jerry from Tom's Hardware and, and The Verge. They both are coming at it from different or just, I guess, different angles, I guess. NVIDIA is blaming Intel, which does seem to be the case because when we were talking about the power limit solution before it was 
this was causing it was throwing errors as if it was an out of memory error but it's not this it's is not just later enough. model cpus right uh actually this isn't a lot these articles both reference 13 and 14th gen but really it goes back to 12th as well um the power oh, they had performance cores even back then that was when they introduced them oh shit so, I, man, I think, I'm, yeah oh. i think the p and e core <laughs> thing was 12th gen i didn't I, even I, know that think. maybe earlier i thought but, that was like um, brand new tech honestly that's crazy okay no no um yeah it's it's still the thing um yeah 12 okay yeah chat says it's a 12 um which again not not that on its own is not really a problem there's some interesting soft i think there's like a soft there's some software things to decide like where threads are gonna go are gonna go depending on what they what they do and stuff but um yeah bah, bah, bah. yeah <laughs> super chat we love you honestly a lot of the stream element stuff is just um their web their web pages you can code up you could code up your own overlays and stuff in html css and javascript the javascript would handle the api calls um and so you know 100%, you, get a, you get a paypal you get a you could talk to paypal to get an api integration from them and when you get you when you get tips put into your paypal the javascript grabs that does something with the web page that's you could you could totally make your own overlays and, and event scripts and stuff all it's on your just own. the time it's just the time and effort and then remember once you build it then you have to like debug it keep it up to date when a service goes down make sure that it, it doesn't crash change. everything else yeah, yeah. It's like, i just like that those other services that exist have already done all that like they've spent hundreds of thousands of hours you know perfecting yeah but it's so so a uh, gentle stone kind of uh, i i kind of disagree that it's intel 90 percent mobile manufacturers 10 percent I put the blame more on motherboard manufacturers more um, in the same why, way that why, like, why, why would the because, motherboard manufacturers because be they're not problem? following Intel's recommended settings. They allow oh. power limits. They allow unlimited power limits so that the, it, the motherboard pull tricks the CPU into wanting or, or requesting more power than it can actually handle. I didn't It'll know we could do that. 4,000. I think the, uh, if you leave it at like auto or just default or unlimited or whatever, it's a 4,096 watt power limit or infinite. Like, and that's insane. Like that's, that's stupid. It's the same as um, people complaining about like stability issues when you use memory, that's too fast. Well, Intel, Intel says, Hey man, we, ha we have this as our top end supported memory speed. You can go beyond that. Sure. Like, that's the yeah but this is what we say is the top end you go beyond that you're on your own it's just like overclocking you use so faster than what is record than the jdec recommendations then you're you're off the map like that's on you man you so wait a second you're telling me the cpu is telling the motherboard like what settings to use the motherboard just throwing no, it out the window no, and overclocking intel, it or? intel in their spec sheet says mm -hmm. that the the top end you know tdp is 250 watts or whatever right but you can set your motherboard to to draw more. It's, it's essentially like overclocking, right? Sure, but do the motherboards doing that by default, or is that the yeah, user man. having that capability? Nope. That's it's, fucked it's up. The default settings are are unlimited, or with that outrageous. Um, the motherboard should be looking at the CPU microcode and going, "This is exactly yes. what it takes," and following yes. that to the letter of the law. The defaults, the defaults should be whatever the spec is from Intel. Because yeah. any BIOS, any BIOS I've that. opened. Any BIOS I open, the CPU always says, I know what CPU this is. Mm -hmm. I know what voltage to give it. Mm -hmm. I know all the settings for this and the timing and the L1 cache. All that shit just magically is in there. So yep. you know it can see the CPU and it knows what the defaults are. And you're saying that modern motherboards are just like, fuck it, we think we can run it faster and they just do by default? Yes. Yes. That's been, that, a, that's been wrong, an issue. Man. That's been an issue even before all of this. That's not but, Intel's fault. If if no. they're going out of spec and problems are happening, that's hundred percent the yeah. motherboard. It's it, you said you keep everything. If you just keep everything auto right out of the box and don't fuss with it, then yeah, you're you're gonna. You're, that's why people are like getting out these outrageous temperatures and stuff and, and power draws and things like yeah. that. Is because the the it, it puts up better benchmark numbers and stuff. I'm, I'm okay with overclocking, by the way. Like I think it's great, but you should have to do it as the user. You should have to make that decision to overclock. It shouldn't yeah. be the default position of the motherboard. A hundred percent. And we there have been there, this has come this in bits and pieces. This issue has come up in the past. Um, I think I think it was like around the tenth gen, tenth tenth gen Intel. Um, I think it was Gamers Nexus was picking on. I think it was gigabyte or MSI had a whole rash of it too. The, where like they, the default settings was basically a massive overclock. 
And there is something there is a little bit to blame on Intel too, because like their Turbo Boost 3.0 stuff will will push it way beyond spec, things like that. But usually only for like a you know a few minutes or something. It's not going to hold that to to its maximum forever. But they're monitoring, like they're inside yeah. of their chip. They're going, we know what the yeah, spec is for this. The motherboard's just like we're going to run it like this all the time. Like yeah. that's not cool. And man, so and then now now there's more of this coming out. It seems to be an uh related to unreal engine games and the tom's hardware thing the tom's hardware article mentions that um it is the potential instability issues during shader decompression in unreal engine uh and so something and so that's what's then causing an out of memory error for nvidia but it, it's not it i don't know why it would be throwing that error that's that's going to be a software thing between intel and, and <clears throat> nvidia and unreal uh, you know how that's, they're you know what that tells that me problem hmm. as a software developer what that tells me is that they overclock like the motherboard manufacturer overclocked the cpu out of the box mm -hmm. and they said they did all their testing and it passed all their testing and they're like Probably. awesome but yeah. they missed a big hole in their testing which yeah. is whatever it is unreal's doing with that decompression that's pushing the p core so hard mm -hmm. that none of their other loads they put it under did that yeah. And that's and I'd still blame that on the motherboard manufacturer because again they're already pushing the CPU out of spec which puts the ball in their court but mm -hmm. now they're like oh it seems it, it, Unreal has some blame here too it's like no Unreal should not no software not a single piece of software running on the computer should be able to push that CPU beyond its capabilities like it shouldn't unless be able to, allowed to unless it's allowed to if I'm overclocking my hardware and it and it that's like opening up extra lanes on the highway right if I if I allow sure. a bunch of people to use the HOV lane and then suddenly there's wall to wall traffic like what who do you gets to make that decision though the people who built right. the road and know what the road's capable of or the that's, people driving on it <laughs> that's the thing. and it, and i i'm telling you this is all related to the same issue that i've brought up before about the enthusiast community doesn't care they just wow. want the bigger number they want the biggest e -peen. they want to be at the top of the list on fucking whatever uh you know heaven benchmark or whatever it's true, it's true. um and and there's also a lack of uh well there's it's a trust it's trust right a lot of times you will um you know the average enthusiast will just buy a system pre-built you know the, yep. there's fewer and fewer people who tinker uh on their own they trust that uh, a company is going to you know give them the settings that uh, that are proper and um i'm i'm a little surprised it took this long for it to become an issue uh, that nobody noticed beforehand in these in these markets because I guarantee they were just blaming other stuff. They were, they weren't. Oh no, our settings are fine. Like oh, it, we were we benchmarked it in the in house and it was fine. So it must be you. You know, there's something you did to the system. Uh, I guarantee yeah. that they've been they've been pointing fingers and kicking the can down the road for probably at least at least since the 13th gen released. What so two years ago, um, or or yeah, about that. And um, and it's the same. It's the same. I remember uh, back when I used to overclock introduction to the platform. Uh, maybe I I've been out of the enthusiast community for a long time. So that that's certainly possible. AMD does tend to be less power hungry than Intel uh, in recent generations. So maybe, but I, I, if, if there were any issues with AMD, it would be uh, with over, over speed, uh, over spec spe speed Ram. In my opinion, and there's there've been a lot of talk about about AMD's handling of um, very fast memory. And again, look, there's a reason that these these hardware manufacturers have like these specs. Okay, if you want your if you want reliability, if you want stability, you stay within the spec. It's just like your car, right? Yep. The car is built the car is built to to operate within its parameters. If I crank up the boost and it explodes, that's on me. Yeah, if I go and draw like I don't have a turboed veloster, okay? If I if I put a bunch if I put a bunch of stuff on there that makes it go faster and then my head my header explodes because yep. I didn't, you know, account for that. That's on me. I can't go blame Hyundai for that. Like I did that. So if you if you're using memory that's out of spec, still technically compatible, of course. Yeah, but it's out of spec like and then you're you're getting problems, you're getting blue screens and shit. That's on you, man. 
that's on you. You, you know, and then you have to go into your BIOS and fuss with it. You can't just turn XMP on and hope for the best. You go in there and you fuss with the voltages and the timings and things like that until you get it right. Just like you would with a car. You're going to go in there and you're going to fuss with your, uh, you know, the pressures and the time, the literally the timing and things like that until you get it right and it doesn't explode. And so you're always going to get the people though, that even yeah. though they do the thing and they know they did the thing, they're still going to blame the company. Of course, because that well, always why happens. Is, why is it compatible? If it's not going to work perfectly out of the back. Well, look, man, I, again, I can put a turbo on my car and yep. it's going to work great for most of the time until that one time I'm trying to pull off the line and, and smoke some kid on at the stoplight and my headers explode. Or I put yeah. I blow a rod or something, and it's because I didn't take all the right steps to make it. It's yes, I could bolt something onto my engine, and it's technically compatible. But are is everything going to work together correctly to to be beyond what it's supposed to? Yeah, I've, I I knew a guy who bought a Ford Focus RS, that like fancy Ford Focus, it's all wheel drive, three hundred yeah. horsepower, little beast or whatever. And yeah. he bought an off-the-shelf mound tune tuner thing that plugs into a Cobb Axis port with mound tune that gives it like another 80 horsepower or something, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. to get that 80 horsepower, you're supposed to add... Now, granted, it voids the warranty. Like, they specifically yeah, say that when you buy it. this. It voids the warranty because we were changing the performance of the vehicle from the manufacturer specs. So you buy it. Now, you're supposed to put a downpipe on it to make the engine more free or <laughs> flowing so the exhaust temperatures don't go through the roof, right? Yeah. So he didn't he didn't have the downpipe. He just bought the tuner. The downpipe was out of stock. So he's like, I'm just going to put the tune on it anyways. And then he's like, oh, man, it goes so fast. Look at all the boost it's building. This is awesome. Now. Fucking blew the head gasket and burned all the rings out of it in about two weeks. And he takes it back to the dealership and he's like, oh, the engine exploded or whatever. And they take one look at the ECU. And they're yep. like, oh, it's modified. Like we, we can see we have a little telltale in there, even though he tried to flash it back. Yep. He's like, no, it clearly shows. That you flashed it and you know and and the little black box the tattletale box inside of it says that the you know the the um exhaust gas temperatures were like more than double what they should have been under like max performance like your your mm -hmm. headers were basically glowing and melting off the motor yeah and so they're like we can't do this you know a new engine's gonna cost you like fifteen thousand dollars or whatever and he's like this is bullshit and he was like so mad he's like this is a brand new fucking vehicle and you're saying that you know i can't do this all i did was plug a thing in under the dashboard and push a button you know that same mentality of like because I could, but the thing he doesn't realize is it's like, listen, the people that that tuner you bought is overriding the safeguards. It's specifically that's how it works is it is telling the ECU and the car lying to it and hacking it to get it to do things it's not supposed to do. And that's the whole point. Otherwise, it would have been sold to you by the dealership. Like, trust me, if if the dealership wanted you to have an extra 100 horsepower, they'd sell it to you because Tesla does it, you know, and a lot of other companies do it, too, where they'll just give you 90 percent of the performance and then sell huh. you the last 10 percent after you buy the car because they, they did design fine. it to do that. And that's, that's fine. And again, if if you pay somebody who knows what they're doing, like, again, like uh, some of these enthusiasts, some of these enthusiast companies. I don't think are doing their due diligence until it becomes like a big issue. Like it's like it's done because like this power limit thing, folks like Puget systems who investigate that sort of stuff and they do a lot of internal testing before they start to sell a product. Puget systems have been setting the power limits on Intel CPUs as a lot of these have been. So now it's a P core ratio issue that, that is helping as well. But in, in a couple of weeks back, people were talking about power limits Puget Systems has been doing that because they noticed how hot these Intel chips were getting and like it's just crazy. I don't think they narrowed it so far down as to be like, well, they knew it was a power issue because, of course, what else is it going to be when it's getting that hot? Right. Um, they've been setting power limits, P1, P2 power limits since the 12th gen and, and it's been fine. You get negligible performance difference um, well within margin of error sort of stuff to, to 1 to 3% kind of a thing. It's hardly anything. And it just shows that these enthusiasts don't care. They haven't, they either haven't noticed or they've been pointing the finger or kicking the can down the road and don't want to take responsibility or don't want to investigate enough because it's been literally years that this has been a thing. And only now it's becoming an issue because what, because games are now pushing these things beyond the limit beyond or so far, like it's just, it, I don't know, man, this could have been a, a non issue if, if uh, these SIs have, again, though, it's pressure from the customer. They want the most because like, okay, if I buy power does th throttle or govern the power limits and their Fortnite machine puts up 120 FPS, but, uh, you know, um, origin doesn't power limit and their FPS on Fortnite's 140. 
it doesn't matter that it's going to crash five, 15% of the time. But if they are able to put up a bigger number, a better benchmark, people are going to go buy that because they need the biggest EP they can possibly get. Yeah. And it's only now becoming a problem because more than uh, an unreasonable percentage of these machines are crashing. I've saw, I saw comments saying, man, my machine was crashing 15 times a day, either to desktop or locking my machine up. I'd get kicked to the, I'd get these out of memory errors or I'd get kicked to desktop, whatever. And I'd, I'd set these power limits or I fuss with the, the P core ratio thing. And now yeah. it's fine. And it's Dude, like, it's so alluring you though. You haven't and, done that since from the beginning. Like, dude the and, shit that i used to do to just hold my overclock like like i would yeah. change my entire life dude like i remember yeah. back when i had my big refrigerator pc i built at 24 130 cfm ultra cozy fans it was so loud you it's had just, to wear headphones silly. in the room and i'm like i did all that to get an extra 300 megahertz which arguably doesn't even mean shit like like at the end of yeah. the day when you're talking gigahertz a couple hundred megahertz means absolutely it dick, doesn't matter right? But, so, but I would go to the ends of the earth. Like literally I had my overclock so on the edge yep. that if my, if my air conditioner went off because of, for whatever reason and the room temperature went <laughs> up by two good. degrees, it would blue screen the computer. Uh, yeah. Two yeah. degrees in ambient temperature was enough to tank my computer. That's how, that's how tuned I had my overclock I'm... to the edge. And I was getting, I think 4.7 gigahertz instead of the four point like six that I had before. It was yeah. like one, one, like, like, or no, it was like four point four i think is what it was rated for and i was like 4.7 i was trying to get to five i did get it yeah. to run five once but ha. i couldn't get it stable even in the even booting into the yeah. operating system so i abandoned it yeah but the amount of time that i wasted like trying to get there putting new new thermal compound on the heat sinks and everything there's just something cool about you know going to your friends and be like oh man i i you know i bought a processor that you know that that is doing 300 more megahertz than it was supposed to out of the box ha 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 but at the end of the day, you're like, you know what? For the amount of money and time and inconvenience that you sunk into getting that extra 300 megahertz, you could have just went out and bought something faster, or it's, you or or you could have literally like, you know, like why did you spend all that time doing that when you could have just bought a better Butter's GPU left, yes. or whatever, which would have made it even faster. Yeah, you know, and or or like the with the CPU overclocks, like so much shit is dependent on GPU now that it's like don't get me wrong. I mean, CPUs are still really important for a oh, lot yeah. of things. There's a lot of things oh, yeah. CPUs can do because CPUs have that grunt, right? That single thread performance. They just mm -hmm. they dominate. Um, but when you're talking about like modern gaming and, and modern applications and stuff, they lean so heavily on the GPU now that it's like, shit, you don't even know the difference of like a, a gigahertz. It's like you have a system with a gigahertz difference with like twice the cores. And unless you're doing very specific things, you won't even notice the difference nope. because everything's leaning so heavily on the GPU. But but I do get the whole leaderboard allure and the EP thing where it's like, you know, you go to PDX land or whatever, you would be like, oh, yeah, I got her stable at five gigahertz, man. Yeah. Like, oh, you only got four point nine three gigahertz. Sure. Oh, I got five gigahertz. Like, what are you doing? And, you know, and then the LN2 shit is just funny. Well, like, no, just, that's, that's different, right? No, that's no, no like, I get it. It's, it's you like know, you're trying to push draggers. the limits, right? Yeah, the like dragsters. Nobody is going to nobody's complaining to a motherboard manufacturer because I couldn't get seven gigahertz on my LN2. That's so far beyond the reasonable expectation that like that would be they'd, you'd get flamed to death if some if some, you know, if um, what's that one guy? Um, Wizardy, right? Wizardy or a couple of these high end super, you know, if, if <laughs> yeah. he was oh, oh, this is this is you know, Asus's fault that we couldn't get this. Nobody's gonna say that. But no, that's you, man. You fucked this up, you push this way beyond spec. But like the average consumer has a certain level of trust with their SI or their or even the hardware manufacturers in general. They trust that Asus and Gigabyte and MSI are going to do the do things right, and they're not, they, and they do it all the time. and I just I just don't like that the leaderboards that they're posting to don't always specifically say like what what cooling te technology they're using or how long they were stable afterwards. Yeah. So it's like they got like a benchmark and it's like, oh, man, this guy got to 7.2 gigahertz or whatever on a system. It's like, yeah, but he couldn't ever run anything practical on there. Like no, he's no, literally dude, just blowing it's, everything up it's to do for, that. Yeah. For 30 seconds, because we just had to finish the benchmark is, uh, you know, you know, what's it, more it impressive to me, though, barely finishes. what's more impressive to me is the guy that's at the top of the leaderboard that's daily driving his computer, doing everything that a normal person would do with that computer at that speed stable. Yeah, that's, that's better. To, that's more to impressive. me, that's more impressive than yeah, the, right? oh, I dumped, you know, fucking liquid nitrogen on this thing no. and put it in a vacuum chamber no. and got it to do five times its original and, speed. Dude, that's part of it, too. A lot of the, especially when it comes to graphics cards, some of these AIBs are, um, they're overclocked out of the box and you really can't squeeze much more out of them. 
it's a stable it's it's good it's a stable overclock the memory timings and stuff are are, yep. are done for you right out of the box and you go and try and push that even further and you're gonna get problems so you know what i haven't tried yet you just gave me a cool idea this so, might be this might be something the puget system should do too is hmm. i've been asking i've been trying to go out of my way to ask ai shit that i just normally wouldn't even think to ask it right yeah, everything yeah. like what's the best way to take a shit how should i distribute my weight on the toilet like i've been getting pretty crazy with it but but i'm thinking like with overclocking that's one thing i've never actually tried is like going in there and being like here's my settings that i put in here's my temperatures right here's the things that i ran like literally feeding that into the context of like a a, a gpt4 conversation uh -huh. and then say like you know here's my motherboard here's and then put in every bio setting name and every value and everything like meticulously put it in there and then say like what sh what should i tweak like next and then when i do it, go oh i get a blue screen or i don't get a blue screen i'm stable i'm not stable here's my new benchmark result and go back and forth it and see if it can't find a way to lead me to my most stable overclock possible without knowing what all those little itty bitty numbers are like the little mp clock three m this core three you know upper bound voltage lower bound voltage like i want i want to have ai tweak all those numbers in tiny little increments for me put them in and just document whether i'm going sure. up or down and have it learn from that and see if because if that worked if i could get to that and i could work through that meticulous thing then i could ask ai hey write me a program that can talk to um uh uefi so use the uefi api to tweak the values in the bios write me a program that does that or i could even just have it use like existing cpuz or whatever the tools are for modifying values in the bios and and uh and and go through that process manually like i'm gonna go to sleep you're just going to reboot my computer all night long. Just reboot, run a thing. If, if it doesn't work or whatever, revert back. You know, do it again, do it again, revert, go back and just wake up in the morning and see if AI can't just sit there and just tune my computer to the absolute bleeding edge while being stable. The, I yeah. think that'd be cool. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody do that. Now watch, there's going to be 12 YouTube videos on this next yeah. week because I said it. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I didn't even think about that. I was like, I was like, yeah, if you went to an AI, could you just fucking ask it? Be like, hey, AI, I'm trying to overclock my computer. Like, because it should have a lot of information on that, I'd yeah. imagine. Yeah, you'd think. It should know a lot about processor architectures. and bi I, I ask it about BIOS settings all the time. Like when I see a weird BIOS setting that makes no sense to me, it's like, oh, this is on this manufacturer. They call it this. And on this, like, uh, was it resized? Oh, yeah, bar? Nice. Uh -huh. Resizable bar uh -huh. is called like something different by like every motherboard manufacturer. Yeah. So I had to figure out what it was called for my motherboard that I have in this system, the the Gigabyte RS7. And so it's like called like above 4G encoding or something like that. And so I had to ask, I had to go ask AI about that. And then it like broke it down and told me why it was renamed on different things. It even told me that I had to, it even told me what I had to disable, save and reboot so that that option would even show up in the first place for me to change. So God, I bet you, I bet you doing an overclock Daniel said that would be risky. I don't think, I mean, is overclocking really risky anymore because the CPU has a thermistor inside of it and will shut itself down uh, if it goes over I, certain limits, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Not really. Um, I mean, if it's super unstable, right, it'll crash or whatnot. Um, if you could run it beyond what it, I mean, you're going to get, it's mostly temperatures. So if you can keep your temps in, in, you know, reasonable range, then it doesn't matter. If it's CPU, then yeah, I could see it doing it. But I, I, sure. I just, yeah, I, suddenly, been, suddenly your memory controller blows out and you can't use two of your slots or something. Yeah, because even with GPUs, I've done that with GPU overclocks where you go into MSI afterburner or whatever, and you just tell it to just keep increasing, keep increasing. And then when it becomes unstable, back it off test, back it off test to find like the sweet spot. <laughs> and and it crashes like a thousand times and it doesn't seem like it does any damage to the graphics card. Like it's not, it doesn't push the power unless you specifically unlock the power limits on your graphics card with like a custom firmware. It, it won't even allow the chip to take any more power than it can reasonably handle. So I, I think you're mostly safe, dude. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try. I'm yeah. going to try that later. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to ask you guys try, here. Let's all do this experiment. If your shit dies, though, it's not my fault. Just FYI. <laughs> um, I, I want to see like which which LLM is best at telling me how to optimize my bio settings for better performance and be like, what are your expectations? Like if I do what you're telling me to, where should I see a difference in performance and then testing that? And then if I don't see a difference in performance, like give it the actual numbers and see if it can't figure out why and strategize a better plan. And then I can take all that information, plug it into a bot on POE and call it CPU optimizer or overclocker bot and give it access to people. And then they there can just go. let it overclock their own shit. Right. Uh, all right, bro. Well, it looks like we're at time for you. Up. Yep. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody. Out, enjoy your weekend. Um, you know, follow me all the places. I'm auxiliary everywhere. Auxiliary. Like, like here, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm going to get some of these here. Just to... <sighs> oh, yeah. Play okay, out. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably stream again on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Do it, man. So.
do it. Do All the now. links are in the video description if you want to find us over on the old Twitch keys. So yep. hold, hold them to it. Beat them up on uh, beat them up on X and make them stream on on Wednesday. Yeah. So right. if I yeah. if I hey, if I see if I'm actually streaming, I see you on there. I'll give you a raid. Right on. Okay. All right. Peace out, right. brother man. You have yourself a wonderful weekend. Hi, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. And then there was one. <laughs> actually, here can I can I copy? Here, hold on. Right click. Can I copy? And then just right click and go paste duplicate. Look at that. It works. That's cool here. I'm going to, I'm going to move these around. That's so cool. Even though Ox isn't here, I still share all the super chats with them. Cause that's the kind of nice person I am. Um, let's see here. I do got to take a little tinkle though. So while I take a tinkle, why don't you guys listen to the comical musical stylings of Suno AI playing flames of revolution against Microsoft death metal edition actually do you guys want the death metal edition or the melodic actually the melodic you can probably hear the lyrics too so let's do the melodic all right i'll be back here in just a few minutes don't go anywhere in the heart of the tech world the fire burns bright a man full of passion ready to ignite binoculars he's had enough can't you see he's gonna make a stand set the system free with a burning desire, he's taking a stand Against the giant corporation and their command He wants Microsoft to crumble, fall from grace Laughing his ass off his flames and grace He dreams of a world where innovation blooms future untethered from the old status quo Oh shit, did it start did it, did it start playing the death metal stuff? Oops. Fire.
Me. Me. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Did, did, did you guys enjoy the, the death metal stuff? <laughs> Lost in Space thing said copyright. No, it can't be copyright. This is my own music. See, that's that's the greatest thing about AI is now I don't have to worry about copyright because it's literally my music. Ugh. Unless it played, did it play something that wasn't mine? Because it looks like it played Flames of Re Revolution against Microsoft, Flames of Decline, and Heavy Death Metal version. So, so that, that should mean those are my songs that I created that are unique. So there should be no copyright. Perfect. It sounded generic like AI. I mean, some people might think it sounds generic. I think it sounds great. I think a lot of music sounds generic. Almost every song that comes out these days sounds like pieces from other songs before it. So, you know, people are inspired by other people and unintentionally recreate their things. So, can Suno copyright strike it? No, because Suno, Suno can't copyright AI works. So, because they'd be open themselves up for lawsuit. So, I can, I can actually, any song... I create with Suno unless I have to pay him if I want the longer version of the song. But yeah, there's there's no copyrights. Like I'm even looking at them on the screen right now under Suno. They don't they don't have any copyrights for them. And since technically it was my prompt that created the music, I could argue in court and I would win that that it was my prompt that generated that music, even though it was their algorithm. Therefore, it would be my copyright and my work of art. But technically, I can't copyright it either because I believe you can't copyright AI works. Like, I think that's the big legislation item that they've been like, I don't know if it's in law yet or not, but I know that's the one they're working towards is that you cannot copyright a AI work. Like, you can use AI to a certain extent in the creation of your work, but if it's an AI created work, it can't be copyrighted because it's basically amalgamation of other people's work without you adding anything um, transformative. So just asking, hey, make me a cool picture isn't transformative enough. But these are laws we have to figure out, right? Like this is this is the big problem with AIs. It's moving so fast and it's taking too much time for to legislate that a lot of people are taking advantage of it while they can, but they won't be able to forever. Because at a certain point, if you want people to keep creating and you don't want the entire internet to just be nothing but just AI created garbage in the end, repetitive garbage, then you're going to have to take a stand and put laws into effect that say that, yes, you can create AI artworks, but you have to make it hard, if not impossible, to profit from them. Because you want to drive people away from using it for direct profit. Wait, De Dead Mouse accidentally repeated Sandstorm during a live stream? Is Sandstorm one of his songs? I don't listen to enough of his stuff to know his entire body of work. Or was that like somebody else's song that he played? Or did he just recreate it? <laughs> so, well, the good the good news is, is like everything that I created with Suno AI is recorded. Like, like I have what created it, how it was created, when it was created, and the final master of the song uncompressed. Uh, or at least with the original compression. So if I do get copyright struck for anything, I can appeal it immediately with YouTube and give them the evidence that this, this is a unique uh, transformative creation. So um, anybody that tries to like flag this to try to, you know, uh, just just fuck with me. It's no big deal. I can just get it overturned. Sandstorm. It's Villy's song, a.k.a. Darud. OK, I, I don't know what that means, but I'm going to guess. Are, are you saying it was created by a guy named Darud? OK, cool. Uh, oh, oh, Sandstorm, not Sandstrom is two words. OK, so Sandstorm by Darud. It's Villy's song. Villies. I don't know what Villies is, Bruce, but but I think Kyle got it. Yeah. So Sandstorm by Darude. I'm guessing he's the artist. Darude is the artist. And they said Dead Mouse accidentally recreated. Okay. So so Dead Mouse was like mixing and creating a song, and then he ended up accidentally creating the exact beat of Darude that sounded so much like it that it actually triggered the copyright system. Or did somebody just copyright strike it? I know Sandstorm. I do? Well, here, let's go look it up. Uh, give me a second. Do, do, do. All right, so Sandstorm. Sandstorm by Darude. Let's see here. Okay, I don't recognize... I don't recognize any of the imagery. Here, let me listen to it for a second. I'll just play under 10 seconds. That way it doesn't trigger anything. 
Yeah, I know that song very well. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that, that that's definitely one that's burned. I didn't know the name of it, but yeah, that's that's absolutely burned into my head. Hey, Stumpkin, thank you for the ninety nine Canadian cents. Serious question: Can you overclock a Mac? I am not a Mac expert, but I'm going to probably say no because Macs don't have BIOSes. Like they don't have UEFIs or BIOSes. The M1 processor is kind of its own unique thing. So Apple pretty much takes full and absolute control of your hardware. So I don't think there, unless you can like hack those settings through APIs and the operating system, my guess would be no, you probably can't. Um, I mean, they do just, I mean, the older Macs just used Intel CPUs. So if you could hack into whatever Apple's version of UEFI is, I don't see why you couldn't overclock it a little bit, but keep in mind that Apple owns the entire ecosystem. So Apple owns the motherboard, the BIOS firmware. Um, and I think they even use custom CPU microcode, even when they were using the Intel CPU. So I really don't know if you could like the hardware itself is capable of it, but I don't think they give you the software mechanism to uh intervene uh james jana said siri oh sorry i already saw I, <laughs> I didn't realize i was answering james question it's good to see you james what do i think about the m1 the m1 m2 architect great it's great like like uh if if i had the money to have a mac uh, like an m1 or an m2 macbook pro i'd totally have one i i think it's fascinating technology i think that apple did uh I'm sad that Apple was the one to do it first. Like, I mean, that that kind of pisses me off. But the hybrid approach of intertwining x86 architecture with with uh, ARM architecture to get the best of both worlds and the performance gains you can actually gain from it while still fully supporting the previous generation of software is magical. And, and it was a really good idea because the cool thing is like all the legacy software that you still need x86 to run is compatible with it and doesn't need to be emulated and slowed way the hell down like it would be on a pure ARM architecture. But they complement each other enough that you built a bridge so that everything can slowly, especially software developed in like the .NET framework, runtime compiled software, open source software, all that shit is like trivial to recompile to run natively on uh, ARM. So to get it to work with the M1 or M2 or even M3 now architecture um, is super trivial. And more and more software as we go is going to be like that. And even with AI, I would even venture that like old software that people are still heavily dependent on, if those companies still exist and they want to keep their customers happy using that software, my guess is at some point they're going to allow it to be compiled to run purely on ARM at some point in the future. Or if they're abandoning it and they don't, the M1 is the perfect stopgap. Because now you don't have to wait for every company. Because here's the problem. With Windows, you have to either go ARM, which means now anything you want to run x86 has to be emulated at like in, insanely slow and inefficient speeds. Uh, so, so everything has to be ARM. x86, you can run under emulation. Or you have to go x86 and emulate everything under ARM, which is equally slow. So, so having a chip that bridges that gap where it's like now you can run all the software from yesterday and all the software tomorrow all on the same chip without having to emulate anything is amazing. It, it's actually pretty damn genius. And it's too bad that Apple has the uh, copyright on that. Because uh, honestly, I would have loved to have seen like Intel and AMD and ARM come together and all agree to standardize on a new architecture that's an amalgam of all three. And honestly, I don't know why. Is there any reason why they can't? Like, I, don't, I can't imagine. I mean, obviously, Apple doesn't own the rights to ARM, right? Like, so the ARM, so... They might own the 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 specific implementation that they did of mixing ARM and x86, right? The the, the architecture that that originated from that. Uh, but I don't think they own that idea. Like other companies could do it in theory, right? Like I don't see any reason why Intel or AMD couldn't create their own version of the M chip, where they're basically like negotiate with ARM and the licensing and be like, hey, listen, we're going to take Intel x86 architecture and we're going to take ARM and we're going to build them both in the same chip. We're going to have some APIs bridge back and forth. And now we just need Microsoft to implement the support into their operating system so that we basically have, instead of instead of running an emulation like WSL2 or something or a, or a hypervisor that's emulating ARM or x86 on ARM, you literally can just call native APIs that call into bare metal for either one. Or actually, you know what would be even cooler? 
that you you know what actually be even cooler, honestly. I, I I think it'd be cooler to have two chips. Like like I get that you lose some of the because obviously the big strength of the M1 is that you're sharing the cache between ARM and x86 instructions and the performance cores versus the efficiency cores and like having it all packaged super close together by that definitely gives it a huge performance boost. But I, I think it would actually be cool to kind of go the other direction. It'd be a little bit more expensive to get some, you know, to get the similar performance. You'd have to replicate uh, a lot of the cache. You'd have to put the chips close enough together that the caches could talk to each other and sync with each other. Um, but how cool would it be to just have two chips? Remember back in the day when we used to have a co-processor? Remember when we used to have like a like a 386, you know, SX16 because we couldn't afford the DX. And then we'd throw in that X, uh, that 387 math co-processor to basically make it a DX. Uh, how cool would it be if you could have your, you know, Intel, you know, 4700 i9 processor and then your, your, you know, Qualcomm, you know, fucking whatever the best is, you know, highest performance multi-core uh, ARM processor in a socket right next to it. Hell, they could probably even share the same heatsink. I think that'd be pretty cool. I wonder if anybody's thought of doing something like that. That would be pretty neat. Because just like you have a GPU, I mean, you already install a GPU to complement your CPU, right? I mean, a lot of the things in the operating system now use GPU and CUDA and OpenCL and DirectX and all these things that that use your GPU to offload a lot of the work, right? But of course, they're they have to go through a bottleneck, which is the PCI the PCIe bus. You know, they're not. It's not going to be as fast as like DMA to the L1 and L2 cache or whatever on a CPU. But still a high enough bandwidth bus that you can use like a GPU to, you know, have what, 48 gigabytes a second or whatever of transfer under PCI 5 or whatever it is um, or PCI 4. I can't remember the throughputs, but I know it's greater than 18 gig a second now. So so if you have like PCI, why not even just have a riser card? Like, why doesn't somebody just build an ARM daughter card? So now you have your GPU card, you have your ARM card that has its L1 cache cpu on i mean they used to do that back in the day too you remember back when you could buy like a uh you could buy an emulation card for like apple do you guys who, who here remembers that you got to be old as fuck like me to remember that but if you had a pc and you needed to run mac software back in the day there was a time where apple sold a card that you could put into your pc that was a full-blown macintosh built onto a card and then you could basically do like a key like a key combination on your keyboard and you could jump back and forth in real time between running mac os and running windows and it was really expensive. It wasn't that fast. It had some compatibility problems, yada, yada, yada. But it was kind of a cool idea, right? But two operating systems didn't really talk to each other. It was kind of like you were just using the power from the slot and using, I, I don't even think it shared the memory. Or, or, or I think the only thing it might have done is like had a place to plug in a, um, a hard drive or something to it. But uh, yeah, I think I saw it from 8-Bit Guy too, Theodorus. I think 8-Bit Guy is, the, is where I learned about that from. Historio said Suno AI is amazing. Yeah, it absolutely is. And Suno AI isn't alone. There's a lot of open, there's open source versions of it. Um, there's other services that do music creation and allow you to be more involved in the process. Yeah, Suno is crazy. If you haven't played around with Suno AI, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I mean, here, let me, here, I'll go create a song today. Here, let's, let's create a song since we've had a couple super chatters today helping out with the stream. I want to show you guys some appreciation for your sum total $43.71 of chat revenue. We really do appreciate that. I mean, before Microsoft takes its giant ass cut. Uh, also, Eric G, my man. Good to see you, brother. Thank you for the $5. Said, hey, guys, how's it going? I haven't been interacting much for a while, but I'm still around. I'm glad to see you, man. I'm glad to see you. I was wondering what was going on with you. And Stumpkin, thank you for the 99 uh, Canadian cents again. Uh, here, let's create a song. Let's create a song in Suno AI. So song description. Let me describe my song because I'm now a musical artist. My song is going to be... Uh, here, okay, write a song about Barnacle's Nerdgasm uh, blowing up the Redmond Microsoft uh, campus with a thermal nuclear bomb, but only as a joke and not for real, and make sure, sure the lyrics clearly state this, so he doesn't get in trouble. <laughs> and then we'll make it a country song. Country song. All right, here we go. Let's see if it'll do. It'll probably tell me it violates the rules, but here we're trying it. So this is all I typed in. I said, I said, write a song about Barnacle's nerdgasm blowing up the Redmond Microsoft campus with a thermal nuclear bomb, but only as a joke and not for real. And make sure the lyrics clearly state this in the form of a country song. 
However, I didn't check the box that said instrumental. It says create a song without lyrics. Oh, no, I want the lyrics. I, we need the lyrics. So I unchecked that box. And so, you know, I'm using uh, I'm using the V3. So this is the brand new Suno. I last time I made song it was V2. Now I'm using V3. It already finished. That's how fast it is. So I have two songs now. I think that are roughly a minute long each. Uh, it decided to name my song a prank gone wrong. So that and, and it's a melodic country acoustic song called a prank gone wrong. And you guys are the first people to hear it. You ready? I, I've never even heard it. Just did just just created this. Here we go. In the heart of the Redmond, Microsoft campus lies, where barnacles nergas, a prankster in disguise. He had a plan so bold, he said, with a sly smile, blow up Microsoft, just to make them laugh a while. He built a thermonuclear bomb in his secret geeky lab. Wires and circuits, he thought it was a hilarious gag. But little did he know the town was in a frenzy. His joke had gone too far, it was more than he could see. Oh, it was only a joke, he never meant to harm. But his laughter turned to tears when he saw the alarm A prank gone wrong, spreading panic and fear Where Knuckles nerdgasm, regretting his actions clear <laughs> Certified banger Okay, let me ask you this. Are you fucking scared of AI now? Are you guys listening? Have you listened to any fucking thing I've said over like the last couple of months? Or really the last year, since since like two years since GPT dropped. Um, dude, AI is advancing at a fucking crazy rate. I know nothing about music. I, I You guys heard the internet song, the only song I ever wrote in my entire life, talking about fucking the internet was made for porn and, and feces. Uh, when I was super drunk years and years ago, and that was like the worst song ever in the history of songs. That thing took me five hours to write the lyrics for and perform. And I just did that in 30 seconds by typing a single sentence. And not only that, it created two songs. Remember, each time it creates a song, it creates two songs. So you have a choice. Same lyrics, different performance. Here, here, Here's V2 with the same lyrics, different performance. Tell me which one you like better. In the heart of the Redmond town, the Microsoft campus lies where barnacles nergasm, a prankster in disguise. He had a plan so bold. He said with a sly smile, I'll blow up Microsoft just to make him laugh a while. He built a thermal nuclear bomb in a secret geeky lab. With wires and circuits on it was a hilarious gag But little, little did he you know The town was in a frenzy His joke had gone, gone too far as was more than he could see. see Oh, it was only a joke He never <laughs> meant to harm But his laughter to turn to tears When he saw the alarm Frank gone wrong Spreading in panic and fear Barnacles nerdgasm Regretting his actions oh, clear yeah. Oh yeah Down, down, down Jigging about His down, actions down. clear I mean, come on, guys <laughs> come on you wonder if you could insert your voice into that oh i totally could i, to I totally could because all i'd have to do is take the song i have another open source thing that can extract the music while keeping the lyrics then i convert the lyrics into my voice and then i just cut out that part do the inverse reinsert it with uh audacity and boom now now i'd be singing the song uh posted a link and off topic to an ai tool to check out yeah there's only about five thousand new ai tools every day but here let's see if it's one i know i doubt I, I bet you it isn't let's see Okay, so rave.dj. This is one I have not seen yet. Let's fire it up. Okay, so rave.dj. Apparently, I can click just create. Let me click create here. 
Okay, so I can mash up two songs together or I can mix many songs into a DJ set. Okay, I'm going to mash up two songs together. Let me click that. See what happens. Uh, oh, wait, do I have to enter something first? Okay, so enter a YouTube song or paste a link. All right, here, let's try. Let, let's let's give this a try. So rave.dj, let's go to YouTube. All right, let's see here. How about NWA F the police? Let's grab that one. All right, that's a good one. So let's copy that. Share link, copy. Let me pop that into rave.dj. Then I'm going to mash up two songs together. Uh, so YouTube, NWA, F the police. Oh, and then I got to put in a second one. Uh, we need, uh, how about tell a, uh, let's see here. What's uh would be a song that's on the polar opposite spectrum. Uh, let's see here. Their song, their song. I won't do drugs. All right, here we go. All right, perfect. This is this will work great. All right, so grab that. Let's pop it in. I've never used this tool, by the way. I'm just I'm just winging it. All right, so I just pasted it in. Let's see if it loads. Okay, so now we got NWA, F the Police, and the Dare song, I Will Dare with Lyrics. And I'm going to do a create a mashup right now. All right, it is now creating a mashup. This is the mashup queue to be created. All right, let's see how long this takes. <laughs> oh, I should have done do the poo. Why didn't I do do the poo? That would have been a great one. That would have been awesome. What's the program to remove music? Uh, it's called, uh, oh, what's it called? Something Ninja. Audio Ninja, I think. Here, let me go look here. CD, GitHub. Uh, da, da, der S Star Ninja. Come on. Do, 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 do. Okay, nothing in there. Let me look under my code folder. Hold on. Do, 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 CD code. There's a ninja, ninja, star ninja. Nope. Star ninja. ninja. I think it's called, I, th I think it had ninja in the name, if I remember right. Uh, let's see here. So, Agent GPT, uh, Chat GPT, ESP32, Flipper Zero, GitHub. Oh, let me go into GitHub folder. GitHub. All right, uh, let's see here. Bark, that's the one I do for voice cloning. Wave to lip, that's what I do for changing the lips to match different audio and, and, and video. Uh, let's see here. Face fusion, that's for deep fake face swaps in video or single frames. Uh, Gmail download, that's the AI tool I created for downloading uh, attachments from emails. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, let's see here. A bunch of porn site downloaders. I also had AI write for me that all work, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, but it turns out that's like wasted time. Just go to GitHub, literally type in any porn site or any site downloader, and you'll find like 10 tools that do it perfectly. Um, even sites that like heavily obfuscate things. Like I found downloaders that like if you go to a site, and it's like you got to jump through 20 hoops to download something. Uh, somebody wrote a GitHub project that gets around all of it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Share GP with Hyper-V client, stable diffusion web UI, text generation, the algorithm. That's the Twitter algorithm that hasn't been updated in like 10 plus months because Elon Musk is a dirty liar. Uh, TTS, uh, VSGAN for sharpening video, Wave to Lip HD, just the HD version of the other tool, Whisper, uh, Win11 HDR Gamma, XTTS, YT2X. I don't even know what that is. Let me go in my other folder. Ba, 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 ba. Sandbox. Where the hell is it? I know I have it on here somewhere. This is what I get for like putting everything in different folders. Um, GPT for all. Uh, let's see. Stream FX, PoE. Oh, yeah. I even I even found a tool on GitHub that allows you to API-ify PoE. So PoE, a web-based um, portal to multiple AIs that you pay a monthly fee for. They don't give you API access because they want you to use it like ChatGPT. Um, somebody wrote a, a GitHub app that actually exposes an API to it so that you can use it with an API. So you can make programs that interface with it and talk to it as if it's open AI API, but through Poe. It's a little bit of it's a little bit finicky to set up, but once you do, then it can it can basically fully utilize your uh, your Poe subscription through API. Uh, Let's see here. Twitter scraper, VBS, WLED, X following, Yuzu. Huh. 
I, I cannot find it. You know what? It'd probably be faster for me just to go to GitHub. By the way, we're 35% done generating song the police. Uh, okay, go to github.com. Let's do that. I'll find it. it. It's really it was really easy to find. Just say remove music. So remove music. Uh, let's see, music cue be gone. Soundtrack editor. I'll know when I see it. Pass auto music together. Meow. Here, let's see here. Remove. Remove lyrics. Uh, let's see here. Remove lyrics. Karaoke maker. Lyrically. Metallica versus. Uh, go to the next one. Yeet lyrics. Man, there's a ton of projects to do this. I don't see the one. Let me go the other way. So remove. Remove. Words from music. And then there's. Let's see. Nope. Uh, and then remove. Remove music from video. Ah, I found it. Music assassin. It wasn't ninja. It was assassin. I knew I knew I was close. Okay, I'll give you guys a link. There you go. And I know it's the right one because I actually have it in my watch list and it's starred. So this tells me this is the one I did. The, the mashup's almost done. So this, this is what I use. So this is music assassin. It was last updated six months ago. It works. And to be fair, it actually does work pretty good. It's not perfect. But what it's really good at is like, let's say you have... Um, you want a movie you want to like take clips out of a movie but there's music playing in the background you just want to take the dialogue what you can do is either remove the remove the music from the entire movie so it's just lyrics with no music in the background which is kind of weird um or what i do is i just go into audacity and just cut out the places where i want to get the dialogue and then i use music assassin to just remove the music in the back of the dialogue um the place i used it last was do you guys remember when i made uh when I made uh, Steven Seagal into Chris Farley and uh, what was it like uh, LA Ninja or something like that? It was a one, one way or the other. I think I took, I put Steven Seagal on somebody. And then I remember I had to remove the everybody is Kung Fu fighting song because it would have triggered DMCA. So, so I did the deep fake. I swapped it. I put in the new face using face fusion. And then because it was DMCA matching, I just ran Music Assassin over the top of it and it took out everybody as Kung Fu fighting. So all you could hear was the dialogue and people kicking and punching each other. That's what it was. Beverly Hills Ninja. Thank you, Dav. I appreciate it, Dav. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Okay, so here's the mashup. So again, I took NWA F the Police. And I mashed it up with the dare song. You guys remember dare or drug alcohol, something, something dare alcohol, something trade D A R E education, drug, alcohol, abuse, education. That's what it was. Drug and alcohol, abuse, education, dare from our childhood. So I took that song and I mixed it with F the police. And this is what we get. I haven't listened to this yet, by the way, this is my first time ever using rave DJ. Let's see how it sounds. Right about now in WA quarters in full of Attorneys all MC Red, Ice Cube, and Easy Motherfucking E. Order, order, order. Ice Cube, take the motherfucking stand. Yep, so far it hasn't changed anything. Nope, still hasn't changed anything. Okay, that changed it. So they, so they, they like mashed them together as like a chorus. Okay, I see what it's doing. Okay, I see what it's doing. For some reason, I thought it was going to like take a melody from one and put the lyrics on the other. Oh, it probably will, Theodorus. It's fine. I, I I don't care. I'll just I'll just mute this section. Um, and plus, I think you have to play like 10, 10 seconds or more continuously before it even triggers anything. Okay, I gotta admit this is pretty cool. <laughs> okay, this, this this is cool. I like this. I like this tool. Okay, now that I know how it works, I think I can create something better. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that. So so what it does is it takes the two songs, gets them into their each other's beat while keeping the lyrics and the cadence of the lyrics the same. So they match up the beats, and then they lay them over the top of each other during the choruses so that they're like mixed together. 
Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So let's try this. Let's try. Let's try two of my songs then. Here, let me see. Uh, let's do "Do the Poo." Here, do the poo. Uh, let's see here. Oh man, how about Chris? Chris Cruz. Chris Cruz, do the poo. Seriously, did he take it down? Please tell me Chris didn't take it down. Oh man, no. What? Do the poo. No, I think he took it down. I mean, I know he got hired in another as a DJ in another state and stuff, and he was like trying to get his career to take off. So it's possible he took it down because he saw it as an embarrassment. Oh man, am I gonna have to way back archive this now? <sighs> that sucks. Okay, hold on here. Let me see. So let me try Barnacles do the poo. See if somebody re-uploaded it. Uh, oh no no i found it i found it chris cruz what wow so youtube search buried it so much that even though i literally typed in chris cruz do the poo it didn't pop up i had to type in barnacles do the poo because my name is in the title cheer cheer yelling over the Yelling intro, over the intro. Yelling Yelling the intro. i don't know why rappers always do that it's your boy Chris Cruz with a brand new dance Gonna teach you a move that's gonna shake your pants Invite your friends, it's super easy to do It's moving with the rhythm and it's called the poo We ain't finna lean back, we don't do the what. This dance is so hot, we about to call the cops It's super hot, fire boy, move your body Get wild, get stupid, y'all, let's get rowdy Don't do the burning, don't want to step You about to see a dance you ain't experienced yet If you wanna learn this hotness, I'll show you what to do Just squat down straight and do as I do I do the poo Greatest song ever. You can do the soldier boy, you can Superman. Or you can do the poo and you can be a super duper man. You can lean on back like a fat joke crap. Or you can wobble. Man, we ain't about that. You can get your eagle on it, you can shoulder lean. Or you can be like me and do the poo, you know That's what, what I mean? Long. Old school shuffle, you can cha cha slide. Walk it out like Unk. Wait, I thought that he died. Every day I'm shuffling like LMFAO. Just find yourself a toilet and you steal on the show. Make a funny face, drop your butt, push it real hard, and let the turn cut. Do the poo. Do the poo! Do the poo! Do the poo! Do the poo! Yeah! Do the poo! Do the poo! Greatest song ever written. <laughs> God, I love that song. Man, I miss Chris. Chris Chris, such a good dude. He's such a good dude. That was funny. Yeah, if you want to see a lot of shirtless barnacles, like if, if, if you're if you're really you want to see a lot of shirtless barnacles doing silly shit, that's the video to watch for sure. Um, here I gotta go leave a comment since that was eight years ago. This is one of the best moments of my entire life, and I absolutely loved reliving it with all my fans over on the live stream, over on the tech talk live stream today on 4 13 2024 there we go you got everyone's while you got to update your comments and uh and then my last comment was five years ago it says how does this only have eleven thousand views are you kidding me this is the greatest song ever i still stand by that and then eight years ago this will never ever get old ever and then before that it was this is the most fun i've had with my shirt off in a long time thanks chris cruz for letting me be a part of it dude that was awesome man that was so much fun. That was so much fun. You see, that was, that was worth doing Tech Talk today just to see that, man. Just to see that. That's amazing. Hey, Daniel Mitchell. Oh, you've been AFK for the last eight minutes? Man, you missed a lot. You missed a lot. Okay, so I got to go find the unlisted internet song. Uh, let's see if I can get access to it through some back channels here. Because uh, we definitely need to get the internet song in on this action. Uh, let's see. Go to YouTube Studio. Let me go into my videos, do a search for internet song since it's going to be private. Um, let's see, is it unlisted or private? Okay, I'm going to change it to unlisted so that I can give it to this thing. Uh, let's see, unlisted. Uh, why are you not unlisting it? Unlisted. Done. Save. 
All right. It is now unlisted, so I should be able to pass it to Rave DJ. Here we go. It's processing. It is now going to mix Do the Poo with the Internet song by, by Barnacle's Cringeworthy NSFW. Create mashup. Here we go. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. So this is this is Chris Cruz's song, Do the Poo, Feet Barnacle's, because I'm in the music video. Uh, mixed with my own creation called the internet song from many many years ago where i got super drunk and challenged myself to to write the lyrics to and perform edit and post a song within five hours and it's the only time i ever did how is there anybody here that hasn't heard the internet song like like i'll give you guys a little sneak peek just so you can see how it mashes with with rave dj but it's pretty damn cringe like it's 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 legit cringe so th so this song was written 10 years ago so 10 years ago, it only has 11,000 views. Not many people have seen this out of my audience. That's why, and, and the reason I leave it unlisted is because it's it's pretty NSFW and polarizing. So, so you know, a lot of my fans back in the day used to get angry about it, but but now I just let everything hang out and I don't give a shit anymore. So, um, but here I'm gonna, I, I save it as a special treat that I show everybody every once in a while. Do not disparage the internet song, right? People want an AI link for the rave DJ. Oh, yeah, I, I can give it to you. It's, it's literally rave.dj. It couldn't be any easier. If you want to try the tool, it's rave.dj. That's it. It's that simple. Meat puppet. Meat puppet. Thank you for the five dollars. Said if I remember correctly, there was drug abuse resistance education. Oh, okay. I was close. I I, I was close. Um, so D A R E. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And thank you for the five dollars, by the way. So I gotta give you a little bam. What happened to the Slender Man video you made a decade ago? I mean, it should still be up. I, I don't think I took it down. <laughs> Drugs are really entertaining. They sure can be, sir. They sure can be. Uh, so here, I'll give you guys a little taste of the internet song while the rave DJ is doing a mashup. Just so you guys know what to listen for in there. Here we go. Oh, man, I just picked up this new gaming laptop down at the store. And the guy was telling me about this thing it has on it called so the cringe. internet. He said all you got to do is like hook up this cable to the side of it and you can go to this world called the internet. There we go. No more. Welcome to the internet. Al Gore Al made it for porno, porno pics and FPS. Don't shoot dudes, dudes in the dick. dick. That's, That's not nice not downloading, downloading shit with you, Torrent, and you snap makes my shit go slow, but well, high ping makes me invincible. Oh. EA codes for shit. My laggy internet gives me perks stealing people's kills and teleporting skills. But listen, your cheating is not okay unless it's lag. Then it's okay to exploit shit for higher rank and bragging right? Sure, that's all right. Scarfing down your bag of chips and do will make you quick. So quick. So fucking quick. No scope those fuckers fast before they come and rape your ass. Your ass. Careful on the internet, 4chan and reddit, make me sick with all the pics, decapitated shit, what the fuck, I came for porn, my boner is no more, and laying on the floor, down on the floor, please give me a new website, and no meat spin is not alright, and lemon party is not cool, I'm not a fucking fool, warned you about the internet, it's where the weird fucks hang for life and troll about virgins for life. Oh my god, the internet has really twisted shit. Nasty shit. Real shit. Now my brain is scarred for life and this song didn't help. Didn't help. Fuck. <laughs> that is, man, that is a classic. That is a classic. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That song is worth at least $1,000 in Super Chats easily on, on a rainy day. Um... I think our mashup's done. Okay, so now you guys have heard it. You guys have heard do the poop. So you guys, so you guys have heard do the send it to Eminem. I, I will Mo World. So you guys have heard do the poo, right? And you've heard the internet song, which is my only song I've ever written, performed, edited. I, I forgot. I didn't even show you guys the video. The video is like what makes it way worse because the video is literally like showing picture of a toilet full of human shit and showing picture like like all the pictures make the song the actually way worse. So I'm glad that I only showed you the lyrics. Um, but now you get to see the mashup. So you heard Do the Poo, and you heard Internet Song. This is mashed together by Reeve DJ for the first time ever. Chris Cruz in the Internet Song by Barnacles called Barnacles the Poo.
Okay, it decided to name the song Barnacles the Pooh. So this is the mashup. Here we go. Let's see how it did. Oh man, I just picked up a boat to this world called the Internet. I want to know more. Welcome to the Internet. Al Gore made it for porno pics and FPS. Don't shoot dudes in the dick. That's not the Chris Cruz with a brand new dance. Gonna teach you a move. It's gonna shake your pants. Invite your friends. Super easy to do. It's moving with the rhythm and it's called the poo. We finna lean back. We don't do the what. This dance is all hot. I'm about to call the cops. It's super hot fire, boy. Move your body. Get wild. Get stupid. Yo, let's get rowdy. Don't tell up boarding skills, but listen. Your cheating is not okay. Unless it's like, then it's okay to exploit shit for higher rank. And brag and write shit. That's all you do. Carving down your bag of chips and you will make you quick So quick So fucking quick Now scope those fuckers fast before they come and rape your ass Your ass You can careful on the internet 4chan and reddit make me sick with all the pics Decapitated oh, man, shit What the Did fuck you I came from the lane Or you can be the fee and do the poo You know what I mean? Old school shuffle floor. you can cha-cha slide Down Walking out like floor. uncle and I thought that he died Please give me a new website and no meat spin is not alright And lemon party is not cool I'm not a fucking fool Warn you about the internet It's where the weird fucks hang for life and troll about virgins Virgin for life! Oh my god, they laggy internet gives me perks stealing people's kills Teleporting skills, but listen, your cheating is not okay. Unless it's like, then it's okay to help. Did you help? I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. All right, why the hell are we doing this on Tech Talk and not on Twitch? I, I, I think. I think we're going to start wrapping up. I'm going to go eat lunch and then we're going to take the party over to Twitch because this is definitely stuff that is much more suited to Twitch than tech talk. By the way, if you don't follow me on Twitch, this is pretty much all I do on Twitch. Like Twitch is completely unfiltered. Anything goes 18 plus. I try not to bring too much of that over the YouTube. That's kind of like the delineation I do. So, so, and if you don't like Twitch and you're like, oh, I don't like Twitch, so I'm not going to go over there. Well, then you just don't have to see that side of me. Like, that's the, the whole reason I'm on two different platforms is because that's the platform that I give zero fucks that I do whatever I want. And then this is the platform where I try to have a co-host and do tech talk. But when the co-host leaves, it is it is scheduled time. Sometimes I tend to go off the deep end a little bit. Uh, yeah, Dread, do it, man. Create a new Twitch account. Do it. How much for a BBM stream? What is a BBM? I know a BBW. What's a BBM? Is that is that big beautiful man stream then instead of big beautiful woman? Every stream I do is big beautiful man. What are you talking about? Just look at look at this beefcake. This is 394 pounds of just prime real estate right here, baby. That's right. You heard me. Hysteria said you gotta set up a mirror in the back showing the rear view on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't do I'm not allowed to do a nude stream, sadly. Neither Twitch or YouTube will allow me to do a, a, a nude stream, and neither will neither will Miss Barnacles. Because because trust me, I am not a modest guy. Like seriously, if I if I can make a million dollars a year by spreading my butt cheeks for a bunch of like really weird uh, French Canadian dudes, um, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Like seriously, like I'm I'm not all about trying to like not live my life. Um, but unfortunately, Miss Barnacles likes to keep me all to herself, and I don't blame her. I'm quite the catch, so uh, so she gets to have the final say. And, that, and that's why you don't have, like, Barnacle's feet pics. Um, you search your channel, but the Slender video is nowhere to be found. Is it unlisted? Well, here, let me look. Let me, let me look. Uh, let's see here. So search search my videos. Uh, let's see here. Slender Man. Zero videos. Slender Man. Zero videos. Oh, I wonder if that's one of the videos that got deleted when I got hacked. No, there it is. No, I found it. Let me see if it's... Uh, Oh, it is set private. Why did I set this private? If it's set private, there's a reason. I got I, I don't know what the reason is, so I'm not going to unprivate it. But uh, there must have been something in it that I had to private it for. I can't imagine what, though. It was literally just me playing Slender Man. Like, I don't know. Here, let me, let me look here. Enjoy the video, because this is the last time I'm ever playing a Slender game. I about crap my pants. Hey, what's up? See. Man, that's an old Don't. setup. Just running through the woods. So the sound in this game is a trip. Then I suggest you go do it right now. 
I dare you to play it without getting scared at all. I I mean, with the volume. God, that's an old video 11 years ago. I, I mean, maybe it was because the audio was blown out. Like, why, why did I why did I private this? This is like this is just like one of my old shtick videos. Like, I don't know. It may have just accidentally got privated, too, because I know whenever I got hacked and they that whenever I got hacked, they set all the videos to private. And then I had to set I had to go through them all and set them back to pr public. And this may just be one that I just I missed. So fuck it. Here, I'll make it public again. Have fun. There you go. Doot. Save. There you go. My my treat to you. Just do a search for very scared playing slender. This game scares the hell out of me. Never again at Barnacles. There you go. Save. So you should be able to find it. No problem now. Damn, I didn't even create a thumbnail. You can tell it's an old video and I didn't even go out of my way to create a thumbnail. Man, we're going back into the old school. How many other videos are set to private then? Do I, That's weird. That should not have been set to private. So let me look. Let me go back here. Go back. Way back. Can I sort by private? Here, sort by visibility. Why can't I sort by visibility? Filter, visibility, private, apply. Okay. Come on. Any day now. It's taking a little while because I think I have 800 videos or something like that. Uh, did I break it? Oh, there it goes. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so all the jitters are pri or all the jitters are private. Um, uh, wait, why are those jitters private? Those should be unlisted. Yeah, I, I think I just need to go back through all these videos. I think a bunch of them are not supposed to be private that are. Let me see. Okay, so jit why are all these jitters private? None of these jitters should be private. Um, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's hear. Uh, private. Uh, let's see. Spy movie. Edge by Oregon headset upgrade promotion. Oh, that was because that was okay. So a bunch of time sensitive videos. Wait, Microsoft laid me off after 15 years of service to set private. What the fuck? Publish. Tech talk 38 is private. Okay, there's something fucking going on here. I think we just found something, guys. Um. First time playing through Bioshock Infinite? What? Project Cars on the Boda Racing Simulation? Okay, there, there's something bad wrong here, guys. Uh, Plan Modern Warfare on Xbox Public. Guys, there's like a ton of videos that are private that should not be private. Like, why are they private? Um... Halo 4 Sport, Spartan Ops Public. Replacing bad brake switch on my Lexus RX 300 private? What? Thank you, Anonymous, for dealing with the Westboro Baptist Church. Why the fuck would that be hidden? Snow King destroying my garbage cans. Happy Easter from the Nerdgasm family. What is going on here? No, no, I, I got hacked a long time ago, but for it, but I thought I went through and I publicked all the videos, but I clearly didn't. Barnacles does dirt fish three day. Well, that that shouldn't be. Okay, this is super fucked up. World War. Okay, so official FIA World Rally WRC three, private install Windows eight Pro on my Elgato. Why the fuck, dude? There are so many videos that are set to private that should not be set to private. Here, I'm publishing them all right now. I just, I have to do them one by one because there's a lot that I can't publish. Hostess went out of business. Why the fuck is that public? The weird thing is they're all monetized. They all have monetization on and monetization is clear, yet they're set to private. How I capture video from my PC to Xbox? That was a really popular video. Amazon Kindle white paper. Guys, well, I'm glad. Th thank you for telling me that other video is hidden because apparently there's a gajillion videos that are set to playing World Wars or, or the War Z beta is set to private. No, none of these should be private. So I so so a, a big part of my library, 
like a hundred. It looks like quite a few videos. My honest Sargus 900. Yeah, that shouldn't be that. That's got to be public. Man, this pisses me off. That God, this pisses me off. Hey, Chris C. What's up, brother? Is, is that is that Chris Cruz right there? Please tell please tell me that's that that's Chris Cruz and not another Chris C. Although although I'm happy either way. Thank you for the ten dollars. Super appreciate it. But we were just talking about Chris Cruz and then a Chris C tips ten dollars. All right, this is uh this is straight up like pissing me off. Let's play Happy Wheels. What? That was one of my favorite videos. Overclocking G forces. Nope. Make that public. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. This is so weird. Why are these all private? Google Nexus 7. I mean, they're old. It's like old product reviews. Nobody be looking for anymore. But Nintendo 3DS XL review with Mario Brothers is set private. Has have these all been set private ever since I got hacked like a year plus ago? Building my custom DIY headset is private. That was a great video. Oh man, this is this has got me like super bummed out actually. A day in the life of Barnacle's first internet vlog. Microsoft Touch Mouse review private? What? I'm gonna just start bulk resolving these. It, playing iRacing on Oboto Revolution, private. One of my one of my top racing sim videos. Go-kart racing at PGP in Kent. That's supposed to be public. Best eye racing simulator with Thrustmaster T300 R T500 RS. That that was private. Seaton Infinity TV review. That's that's private. What the fuck is going on? How many videos are private? There's a whole nother page after this. New Flare Rebel 90 single LED flashlight. Public. Thrustmaster T500 RS wheel clamp problem. Set that to public. Windows 8 ship party smash mouth performance set to private. What? EVGA GTX 680 for the win plus four gigabyte unboxing. That's private. Okay, so I think I'm almost at the end. Luck luckily, it was only like, like 50 videos, but and then there's a whole nother page. Let's see what we got here. So gaming in my man cave, uh, my bedroom movie theater. <laughs> I misspelled that. I need to fix that. Movie. Gaming in my man cave movie theater with massive projector screen. Let me save that one. Oh, my little Hannah kitty. My poor Hannah girl. She passed away a while ago. I miss her. Different crisp, but very close sounding. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the 10 bucks, brother. Could they have restored after your account was recovered? That Well, what happened is when they gave me my account back, everything was set to private. So I had to go through like 800 videos and one by one set them back to public. But I did. I, I went through every one and set it back to public. But now there's a ton that are private again. So it's almost like YouTube like reverted to another backup while I was like a third of the way through that process. So gaming in my man cave movie theater. So here, let me, I'm, I'm just going to bulkers all these. So modern warfare three on Xbox live ultimate oh, ultimate computer room walkthrough is set to private PGP motorsports, private Dirtfish three day experience, private three day, the link private Dirtfish three day experience, trailer private barnacles lapping day at the Ridge in Shelton, Washington, private Nvidia, Surround demo with 46 inch screens playing iRacing was set to private. Case Labs M10 pool cooled PC with 590 classified hydrocoppers that was set to private. My 590 classified hydrocopper review that's set to private. Dirtfish Rally School, what not to do when I wrecked their car that one's set to private. And review of the Flip Ultra HD camera from way back that was also set to private. So that's 13 more videos. I'm going to edit these and change uh, visibility to public. Update videos. Yes, I understand the implications. Let's do it. Okay, it's updating right now. So so we at least just public, like, like if I, I didn't read them all, but it, going through, it was at least 30 to 50 videos that I just went through in public. They should they, they haven't been public this whole time. They made, they, like, nobody has probably watched them in years. God, that makes me, man, that pisses me off. That right pisses me off. Here, let me look at uh, Unlisted. Let me look at the unlisted videos and see if there's a bunch under there that are all fucked up too. Uh, let's see. Okay, so those are jitters. All the jitters are supposed to be unlisted because those are for Patreon patrons only. Uh, God, there's a lot of them too. I know I haven't made a lot of new jitters lately, but uh, there's a lot of them in the backlog. 
Uh, let's see how to get multiple copies of GTA for free. That doesn't work anymore. So that would be unlisted. Uh, let's see. Jitters. Jitters. Man, I, I have at least two or three hundred jitters. Uh, let's see. You know what I should do is I should add all these jitters to a private uh, playlist and repost it over for my patrons so that they can go back through like the history and watch them all. They'd probably love that. Glitched VR live stream on alt space VR. Why was that one set done? Uh, still fat, still depressed. Yeah, I left that one unlisted because people are being assholes. Uh, Internet song by Barnacles. I'll leave that one unlisted now so people that have the link to that can watch it. Okay, so that all looks fine. That actually looks fine. Okay, so the other thing I need to look at is public. And then uh, let's see here. Monetization not monetized or limited i'm gonna go through and see if they disabled monetization on a bunch of the shit too because it sounds like it, it it's starting to look like um didn't you do that but the playlist was being leaked yeah actually i think that is what happened last time now that you mention it yeah because if one person if i put all the jitters in one spot and one person leaks the playlist then then it starts getting around so you're right that's probably not a good way to do it people are confused about your ms video being reposted it wasn't reposted um oh wait or was it was that why i had that one private so wait here let me let me double check let me see if maybe it was seen as a duplicate okay hold on here so barnacles barnacles laid off let me search oh there is two there's eight minutes ago and nine years ago wait why is it listing it as a separate video hey what's up nerdgasm fan oh i know why okay i just remembered I remembered. Okay, here, let me set this back to private. There we go. Save. Thank you for reminding me. There we go. All fixed. All fixed. So wait, so by setting it from private to public, it listed it as a new video? So all those videos I just went through and set back to public are now showing up as new videos. They're not even even though they were like published years ago. Ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever oh man microsoft's so fucking broken microsoft is so fucking broken no I, I forgot that i did two versions there's two versions of the microsoft laid off video there's one where i shit all over satchin adele but i had to pull that one back because of my severance plan um so 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 i basically made another copy where i cut that out and then i uploaded that one instead uh it doesn't matter today though, because it's like I the dude is a piece of shit. I just didn't want him coming after my severance package and ruining my, you know, my son's future just because I called him a piece of shit. Uh okay, so the videos are showing normally for you. Haven't got any notifications. Uh yeah, I just I meant YouTube, not Microsoft. Sorry if I misspoke. YouTube is broken though. Uh okay, so let me. Let's see what else have I got here. Okay, so monetization. Let me go through the monetized videos here. So limited, 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 limited. That's fine. Ineligible, partially blocked, ineligible copyright because of music, ineligible, ineligible, ineligible copyright, add suitability, copyright, terms and policies for 3D printing a gun. Uh Let's see here. Oh, that one got re -up. I got to re-upload that one, though, thankfully. Uh, Epson Power Light Projector. Copyright, copyright, copyright. Battlefield 4 live stream on launch day. Uh, I can enable monetization on that one. Okay, and then click, click, click. None of the above. Submit. Uh, let's see here. Copyright, copyright, copyright limited. Let's play Dirt 3 on the Boto Revolution. That can be monetized. There we go. Submit. I mean, these are these are obviously videos that aren't going to get that many views again, but I figure I'll go through and enable them if I can. Uh, trolling YouTube trolls nerdgasm style. Uh, let's see. That one can be monetized. First time playing multiplayer COD. That one can be monetized. I mean, it's funny. It's like I'm only monetizing them because Microsoft might or sorry, not Microsoft. YouTube might actually list them to somebody again if they're monetized. They they kind of go out of their way not to show videos to people that are monetized because it's just a waste of bandwidth for them. OK, I'm already at the end of the list. So that was fast. So, yeah. OK, it looks like everything's back to the way it should be now. At least until people point out problems, then I'll just go back and fix it again. 
Uh, but yeah, like on YouTube, it, it, I, I make almost nothing off of my backlog of videos. It's like it's like every month. If I didn't do if I didn't do tech talk, it would be probably less than fifty dollars in revenue across eight hundred videos a month. So so yeah, YouTube really doesn't promote you unless you're like constantly uploading, constantly uploading, and then your backlog can kind of help you out. So, but we'll get back there. I mean, a lot of people want me just to go edit my Twitch content and put up like shortened version of my Twitch content up here on YouTube, but I don't want to do that. I, I still have, you know, I still have a dream of coming back to my YouTube channel and actually doing like edited content with like reviews and tutorials and tech tips and stuff, just like I used to do back in the day with gaming simulation VR. I want to get back to that. That's what I really want to do. I want the live streaming stuff to be on Twitch. Like aside from tech talk, tech, I consider tech talk different because that's still when, when, you know, except for when auxiliary leaves and I go off on tangents like this, um, I, I do like every weekend together and like talking tech and the more tech related content that I started uploading, the, the better we are. But I have to, one, I don't have Adobe Premiere anymore because I can't afford creative cloud. So I got to really sit down and dedicate some time to learning DaVinci Resolve and getting comfortable with DaVinci Resolve's like netic content again. I have to get back to placing, like, you know, setting up camera rigs and stuff so that I can easily deploy the cameras to record the different styles of videos that I make again without with, with minimal effort so that I don't have to get up and move around a bunch and jack up my back and stuff like that. So it, 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 it's going to take some time to figure out. Sad thing is I don't have much time left. I'm not, I'm not going to go into details because it's too damn depressing. But yeah, we're about to tap my uh, what little is left in my 401k to survive. And then after that, we have to sell the house. So yeah, the, the, I'm not the big you know internet millionaire that I used to be, obviously. <laughs> not that I was ever a millionaire in my entire life. But, uh, but sadly, you know, life uh, hasn't been going well with me and my health and everything like that. And uh, it's been a pretty constant struggle just to stay, try to stay positive and try to move forward. But uh, but I'm but I'm doing it. I'm doing it to the best of my ability. And at the end of the day, all you can do is what you can do. And, you know, not life can't always be amazing. Sometimes there's got to be ups and downs. Sometimes you're on top of the world. Other times you're losing everything. It's just unfortunately, that's life. There'll always be somebody who's in a better position and always somebody who's in a worse position. I'm just happy to be alive and I'm happy to be surrounded by my family. And I'm happy to be surrounded by my friends. But uh, but I will never compromise uh, on on my on my morals and my ethics just to make a bunch of money so so any any path that i take to try to survive it you know it, it has to be transparent and i have to be able to sleep at night i'm not gonna i'm not gonna just like prop up ai to just make me a money machine by deceiving other people i'm not just gonna tell people what they want to hear you know just 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 so that they'll cough up money like i and that's the formula historically to you know beat your competition and content creation is to do those things and i'm not going to do those things so if i survive it's going to be it's going to be my way and if i die on my own knife so be it that's what happens um <laughs> don't, don't worry mo i won't forget any of you guys this has been a huge highlight of my life it honestly if it wasn't for the health issues that i'm dealing with and it wasn't from uh the mental shit that comes along with it. This would be my dream job. Like, like this would be absolutely like, I, like I wish I could do this for the rest of my life. I really do. Nobody said I'm confused how a programmer goes unemployed for seven years, works from home. Yeah. It won't be Microsoft money. Well, no, more than more than seven years. So 10 years. So it's almost been 10 years. So I left, I left Microsoft at the end of 2014 and I have managed by uh, doing YouTube and doing live streaming, even including the bad years and COVID, my health expiring, you know, leading to me to have to drop my workload down to almost nothing for a long period of time. Um, I still managed to survive 10 years on my severance package that Microsoft gave me. So Microsoft gave me one year of income and I managed to stretch it over 10 years by subsidizing it with what I could make during the good years on YouTube and the bad years on YouTube. And the good years on Twitch and the bad years on Twitch and the good affiliate years versus the bad affiliate years, the good merch years versus the no merch years. So so the way I see it is it's like I still I still feel incredibly lucky. I, I feel incredibly lucky that I was able to 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 go that far before, you know, I had to tap my early retirement and possibly go into uh, go on disability, which sadly disability and all that is all based on your last few years performance, which my last few year performance, I should have just basically been on unemployment. It would have been I literally my income would have been higher on unemployment than what I made over the last three, three years. So 
luckily that's helped me out in the tax department a little bit, but it's, it's screwed me in the life department. Our burn rate has gone up way too much and it's not sustainable. And we're down to just our last little bit of money in the bank account before we have to tap my 401k. Um, but we're also looking into ways to tap the house too, like equity in the house. Cause we only owe like 70 some odd thousand dollars, I think left on the house. So we're trying to figure out if there's a way that we can like refinance with the bank and then take out a loan of like, you know, a quarter or an or a half of the equity that's in the house. And then basically just start paying that back again over 30 years. Not the greatest idea in the world, but you have to survive, right? At the end of the day, survival is important. If you can't survive and you can't hang on to the tools that allow you to do your job, then you're ultimately screwed. So anyways, I don't want to bring anybody down though. I don't want to talk about this shit right now. It, it's it's actually a huge point of, of stress for me, and it's been making it very, very difficult for me to be happy and make other people happy. And so I got to work on that. that. That's a me problem, not a you problem. Um, let's hear, uh, let's hear mortgage is a pain in the bum. I'm just lucky I bought the house where I did when I did. So like buying this house was like the smartest thing I did. Like back in, back in 2000 and three i think yeah 2002 or 2003 i bought this house it was brand new construction i paid 248,000 for it um and we i mean we've refinanced it you know refinanced the mortgage and stuff over that time but i want to say we only paid about 150,000 in, in interest over the course of the loan so far with 70,000 left which is mostly principal now the way we did it so all said and done, I'll probably be, you know, about $180,000 in interest, 240 some thousand for the cost of the house. And it appraises around 650 to 700. So I've basically doubled my money in 20 years on the house. I've lived here for free and got half the value of the house. So when I, so when I, when I ultimately am forced to sell my house, at least I'll, I'll get some decent money for it. The sad thing is, is it's not really the win people think it is because even though I get that money, I still have to go somewhere else and buy a house and the housing market is has gone up everywhere, which is why, you know, why prices have gone up. So my only choice, is it's not like I can just go move to another house because I would just be in the same problem again. I'd, I have to move to another area entirely where it's it's way cheaper to live. So um, but hopefully I won't have to face that. The, the 401k will sustain us long enough that I won't have to face that for a couple of years. And who knows? I still have, I have some friends looking out for some other prospects for me. Um, you know, I, I told my buddy, you know, that if they're looking for a devel any developers at their company or have any developer spots open up where I can work remotely, I'd be very interested. So, so I'm, I'm exploring other stuff. Ultimately, I would love to just get back into my hundred percent cadence of like live streaming and stuff, but people just don't have the expendable income. AI is saturating the algorithms, making it harder and harder for people to see you. Half of my audience doesn't even know I exist. I mean, I've been, I, every day I come across somebody who like hasn't even seen me or know that I live stream and they, they just thought I died or quit like a year ago. So, so the algorithm sadly is just making it too hard to compete anymore and even stay in touch. Like X won't even allow me to talk to the people who follow me and want to see what I have to say. And, and the algorithm on YouTube is doing the same thing. Like all the algorithms are working away from the, I want to follow this person because I enjoy him. And, and instead the algorithms like, because you enjoy this person, what other person would be more profitable to wean them off onto? And then that's a constant process of, you know, and again, it's, it's, it's for the betterment of the investors, right? It's like, it's like they're trying to make the most money that they possibly can. And the way to make the most money isn't necessarily to have people only watch the people that they want to watch. You want to try to get them away from the people that don't make content very often and push them onto the people that make way more content so that you can serve them more ads and make more money. You know, it's and and that's why a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers that like do long form content where it's like the videos are like an hour long. You'll just find yourself magically unsubscribed from them every once in a while or their videos won't even show up in your feed when they create a new video. If they only create a video like once every week or two and it's like an hour long video. And it's because they unless they enable ads where there's like an ad every like five minutes in their video and they let YouTube manage that if they only allow an ad at the beginning or they disable monetization, YouTube won't even show it to but like 1% of their audience because they because they could be showing them a video from another content creator that pushes a lot more ads with short form content that's similar. They make a lot more money off that guy. So, so the whole idea for the algorithm is to try to condition people into making content they don't want to make for the benefit of the algorithm promoting them. And then because they get rewarded for doing what they don't want to do to benefit the algorithm, helping them, you know, uh, transition the audience into more advertisements and more revenue from that audience, you end up with a system that just isn't as satisfying for anybody. So, so it becomes, it becomes frustrating.
you know, it's like, it's like just, I mean, the, the greatest example in the world is I stream every Saturday, right? I stream every Saturday. I have 850,324 subscribers. That's 850,324 people who have actively subscribed to me over the years. And when I live stream on Saturday, when, you know, most people aren't working, um, you know, in the afternoon when like most people can tune in at most, we get 200 live viewers. Now go back like three or four years ago when I was like, when I was producing like three videos a week and publishing three videos a week, when I live streamed, I had 4,000 live viewers. It's because YouTube doesn't see the benefit in recommending my stream to anybody unless they literally have like notifications set to all and they're not subbed to a lot of other channels. Then they'll be like, okay, it's worth notifying this person he's streaming. But if there's anybody else that they could watch at that same time that creates content more frequently, that's the one that the algorithm is going to try to steer you to. And, and they're even going to go out of their way to try to hide me because if you're watching me and then one of those other streamers comes online and starts streaming, you're not watching them when they could draw you with more content and more frequent content it's better for them not to notify you and then hold that off for a little while in the hopes that they can notify you of the other person who makes you more money. So, and it's like, and the more ads you push and the more you allow YouTube to serve ads on your behalf and stuff ends up making you more and more visible. But because I don't select all that stuff and I don't promote all that stuff and I don't do all that stuff, I get shoved to the bottom of the queue. But it's like crazy if you think about it, because it's like, I mean, what is the percentage? I mean, if you did, hold on, let's see here. So 178, let's do, uh, let's see here, 100 times 178 that are currently watching divided by 850,000 right now 0.02 percent of my audience is watching me live right now <laughs> so so z not 0 0.2 0 0.02 percent of the people that are subscribed to me around the world are watching me right now it, it's just wild and i mean but but if i go to twitch I'll get, uh, you know, two times that viewership. I'll, I'll double it. I'll get three, four, sometimes 500 live viewers when I only have 70,000 people following me on Twitch. But that's because the Twitch algorithm hasn't, is, isn't as far gone as the YouTube one because Twitch doesn't have as much content. So in the more content a platform has, the more the algorithm has to divide up that attention. So, but it, but it has gotten worse over there too. And I mean, it's just inevitable and people don't think about it. People don't really think about it as long as they're, as long as when they open up YouTube, there's content and there's things in the sub box and there's something to watch. They rarely have to go searching for something. So so they're just going to the algorithm's going to lead them around and they're going to be OK with it. Right. They're going to be like, oh, well, something to watch. It's entertaining. I'm the same way. Like, I'll, I'll go back six months and be like, wow, you, I, I haven't seen that YouTuber in like six months, even though I watched every video they made until they stopped showing up in my sub feed and I stopped getting notifications. They kept making videos. They kept live streaming. I just got no notifications because YouTube slowly steered me off to somebody else that they noticed that they could get me to watch their content just as much or close to just as much, but it made them more money. And so it's like, damn. <laughs> and, and it could be something as innocuous as their video is just more family friendly or more compatible with more advertisements. So it's like, if I put, if I put Barnacles on there, we can only serve this narrow thing of ads within this period of time, which only has this potential for revenue. But if we serve this other guy who's more family friendly, more short term or, or more short term content, he says sub and subscribe more often, um, you know, encourages super chats more often, anything that makes them more money, that all gets calculated in the algorithm. It's like, obviously, that's the better guy to bet on. So so it's like you either play or you lose. And that's, you know, and I'm just I'm not good at playing. So <laughs> X killed the YouTuber star would be a great pseudo song. Hell, yeah, it would be. But again, but, but again, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, my God, none of this is my fault. No, obviously, it's my fault. I didn't play the game. I didn't make enough content when I was supposed to driving in the algorithm's direction. You know, I'm not playing along with the game. I'm not being the easiest of customers for them. So it's like so it's like I don't blame them for what they're doing. It's like at the end of the day, it's like you've heard the term. It's only business. It's like YouTube does know that by by betting against me with the algorithm, they make more money ultimately. And so they're going to go that direction because they're beholden to their investors, not their viewers. I mean, they obviously need the viewers, but the viewers are going to be there no matter what. But the investors, to keep the investors happy, they have to do whatever maximizes revenue. It doesn't matter if it's the right decision or a bad decision. It doesn't matter if they start trending videos of like little girls wearing almost nothing, um, dancing, and their dads like literally refusing to take the videos down when, they're, when their genitals are exposed on stream, like that one motherfucker that I'd like to punch in the face. Um as long as it's getting millions of views and millions of views and the algorithm's like doubling down on it because enough people watched it and they could serve enough ads that it looks like it's fire content, 
The algorithm doesn't give a shit why it's fire content. The algorithm just cares that it is, and they push that, and then everybody else gets pushed back in the queue. And then what that does, that tells everybody else that either, you know, shit or, or to do the same thing or get out of the way. You know, <laughs> lead follower, get the fuck out of the way. And so that's why you have so many people like, uh, what's that guy, Jack or whatever, the guy that just goes around with the bodyguard and like antagonizes people and gets his bodyguard to like beat him up and stuff for viral footage. The reason you get so many of those people is because you had one guy that did that. He became super famous because of the controversy and both the bad and the good people watched him, which doubled his audience. And because of the outrage, giving him so many views, the algorithm attached to him and said, oh, it doesn't matter that he's a bad person. It doesn't it doesn't matter that he's a horrible, horrible individual and a little fucking Hitler that's going to end up in prison one day for murdering somebody. They're like, he's just what gets the views. He's what gets the money. So that's where the algorithm needs to shift things. It's not a conscious human decision, right? It's just where's the money? Same thing with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sniper wolf or stalker wolf or whatever you want to call her. She literally stole the entire persona of another person, duplicated all their thumbnails. The way she talks, the way she lives, her content is all 100% lifted directly from another person, yet she gets all the money and all the fame, and the other person doesn't get anything. So uh, I forget what her name is, Izzy or something like that. Um, it's, it's very similar, you know? And it's sad. It's sad that we live in that world. And then the only time things change is when somebody comes along and there's negative attention. Like if a business says, listen, I'm not going to advertise if they keep pushing these like stupid little fucking trolley people that are just going out and picking fights and forcing sexual assault on women and stuff to get higher ratings. It, you know, we're not going to advertise with YouTube if they keep doing it. Then YouTube will take a stand and tweak the algorithm to not allow that to prevail as much anymore. But until somebody takes more money away from YouTube than they give them for an action, they won't do anything. So don't think anything YouTube or any company, any publicly traded company is never going to do something than them doing it, making them more money or losing them less money than not doing it. So don't ever think there's altruism. Whenever a company says, hey, we care about our audience and we did this because it was the right thing to do. No, what that means is enough attention got put on this, that ad enough advertisers pulled out that now it is now officially more expensive for us not to act. Or sorry, it's more expensive for us not to act than to act, therefore we're acting. And then they do the spin to make it look like it was a good idea. And the opposite's true too. If they're engaging on something and it loses them money and they'd make more money if they stopped engaging on it, they will pull back engagement on that. So it's just, it's how it is. It's, it's it's literally, you know, how you have, you know, channels like fucking drama alert and stuff, right? That's the only reason that exists is because it violates all the TOS. It attacks other people. It literally has gotten people killed. Doesn't matter. And until that evidence hits enough of the viewers that they're disgusted with it, that they pull back enough that YouTube loses more revenue by taking action against them than, than allowing it to happen. That's the only time change will happen. So long as that doesn't happen and there's more money coming in than the outrage from the community, they will always protect it. And that's just, that's life, man. Yeah, what happened to Etika? That fucking sucks, man. What happened to Etika? What happened to Brandon Asher? Like fucking just, it's, it's horse shit, man. It makes me so angry. And what makes me angrier is like the shit that I witnessed behind the scenes. Like I got, I got to see a lot of the shit that happened that other people don't know about. And, um, and, you know, I wanted to involve the police and I, and I have to live with that. Like I tried to convince Brandon to go to the police, but he, he thought his parents were going to be killed if he did. So he didn't do it. But I urged him, I was like, dude, you have the power right now to take this motherfucker down. Uh, but you know, he was under threat that his parents were going to get killed. And he had video and pictures of the person proving that he had access to his parents and he knew where they lived and he was at their front door and talking to the mom and dad. I mean, from the mom and dad's perspective, it was innocuous. Like they thought it was just a random stranger at the door, but the, they were there to send the videos and pictures to show that they had access to him if he didn't play ball or if he went to the police. And I was like, just watching that go down, I was disgusted, but it wasn't my place to go to the police because if something had have happened to his parents or whatever, and he told me not to and made me promise, you know, I would have been fucked. So I would have felt super bad. I would have been like, dude, it's my because I did that. You know, I can't be guaranteed that I'm right either. Right. Like in a situation, all I can do is advise them. But yeah, I talked to a bunch of other people too, even Woody's gamer tag and everything like that. It's like, yeah, it turns out there, there's there's a lot more evil going on than most people know. There, there are just certain people in this world, you know, that are just, you know, Donald Trump's one of them. You know, it's, you got Donald Trump, you got, you know, a lot of these drama tubers or whatever that 
threaten people's lives behind the scenes and use mob tactics or whatever to get people to go along with the game and they'll do anything to protect their money and their prosperity at the expense of killing anything else they have no empathy for life don't care about anybody but themselves it's sad but it's a reality there's really nothing you know there's nothing you can really do about it because at the end of the day businesses that are publicly traded are beholden to investors not their customers not their viewers their investors legally beholden to their investors so any action that makes less money even if it's doing the right thing and it protects life they can't do it it's illegal they have to do what makes their investors the most money so if there's option a and option b hey we can take action against the bad guys and we can make the platform better and we can save lives and we can make people safer by enforcing the tos but it'll lose us fifty thousand dollars a month or a hundred thousand or a million dollars a month even though we're profitable overall that's what it'll lose but if we allow it to keep happening then people die but that doesn't affect our bottom line because not enough people know about it that there there's not going to be enough that people that care about it, or enough people that'll take action against us that'll lose us money because that happened so because of that this is still the most advantageous direction that's the direction we're going to go and that and that's life that's where that, that's that's the that's the dirty part of capitalism. You know, everybody says capitalism is pure evil. It's like, hey, there, there's sides to everything, right? There's good things about capitalism too with innovation and things like that when you don't have other mechanisms designed to fuck that. Like there's good and bad in everything, um, more or less. But in this situation, it's like, yeah, our system is set up so that in a lot of cases, you are legally beholden to investors. And even if you have to fire your employees and leave them penniless and 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 put people's lives in danger and stuff, if it, if it ends up making the company another million dollars a month, that's what you have to do. That is the no brainer decision. Morals do not play into business. Oh, it just sucks. Sucks that so many people give up morals and hide behind legal crap. Yeah, sadly. Hey, Chris B. So, Jerry, I've been watching you for around 10 years. I miss you. I hope you aren't forced to leave. I hope not either, man. I hope I get to stick around for a good long time, but you never know. We're, we're all on borrowed time. Nothing's guaranteed. I've lost so many friends and fellow YouTubers and shit to cancer and, and health issues over the years, and I, I, I've learned that there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees. Everything you do either increases or decreases probability, but it doesn't change that there's things that are beyond your control. And, and one of those things is like, you could do everything in your life perfectly right. You could work harder than everybody else. You could, you could do everything flawlessly and still get hit by a bus or never get your dream job or get treated like shit or be depressed every day of your life because you don't get what you deserve. Well, while you're watching the most least deserving people get everything that's possible. Like that, but but the harder you work, the more probable you are to succeed. But it's never a guarantee. Just like, just like if you're lazy as fuck, there's no there's no guarantee you're not going to win the lottery, or you're not going to fucking get hit by somebody in a car and sue them for ten million dollars. You know, it, it just it, it it can go either way. It's like all you do is adjust your odds. Every decision that you make either improves or decreases your odds, but it doesn't give you a guarantee. Nothing will give you a guarantee. You can be the healthiest person in the world never touch a single drug, never eat badly, exercise every single day, have perfect body fat, perfect genetics, everything flawlessly, and just fucking drop dead because a cosmic ray hit your skin at the right angle and gave you like a fucking blastoma or whatever that became malignant and spread into your blood and brain, and now you're dead. You know, it's like you just, it, everything is just probability. The longer you spend in the sun, the greater chance you have of getting skin cancer, right? I mean, the, the more cosmic rays that hit you, even indoors at the dead of night, you know, all it takes is one of those cosmic rays hitting the right DNA, causing a mutation that gets completely ignored by your body that festers over a couple of weeks or years until it gets to the point where your body still doesn't know how to attack it. But now it's doing real damage. And all you need is for one piece of DNA to cause that thing to keep replicating and spread throughout your system versus staying as a uniform mass and you lose. So don't ever take anything for granted. Not, nothing is guaranteed all you can do but 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 don't don't make that feel like it's give up never give up like everything you do everything you can do no matter how little or how small can improve your your improve your odds but just don't expect don't expect it to guarantee anything all it's going to do is improve odds the same way that is if you buy one lottery ticket you have a chance of winning the lottery if you buy a million lottery tickets, you have a better chance of winning the lottery. But you know what? 
more often than not, the people that buy the most lottery tickets are not the ones that win the lottery. It's the pe because there's more people buying a single lottery ticket that when you have 100 million people that buy one lottery ticket versus one guy that buys 100 million tickets, you have 100 million more possibilities of a single person winning the lottery than the one dude who bought the 100 million tickets. He's got a 50-50 shot at that point, right? So, so it improved his odds. But even with his odds improved, there's still a great chance. There's a 50% chance the whole other group gets it or one person in the other group gets it. It's all odds, man. The older you get, the chances of cancer itself increase, just like anything. Oh, yeah, the older you get, the, the more susceptible you become, right? Your telomeres get shorter. Your cellular mitosis slows down. Um, you know, you, you, your metabolism slows down. That's another big contributor. Theodore said that's 100% true, but on the other side, constantly stressing out, that is going to increase the chance of you dying earlier, so we wouldn't worry much about stuff we can't control. Well, but that's it, Theodorus, is it's not a choice. See, this, 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 this is where biology comes into it. Like, why do you think the way you do? Why do you act the way you do? It, it, we're all products of our environment and upbringing. It's like we don't, nobody has absolute control over their emotions and perceptions. Now, I can lie to you guys. People do it every day. Like, I can lie and say, oh, I'm super happy and I'm not stressed out. And, <laughs> and, and it may even fool you. It, it might even fool you. Never show you my back hurts. Never do anything. Anytime I'm having a crisis, just pretend something broke and shut it off. Oh, I got my router fixed. Come back in an hour or two. Um, I can do that. There's a lot of people that do do that. That have severe mental issues that completely hide it from the public. And everybody's like, I wish I could be like that person because they are so upbeat and they're so amazing. And oh my God, they love life. And they're so lucky and they love it. I wish I could be just like them. But it's because they don't, they only see what they want them to see. Offline, they would be like, they would never dream of wanting to be that person when they see the truth. But if they advertise the truth, they wouldn't make as much money. That'd make it harder to live, which would increase their stress and make it even more uncomfortable. So for them, it's better to fake it and or act, right? Acting is a lot about, you know, the whole point of acting is to convince somebody that you're somebody that you're not for entertainment purposes or for prosperous purposes for you or the bigger group you're a part of. Makes sense. Everybody does it to some extent. Um, but for me, it's like, I don't have any more control over my state as anybody else. It's like, if somebody stabs you every five minutes with a knife, like there's no way to just ignore that and be like, oh, I'm not in pain. Like you can lie about it. You can say it, but it doesn't mean it's not painful. And so when people are in a lot of pain and they're, and they have a lot of stress because they fear what's happening and that pain is compounding that stress and knowing that they can't necessarily do as many things to improve their odds to make that situation better that they're limited and those options become more limited as, as their health fails more and more um, that creates a loop and that loop you can't really defeat. So, so all you can do is your best to stay in a positive mental state and try to put yourself in situations where you have more opportunities to be happy than sad. But again, we, we live in a capitalist society where money decides if you live or not, you know, like, like medical care, having a house, food, all those things are determined by earning potential. And so if you can't earn and you lose those things, then the stress builds, you know, and, and that's just, that's natural. That that's to be expected. And, and to some people it motivates them. Like if they have the physical ability to be motivated to a higher level, to increase their odds, again, it's not a guarantee, but it could actually help them. That stress can, that's the whole point of stress is it's to put you into a situation where it's more advantageous to do the thing to try to succeed than sitting there because of the stress. But sadly, if you're broken and you can't move and you can't do the thing, then the stress can't be alleviated. So the stress is trying to serve its purpose, but you can't respond to the stress in the way you're supposed to to make the stress useful. And in those cases, the stress becomes very dangerous and even deadly. So and a lot of people don't understand that because, again, you have to be in a situation to understand it. You have to almost be in that situation yourself to have the aha moment where you're like, I finally get it. You know, it's like if you get hit by a car and you're a quadriplegic sitting in a wheelchair and you're super stressed out because you're like, fuck, I really got to piss, I, but I can't get to the toilet because nobody's here to push my wheelchair there. And I don't have a piss bag, so I'm going to piss all over the place, going to smell like piss in here. I'm going to be really embarrassed. You start having stress. But if you're a normal person, the stress that makes you like, oh, my God, I'm going to piss myself would make you get up and go to the bathroom. Even if you're hurting, you would try your best. You'd limp on your leg. You'd do whatever you could to get to the bathroom. But if you're in a situation where you physically can't, that is an impossibility. There is nothing within your option set that can get you to the bathroom in time and you are going to piss yourself. Does that mean you just go, you're stress-free and you're immediately like, oh, I'm relieved and then you just piss all over the place? No, you're still stressed as fuck up to the point and after it happens. 
even though you were completely powerless to do anything about it. And a lot of people don't understand that until they've been in a situation where that happens, where it's like you are in a no win situation. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. You have to accept it like you've exercised every option. You have to accept it. And even once you accept it, that stress is still trying to do its job because it doesn't understand. The stress isn't smart. It's an instinct. It's not intelligent. It, it, its purpose isn't to be intelligent and weigh things out and be intellectual. Your stress is literally an instinct that's designed to try to motivate you away from danger. It's, but it's not responsible for you having the means to actually get away from the danger. Like, like if you're tied down to a stake and you can't move and you're drugged and you're paralyzed and the T-Rex is about to eat you, you're still going to freak out. You're going to thrash. You're going to scream. You're going to do everything you fucking can to get out of that situation. Even fully well knowing there's no escape. You could literally be inside the mouth bleeding out. Your organs are coming outside of you and be like, you know what? I still got a shot. <laughs> like, like you could be, you're never going to stop trying to fight because that's what the stress does. The stress isn't designed to be logical. The stress isn't designed to, to work with you. It's literally an instinctual response to bypass your intellect and get you to move faster without waiting too long and, get, and, and getting damaged. It's like, that's what it's for. It's there to motivate you. Fear and stress are there to motivate you away from danger. It's not, but it's not there to analyze you and guarantee that you have the facilities to get away from danger, if that makes sense. Kyle said, you just reminded me of the Knoxville skit where he had two broken arms and was asking people if they could just give him an unzip. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, God, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, I'll never forget that guy. Theodore said, I wasn't specifically talking about you. Oh, no, I, I get that. I get that. But I do get a lot of people like in my daily life that say, just don't stress about it. If you, if you can't change it, don't stress about it. Don't stress about things you can't change. And it's like stress isn't optional. <laughs> stress, stress is not optional. Different people have different levels of stress. Stress, stress is, a, is an instinct motiv motivated by neurotransmitter, amplified by neurotransmitters. It's like if you've got a bunch of cortisol in your system fucking racing around and you got a heightened heartbeat and your in your uh in your vitals are racing, you're legitimately scared and you got a fight or flight response going. You don't just go, you know what? Fuck, I can't do nothing about that. Shit, I'm gonna be late for my flight. Pff, okay, oh, I'm so relaxed. I mean, I did the math. There's no way I could get there in time, so oh, I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, it's like you can't, you still fucking run, even though you know. You're going to be late. It's like you still try. It's like you can't help it. It's like that, that's what stress is supposed to help. And that's the thing is like stress in, in an ideal situation, stress and fear are supposed to protect you. That's the goal. Stress and fear. It, it, it's you think it's this huge, dangerous, scary mechanism. But no, the whole idea is so you don't sit around and pontificate and try to think things through. You act first to get out of danger and then you worry later. But now we live in a society that's been so altered by the technology around us and the politics around us and the environment that we live in and the rules of that environment that now you need to exercise more intellect than instinct, right? But those instincts still want to function just like they always did before. We still have that caveman brain to contend with. So, and, and that's why we get into these situations where some people need help. Some people need therapy. Some people need drugs. They, they need things to readjust their neurotransmitters so that they're compatible with their new environment. Coping with stress is the only way stress isn't going away. Yep. That's all you can do. All you can do is cope with it. Yeah. If, if you try to make stress go away, it will not work. All you can do is try to cope. And there's different coping mechanisms that work differently for everybody. Everybody's got to find their coping mechanisms. It's, it's like, you know, like, for instance, if you're a quadriplegic and you just piss yourself all the time because you can't get to the bathroom, but you keep trying to get to the bathroom, but you know you can't get to the bathroom, well, then maybe your coping mechanism to say, you know what, maybe it's time to get a leg bag installed. Maybe it's time to get a catheter. You know, I didn't want to because I thought it was embarrassing or whatever, but you know what? Now I can piss anywhere I want to. I don't have to worry about it. It's now a non-issue. I can now be calm. So now I took what I thought was a big embarrassment issue. I weighed it, figured out that, you know what? I don't want to stress out every time I have to take a piss. So I'm going to get this. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's a little embarrassing in the beginning. Maybe it's something a little uncomfortable in the beginning. But overall, this is a coping mechanism that will help me to live better overall and help me adjust my stress. But you have to do it, right? If you don't, you're just going to keep having the same stress, keep living, reliving the same nightmare over and over again. It's like nothing's going to change unless you don't change a variable. And even if you change every variable that's available to you, there's no guarantee it's going to make the stress go away. Even if you change every variable that's available to you, it still doesn't mean you're going to be alive tomorrow. It still doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, get a job and keep your house and everything. Like I said, you could do everything right and still fail. You can do everything wrong and still succeed. 
it's all just probabilities. The more that you work towards a direction, the better you make your probability. It's never guaranteed. Anybody that tells you, oh, if you work hard and follow your dreams, there's no way you can fail. No, that's horseshit. Don't listen to that person. They're, they're literally a scammer. What you want to do is listen to the people that say the more opportunity you give yourself, the better the odds are of something happening. But there are no guarantees and never position yourself based on a guarantee. You know, always try to have some other option or some other out. And if there isn't some other option or some other out, then you have to learn to cope with the stress. Like, for instance, in my case, they can't fix the pain in my back. I have to live with, with constant unending pain for the rest of my life that deeply affects my sleep, that deeply affects my mental state. And I can only have so much pain management because of legislation. Um, I have to accept that. Like, I can't, I just have to accept that. But what I try to tell myself is the alternative. Having no pain management and being in the same situation would be infinitely worse. So that's like my piss bag, right? It's like, it's like okay, it, it doesn't solve everything. It doesn't fix all the problems. I'm still frustrated, but you know what? It helps. It helps me cope. It helps me at least get to a point where I'm slightly more effective. It doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't give me any guarantees, but it increases my odds of being able to get up, move around and keep myself alive one more day. Unless I get hit by a bus or a meteor or my house burns down or whatever. Um, and the other thing is even just surviving. The longer you can survive, the better your chances are of survival, because the longer you survive, the better technology is going to get that can keep you alive. Potentially, it's not guaranteed you'll have access to that technology, but it's not impossible that you would have access to that technology. So if you can stay alive long enough, you know, you may, hey, we you, that one extra day that you just survived may be the day that the FDA approves the, you know, a, a drug that doubles your aging by resetting your telomeres or whatever, right? And, and you just happen to have that 1% chance of being included in the medical trial. And now you live another 100 years. Is it likely? No. Is the probability high? No. But is it probable? Sure. So you got to kind of look at things through that lens. But even looking through those lenses and seeing all those invisible opportunities that could potentially present themselves, I'm still going to stress. I mean, the stress mechanism is unavoidable. When you have a family, you have a kid and a wife, and you want to make sure they're taken care of. You want to make sure there's a roof over the head. You want to make sure that things are taken care of. Like, that's always going to present stress. Because if there was no stress there and there was no fear there, there would be no motivation to try to overcome what is, what is you know, I mean, you just sit there and stare at the wall until you died. And that's not good either. So <laughs> Dangle said your title scares me. I just put in a 14 700 K. It's all right. As long as you don't have a motherboard that overzealously overpowers your CPU, trying to overclock it with XMP and you're not trying to play unreal games that do very, very specific uh, texture decompression, you should be just fine. However, if you get out of memory errors all the time or your system blue screens, whenever you play a game, maybe go into the BIOS, disable XMP, maybe go in there and back off some of the settings and, and undo some of the overclocking your motherboard's doing that is not advantageous to Intel's processors wanted settings. Enthusiasm prices that I stress out about everything, but I find that acknowledging the source, then proceeding to ignore it works well, <laughs> then continuing to do what I need to get done. I always stress, but learn to ignore it. See, that is a great thing. Being able to ignore something is a skill that I wish more people had because I have OCD and my OCD gets infinitely worse with stress and it gets infinitely worse with exhaustion. And OCD is terrible because, because if I could just ignore things, I could ignore the distractions and focus on the things that just make my life better. However, that's not how OCD works. OCD says, here is a block sitting on the desk. You cannot move block two until you move block one, even though block one has nothing to do with block two. Your mind is committed. Block one is all you can think about. And you're not allowed to think about block two until you take care of block one. But block one is glued down to the desk and you don't have any alcohol to dissolve the glue. So you're like, but I could just I could just ignore it and go to block two and then I still achieved something and then maybe later come back and rethink block one. But that's not how OCD works. OCD is like block one is all you can focus on. And the more you try to ignore block one, the more you focus on it. And that and that's OCD is not fucking useful at all. Like o, o, OCD is is not a fun thing to have. Like OCD has no redeeming values, in my opinion. ADHD has a lot of redeeming values. OCD has no redeeming values. And honestly, with age, it just gets worse and worse and worse and harder to fight. Sadly. But is it impossible to overcome OCD? I mean, you're never going to cure it. You're, you, OCD is incurable. It's, 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 it's basically a product of how your how your mind is working. And but can you work with it? Can you can you find ways to to trick yourself into thinking that you did? that you manipulated the block so you can move the other block? Yes. 
there is. It's very difficult to do, and it's not 100% guaranteed, but that's where therapy comes in. Therapy can help you go, you know what? I'm going to say I got blood. Like in my head, I am going to consider that block being glued to the desk as the success so I can move to the second thing. And then later on, I'll come back and redefine the rules. And that's like one coping mechanism. And a lot of it is tricking yourself. A, a, a lot of therapy, a, a lot of things that therapy teach you, like as coping mechanisms, is to figure out how to reframe things in your mind so that failures look like successes, um, things that are blocking you look like they're now unblocking you. I mean, but it's all about perception. It's, it's about you changing your perception so that you can override something because it's easier for you to redefine a situation to get past it than than trying to solve the problem that can't be solved until like the worst thing in OCD worst thing in OCD by far is when you have three things to do they have to be done in a specific order but you cannot do them until you do them out of order so let's say A leads to B B leads to C simple I'll do A then I'll do B then I'll do C sweet OCD did not stop me but what happens if A requires C to be solved first then I have to be able to say, even though I got them in, in my mind, I have to do them in ABC. Like in my brain, I have to. It wants me to do them ABC. I have to really do C because I can't do A until C is done first to unblock me so I can do B. Then I can finish C because I unblocked myself to do A. I can't do that. My OCD will go mm, incompatible. And that's where you got to start kind of playing fucky fuck with your mind a little bit. And you have to start looking at things differently and be like, you know what? I'm not going to skip over A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to redefine C so that C is now A and then A is now C. And it, it's literally mind games. It's quite literally manipulating yourself. Just like another person would manipulate you and do anything. You're literally just logically trying to use your own understanding of logic and your own understanding to manipulate something to your advantage. It's really difficult to do. It's not always successful. The smarter and higher I IQ you are, it works against you. Like, honestly, if you're a person that just like, you know, believes that the earth is flat because somebody told you and and you think everything in the Bible makes perfect sense and there's no contradictions, then you will have a much higher success rate in therapy, being able to manipulate yourself into overcoming OCD. So surprisingly, you're at an advantage. Uh, you know, it's like one of the places where it actually can really help you. But if you're truly analytic and you're a, you're a very scientific person and you have a good grip on logic, it is much more difficult to trick yourself. And so if you have OCD, my God, it, it is the worst thing ever because you're just constantly looking for a clever workaround mentally that still fits with all the laws of physics, but allows you to manipulate yourself enough to do things out of order. It's so weird. That's about the best way I can explain it, too. It's like, it, honestly, I'm sure it's a million times more complicated than that, that I'm putting that. Like, if you could just jump into my mind and experience it when it's at its worst. And keep in mind, stress makes it worse. So the more tired and more stressed you are, the the worse it becomes. Like, now, literally, literally I've gotten to the point before where vacuuming the floor has made me actually cry. Like, because my back was out, I couldn't vacuum the floor. And because I couldn't vacuum the floor, I couldn't move the thing to where I needed to move it. Because I wasn't moving the thing to where I needed to move it until I vacuumed the floor. Because it doesn't make sense to move it until I vacuum the floor. But I can't vacuum the floor because I'm fucked up. But I could just have another person move it to that place and it would solve the problem for the moment. And then I could vacuum on my back is better. But then that conundrum going through my head over and over and over again. Now I can't think of anything else. I can't focus on anything else. I can't enjoy watching a show. I can't focus on a show. I can't go to sleep because it's just in my mind. Going, nah, 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 nah. And when it gets that bad, it's like it, it's game over. Don't even try to fight it. You, you might as well just like stick on the TENS device eat a handful of Tylenol and, and hope for the best <laughs> and just go get it done because you're, you're just stuck. You're stuck in an infinite loop. And then if you do that, then you have to run yourself to complete exhaustion so that you can actually get to sleep. And then that usually leads to nightmares, poor quality sleep. And then you wake up and your back is even more messed up because you were so tense when you fell asleep. It's just weird, man. Super weird. See, it even feels weird talking about it. Dread Pirate Robert said OCD can be very debilitating. It's also so frustrating when people who just like order over chaos think they have ocd and it's cute no 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 order over chaos is not ocd and and there's different varying degrees of ocd they share a lot in common but keep in mind like extreme ocd where you have to tap something three times move a thing three times watch a thing in a certain order say a thing three times before you can move to the next one that is a very extreme form of ocd but it's still based in the same thing 
It's just different extremes. That person literally feels like uneasy, like their life is in danger unless they do the things in those orders. Whereas I merely feel very uncomfortable and I'm incapable of doing things out of order without manipulation. Those people can't do any level of manipulation to get out of order. So, so it, it, extreme OCD is, a, is an absolute nightmare. But you know what people with extreme OCD do? They actually figure out their ticks and use the and manipulate their ticks to help them navigate life. So, so if they can tap a wall three times or tap their foot three times or, or, or slide their foot to the side as they cross a threshold into the room and they can gain comfort from that by doing that and making that a ritual in their head and teaching their mind that that is a way to alleviate the stress of a situation. By doing that, that may look weird to somebody else, but that coping mechanism is exactly what allows them to do everything else to make their life successful. And, and, and that's an amazing thing. And what happens, and it's the same, it doesn't matter if it's extreme OCD or if it's more mild form of OCD, you still have to figure that out to get through life. Like you have to figure out like, listen, if I cannot do B until I complete A, and that's never an option because the two deadlock each other. I can't just give up. I can't just sit here and fall apart going, oh, but I can't do A because of B, but I can't do B until A. You can't do that. You have to figure out another option. You have, and it, No matter how silly it is, it, 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 can, it can literally be like, you know what? I'm going to go and do something that isn't option A, isn't option C or anything that, that wasn't planned, doesn't make any sense, isn't required, and there's zero stakes just to put me in a different frame of mind to see if that could help. So I can come back and revisit the problem. You know, it's like, but people that can do that are fortunate because there's a lot of people that have extreme OCD that don't have that option. Like they literally have to find a very physical, a very physical um, uh, action that they can do to break, to break that cycle and make them and pacify themselves so that they can move on and think of something else. And if they're not allowed to, like, like the worst thing you could ever do to a person with OCD is to, to handcuff their hands behind their back. And force them to do a whole bunch of things where they have to carry out a ritual. The, you you would literally just, I mean, you would mentally drive them insane. Because each time they couldn't perform the ritual, they would become more and more stressed and more and more uneasy. And it would be the same as just torturing them. That that literally would be torture. And so for me, it's it's different. For me, it's like my form of OCD is, you know, can't do A until I do B first, right? And that gets frustrating. And then that frustration can build. But it would take a hell of a lot more effort for somebody to one, figure out what my, my, my problem is and to specifically go in and manipulate every aspect of that problem so that there's no other way that I can make progress. That would be torture for me, but it would take a massive more effort on their part to be able to figure that out and carry it out versus somebody who has very, very obvious order of operations. But there's hugely successful people with OCD. As a matter of fact, people with OCD can be highly successful because they're highly ordered. People with highly ordered minds can tend to do amazing things because they can push themselves to unreasonable extremes and have a level of focus that normal people can't. Because if you don't have OCD, you have a lot of random nature. You can handle random things. You can go in multiple directions. But And that's advantageous in average life. But let's say that your goal is to get from point A to point C completely undistracted with nothing else having any value except for getting to the end. You would have, you'd be a more effective person as long as all of the distractions could be dealt with, you know? And so that's why you have people like Howard Hughes, for instance, you know, who couldn't have his food touch each other, had to have the silverware in very, very specific ways, had little rituals that he had to do before he ate and after he ate, the way he addressed people and talked to people, eye contact, all of those things that there was rituals that he had that people looked at him and said, he's eccentric, right? He's just an eccentric rich guy. But it's like, no, those were he had built that system so that he could function in and among other people while still pacifying himself and moving forward. It's crazy. Or just take away your pain meds, torture. Oh, I mean, 100 percent. Yeah, it's like it's like, yeah, if I didn't have any pain relief, it would be absolute torture every day of my life. As a matter of fact, sadly, a lot of people that commit suicide, it's because they can't escape physical or mental pain. It's like you can tolerate pain for a long period of time. Like humans are good at tolerating pain, but not indefinitely. Like, like, like if the pain just keeps amplifying and there's no way to escape it, there's no way to shift and become any more comfortable. The, the more and more that that pain slows you down and prevents you from extracting any kind of joy out of living in every waking moment is torture. 
the more that people start to consider things like suicide and things of that nature. And trust me, I know what it's like to be there. It's very sad. So that's why it's critically important that people that you can't fix have access to some kind of medication that can help improve their quality of life or something that can improve their quality of life so that they can continue to go on living. I think that's critically important. All right, guys. Well, I, my wife is uh, going to be home here in a little bit with the kiddo with our lunch. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, if you guys don't see me on Twitch today, you'll probably see me tomorrow. I'm thinking about because I had to miss uh, because my boss came and saw me this weekend. I had to miss a stream at the end of the week. So and I'm trying to get back to stream. We only had one stream last week, but shit, that was better than the week before. So I'm working on it. But this Sunday, I think we're going to have a stream because I think a weekend stream would actually be really good. I really need another good stream under my belt to kind of like motivate me and, and get me back into the swing of things. So I think I'm going to try for a weekend stream when more people can potentially show up and watch. So keep an eye out for me tomorrow over on Twitch. Uh, Dread Pirates Robert said, as soon as my faucet was out of my sight, I felt like it might be dripping. 100%. 100%. How, here, you, you, you guys want to know one of my OCD ticks? Here, I'll tell you because I'm an open book. I like you guys know. I think it's important to the, the people understand that, uh, that everybody has problems and it's not something to be embarrassed about. It's something to be understood. Uh, whenever I have to know when I have, when I, when I travel, I have to know where my wallet is like every couple of minutes. Like, even though I know it's in my pocket, I have to physically touch it. So if you ever watch me in public, if you, if you ever want to see OCD just happening, you'll notice that I tap my pocket. I'll always touch my pocket on the outside or slide my hand in my pocket at least once every three to five minutes when I'm in public, everywhere I go. Even though my wallet is locked away safe and sound in my front pocket, deep down in my front pocket, I can feel the pressure of it against my leg. I know that it's there. I have to physically touch it. However, when I'm at home, as long as my wallet is placed in the exact spot where it's supposed to be, I don't have to ever go check on it. I could go three weeks and, and I just know it's there and I have no problems whatsoever. It's only when it's in my pocket. It's only when it's in my pocket and I'm outside of my house, even inside of my house. I don't check for it. If I am outside of my house, doesn't matter if I'm in a vehicle and I just drove a hundred miles and never got out. I will check that wallet every five minutes as I'm driving. It's a completely unconscious thing that I cannot control. I have to know that it's there. Even though I physically feel it in my pocket, I know it's there. I have to physically feel feel it through my pocket or feel like the shape of it to know that it's still there. It's very weird. It's a very bizarre thing. And whenever I'm conscious of myself doing it, it's, it's annoying, but it's something that I do. It's just one of those things. It does, but I don't do it for other things. That's the thing. I'll do it for some things and not others. It's like that. And that's another weird thing about OCD is just because you have to have these th three things separated. Doesn't mean these other three things can't be in total chaos or disarray. It just has to do with your mental connection with those things. There's something that happened in your life that somehow made you feel like you have to be connected to that in that situation continuously. It's very bizarre. All right, guys. And I think on that note, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. You guys have been awesome today. Thank you for hanging out. I want to go through once again and thank all of the super chatters. You guys, I really do appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Let me, uh, let me refresh this. Why isn't it showing up? Come on. Please show up, please. Viewer activity. Why is it? there? It is okay. It filled up. All right. So I want to thank Gamers Unite, my man, Historio, the Tech Chef 420, Historio, Matthew Riley, Just Joe, Matthew Riley again, Eric G, my man, Snumpkin, Meat Puppet, Chrissy, Joe Taji. Oh, by the way, Joe Taji. Sorry, sorry if I missed that earlier. Here, thank you for the twenty dollar super tip that is awesome dude that is the that is the biggest super chat of the day we appreciate it he said hey barna buddy been lurking and enjoying the stream uh, thanks for being awesome i've been wanting to get into python and linux scripting as well as pen testing i'll admit ai has been extremely helpful just need to do more hands-on things absolutely and i'll tell you what dude if you guys are doing anything with coding right now claude is where it's at claude three opus chef's kiss and like, I haven't done a lot of programming other than Python, but the Python code, I've had that thing right. It makes, oh, it makes GPT-4 look like poopy garbage. So give it a try. If, if you're getting into coding or you don't know anything about software development and you just want an AI that can teach you how to develop software and do 99% of the workload and do enough things to get you so interesting that you want to learn and push it to the last 10%, Cloud th Claude 3 Opus, all, all the way. Um, and it's, uh, you can pay Anthropic directly for access to it. You can use the free version, which is an Opus. I think it's like Haiku is the free version. Uh, but if you want Opus, like the big Mamba Jamba that can handle huge context and do amazing coding work, uh, just pay for a subscription or use it through Poe. 
Uh, let's see here. Theodora said, before you go, check off topic on Discord really quick. I sent you something that's going to solve one of your problems on Tech Talk. Okay, let me take a look really quick. So in off topic, let's see. Uh, Android isn't safe from the kind of thing either. Hold on here. Uh, I should try out Pally GG. It's a payment platform that allows you to easily split up tip money to your co-host mods, etc. Thor Pirate Software uses it. Make money as a team, split tips automatically. But but I mean, they obviously have to make money. So them splitting the tips automatically, they're obviously taking some kind of cut. Otherwise, how could they function? So you, the streamer, get 20%. Team gets 80%. You earn $10. Wait, okay. So you, streamer, team, you earn $10. Set up a page, invite, split tips with mods. I'll take a look at it. Uh, I'll, I'll take I'll take a look at it if they don't take a cut. But but my thing is is how can this company make money if they don't take a cut? And and like I always say, follow the money. Don't ever believe anything a company says. Follow the money. And so if they don't take a cut now, what that tells me is they're getting as many people as they can to sign up and use the tool and become dependent on it. And then they're going to change a policy where they take ten percent. And they're going to do it in a way that it makes it hard for most people to see it or most people to pull out once they're already so heavily into it. And a lot of companies do this. They'll start out for free to attract a huge amount of people. Like if this, then that did the same thing. A bunch of security companies did the same thing. IP camera software did the same thing. You basically start using it because free. You get used to it. You integrate it into all your stuff. You put a bunch of time into it. You advertise it. You give it to a bunch of other people. You get other people signed up. And then after they have a million users, they change their policy to say, oh, now we're going to charge a modest 3% or 5% or 10%. And you don't really have a way to pull out of it because in order to pull out of it, then you have to find another system. You have to figure out how to divide things up. You have to, you know, you get what I mean? Like once the team's all being paid and they're all getting that, then the change from that would, would upset the Apple cart. And so they're banking on that, forcing you to stay as they apply the monetary pressure to you. Uh, so, uh, so I'm going to, I'll look into it. Like here, I, I'll go ahead and bookmark it. Uh, let me here, let me favorite. I'll even drag it out here just so I can look at it later. But, um, I'll have to look through and make sure that there's some assurances that they're not just going to sell out to a third party or that they're not leaving some provision that'll allow them to take a percentage of the revenue at some undisclosed time because they could be really good right now. And then they, they screw you later. And so, but, but we'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. It's, it, I, first time I've ever heard of it. Poly GG. So it's, it's worth taking a look at. All right. You guys have been awesome. I love your face. Oh, wait, I think I did. I think I missed one person. I, I don't want to miss anybody because you guys, honestly, everything you do is amazing. Oh, Joe, thank you for another five, five bucks. That's awesome. He said, thanks for the great stream. Enjoy your lunch, dude. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. All right. Well, I'll catch you tomorrow over on Twitch. In the meantime, if you guys want to want to say hello or ask a question or anything, just hit me up over on X at Barnacles. Hopefully the algorithm will let me see it because uh, as we all know, Mr. Elon Musk is not very free speech or anti-censorship these days by his actions, only his words. But if you've ever been to Elon Musk today, you can see that, you know, that's pretty much his MO and always has been his MO. But in the, in the chance that you tag me at Barnacles and I see it, I will try to reply. Uh, do SSRIs help much with OCD? They absolutely can't. They absolutely can. They're, they're actually one of the drugs that they really use a lot to treat OCD because one of the things that causes stress from, from OCD, like if you're in a situation where the stress builds, is um, your, your dopamine will drop and your cortisol levels will go up and everything. You'll get, you'll get uh, uh, anxious. And SSRIs per, basically reuptake your inhibitors um, the, basically the hormones that like they prevent your hormones from going away so you can hold more dopamine. And, and uh, what's the other one? Norepinephrine or whatever the, uh, no, not norepinephrine. What's the one that makes you calm? Serotonin. So yeah, so so serotonin. It basically keeps your, your serotonin in your brain from like draining off as you become stressed, which keeps you in a more steady state. So if you've never taken SSRIs before, they take a long time to start working, about three, three to six weeks sometimes. And it's a very subtle change at first, but what they do in the end is they basically level out your emotions. But just remember, it's great if you were always a stressed person and you were always super like scared, anxious, anxiety, panic, kind of like I am right now. SSRIs can help that tremendously because what they'll do is they'll flatten that out and you you won't care as much. You won't have as much anxiety. You won't be as agitatable. However, the flip side is it also takes a lot of joy away, too, because remember, it's leveling you out where you used to be able to super happy, super sad. Now you can only be a little happy and a little sad. So if you're mostly sad all the time and you're mostly angry or upset or frustrated, it can really level that out and actually overall make you a much happier person. But if you have huge bouts of happiness and a lot of your life's happiness is, is in small moments of bliss, 
it will steal that away from you. And if you like getting boners, it also takes that away too. So just FYI. Um, if, if you like having sex a whole lot and you like masturbating a whole bunch, I probably don't recommend SSRIs unless uh, you work with your doctor to do some kind of a cocktail between like Wellbutrin, like a stimulant-based SSRI and like half of a regular SSRI and kind of play with the dosage over time. But but just know every it's really common on SSRIs to lose your ability to get an erection. So just just FY, just something to think about. But then they make another pill for that. So, on, you know, just whatever. Figure it out with your talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor, but talk to your doctor. He will have some way to mitigate any problems that come along the way. But just know SSRIs aren't for everybody, but you won't know until until you try. You've got to work with a doctor. you got to work with the therapist. Let them look at the signs. Let, the, let them look at what's going on and let them see if it's something that could potentially help you. Don't just do it to do it. Uh, it says on Pally's fact, they say that they make money when a tipper optionally adds an optional tip to Pally. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. That's that's a straightforward way to make money. That 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 would lead me to believe that that that's probably. Now, my guess is they probably automatically put like a little percentage or a dollar or something in there, and you have to remove it, like they do with every other service where you leave a tip. But I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll look into it. I'll find somebody who's using Pally. I'll click on tip and I'll go through the process and see what it looks like. And as long as it doesn't look like they're trying to hide that, like as long as it's like absolutely clear that Pally, you know, thank you, Pally, for providing the service by giving them a dollar or whatever, then I'm totally fine with that. But if it's some like menu item you got to like undo or they word it in a way where it sounds like it's getting split up among the people and Pally's just one of the employees, then I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Um, all right, man, I'm real. It's really hard for me to find a stopping point, huh? So, so I guess I guess I just got to push the button. I'm just going to push the button. All right. I love you guys. You're amazing. I hope you guys like the new camera angle. Sorry, I keep looking up here. I got to get used to it. The camera is now under the monitor, not on top of the monitor. All this is going to take some getting used to. All right. Hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow over on Twitch. Don't forget, go over Twitch forward slash Barnacles. Make sure that you guys all go over there and follow so you get the notification when I go whenever I go live because I, I am going to try to get back to stream in there at least three times a week. So, Wellbutrin is a non-stimulant. Uh, I believe that's incorrect. Because I've been on Wellbutrin multiple times. Is Wellbutrin stimulant based? Uh, let's see here. Okay, as explained above, Wellbutrin is actually classified as an antidepressant, where Adderall is classified as a stimulant. But I have had stimulant effects from Wellbutrin. So let me look. Wellbutrin for ADHD, side effects, dosage. Okay, let me see here. Da -da -da -da. Stimulants. Okay, with many indicating that Wellbutrin works as well for some people as a stimulant. Yep. It's not, I didn't, what I mean by stimulant is it's not classified as a stimulant. It's just, it's, it's one of the few, it's not an SSRI, which SSRIs usually make you kind of tired. Wellbutrin doesn't have that effect. And Wellbutrin also doesn't, doesn't make you uh, impotent. So, so, but, but it definitely has, for me, it definitely had a stimulant effect. And for most people it does. Uh, whereas SSRIs do not have a stimulant effect. So anyways, the more, you know, uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, and I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Peace out. Later.